Hey, Steve's here. Kind of. <laughs> Damn it, I, I could have won money. Yeah, Steve, we have no idea what the hell you just said. You kind of sounded like Neo as he was after he took the red or the blue pill. I don't remember which. I like the blue better. See, I understood that. Steve, Steve, I brought your buddy along this time. Oh, missed guy. <laughs> yeah, it's been losing. Let me change. Hey, Steve, this. turn the auto turn. Uh, turn the auto ter- toner off. Auto toner. Auto tuner. That's what I'm trying Let to say. Let me guess. Where is that button? Which button is that one? Are you wearing the Arcteryx jacket that you turned into a vest? You guys discussed last no, week. This one. No, yeah, I'm so trying to get that stone up. Uh, where is my auto tuner, dude? Which button is that? It's. I made it up. Mm-hmm. And in the, usual, in the usual fashion, Stephen Fisher, no, you're Stephen Fisher, Stephen Andrews just commented, Steve Fisher appearing by film strip on Modcast. That's pretty accurate. That's what happens when you live in your mom's basement. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> Drinking brown water in a woodland camouflage wife beater. Is Steve Fisher playing a banjo? Someone wants to know. That's a vest, bro. That's a vest. It ain't woodland. It's kind of Cabela's camo. Well, that that just shows how good your internet connection is. Pardon the uh, laptop moving around the house. I have to make a very important decision here, so I'm trying to figure it out. Green spot. Green spot, you think? Yes. All right. Uh, what are we talking about tonight? We're talking about Steve Fisher, male gigolo. Gutter slut. No, those days are over. I'm a good boy now. Okay. I'm all right from the down. Uh, I don't want to beat a dead horse, but uh, someone did post about uh, ballistic eyewear. I mentioned how we have some pretty reputable people talking about Rudy Project. Mine are due tomorrow. Nice. Um, my understanding is they're pretty much indestructible. You were talking about how how bendable they were. Yeah. I'll get a pair. I'll flex them right on camera for you. I don't care. I'll turn those things inside out. Cool. Hmm. Uh, last of the wood for double oaked. Mm. Dr. Pepper. Oh, that's boring. Yeah, that's me. Yeah, Walt brought over some uh, some Woodford um, yesterday, or day before. We got into that. Mm, I know how that went. <laughs> yeah. Oh, uh, yeah. So we, we we have a new routine. Um, I get the new episodes of Vikings downloaded onto my Plex server uh, the day after. So. Uh, Walt will leave work early and swing by the house with bourbon and we drink bourbon and watch Vikings. Like it's, it's a thing. That's a good call. Yeah. Uh, I'm playing catch up on the colony right now. I've got like 8,000 episodes taped you know, on the DVR shit. I'm just like, going, Oh my God. Dude, it is so much better than, uh, than uh, man in the high castle. Uh, I really, really did Colony. Yeah. 
Really? Okay, cool. Yeah, I was kind of trying to figure out, like, it was like a combination. Remember the old Series V? Oh, yeah, for sure. Yeah, like old boy, like, holding a gun and shit like this. Yeah. I'm, like, kind of trying to figure out, it was like, it's kind of like a cross between that and that other stupid movie with the robots and shit, that Area 9 or whatever the hell it was. And I'm, I'm still trying to kind of catch up because I'm only, like, through four episodes right now. So I'm still kind of in that beginning catch-all with it. So, yeah. But so far, so good. Uh, Whatever happened to the reboot of V? I remember the old one was awesome. Yeah, and then they did the reboot, and the lead character was that hooker from uh, Firefly. What's wrong with that? I I did nothing. Absolutely nothing. She had short hair. Uh, But, yeah, she, she she was still hot. Um I've got I've got both series, the original and uh, the mini series, the original V television series that came on after they did the mini series, and then the new reboot. I've got it all on my on my Plex server. She's Wade w- Wilson's girlfriend too, so who's? Uh, I don't even remember the actress's name. Oh, good. You keep up with too much silly shit. <laughs> Yeah, you have no idea. Mm. What is her name? I know someone's going to post it here in just three seconds. Two, three, I don't know. Four. Red Pill's not her name? Gosh. I don't watch TV. It's like I'll watch a couple episodes of something and that's it. I don't watch anything. Yeah, Just this. I've got an 80-inch big screen wasting away that I watch once in a blue moon. Oh, my God. Uh, why aren't you at work Tom? you should be at work saving people i will be uh, at work in a couple hours mm. uh, where are you working tonight i'm working in the morning cool. out of the main nice excellent so Tom, how much have you listened to this fine program? I think I've caught like three or four episodes. Okay. So you know you shouldn't have any expectations of anything. Yeah. Figure yeah. that out. Absolutely. Yeah, there is no expectations of anything other than it will go south. <laughs> but it starts so good. <laughs> and then it just it's like a relationship it starts so good for the first week <laughs> I was going to bed and now I'm sitting on my couch drinking whiskey and talking to you fools so I think oh. a lot of people go through that that's happened a lot this past two weeks what a lot that, of that's weeks. that's how it starts yep yeah, yeah. oh shit goes downhill completely yep and t- three hours later we're still talking about weedy philosophical arguments and you know, not, I I ain't going back to jail. <laughs> <It's> just... <laughs> Look, I know where we hid her, you asshole. God. Yep, it goes sideways. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah, that is a sweet picture. <laughs> Thanks. Lock the door. Look who they let in the house. <laughs> What's up, dog? <laughs> Nothing wrong. Mm. Showing off a little kit love today at class. Hello. Dude's all asking what I was rolling with. I'm like, this is what I got. This is where it's from. So, Steve, I drove by, but I didn't want to interrupt. It looked pretty busy. Uh, dude, it was slammed in there today. I had, I started with like 12 or 14 today, and I ended up with 10 after I threw people out. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds about right. Yeah, hey, Finnis, I, do, I have, do I have enough hair gel in for you for this? Wow. Oh, you're looking good. You're looking good, I, buddy. I thought that was Gonzalez <laughs> for a minute. <laughs> oh, God. Yeah. yeah, I had two self-select and a couple that I just said this is a little bit above your, your head. So you guys need to go back and do some other shit. <laughs> Hmm. What are you doing, stupid bat? Get back hanging out. 
Steve, you have a cat? I got two cats. They're both killers. Fisher's a cat person. That's uh, uncommonly known information. No, that's... I like my animals. Any dogs? Uh, I had a dog my last Roddy up until uh, last June-ish, July, when I had to put him down. Actually, he uh, was kind of one of those things. I let him out. He did a big perimeter sweep of the property, came back and laid down, and that was about it. At about 4.30 in the morning. Is he, let's see, I had him seven years, eight years. So, yeah, he was 12 and a half, 13. Right now, until I can get more time, less work, no time for new dog. Unless I find one at a rescue somewhere that's really awesome. And then I'll do it. You know, this really, oh, go ahead. No, you're good. Oh, uh, this really puts a new definition to what you said earlier in our chat about you being alone. So now you're alone with cats. So <laughs> it's because I'm smart. Yeah. And jalapeno pizza. He's the resident crazy mm. cat lady. That's it. Steve Fisher rocking the one eight hundred operator tactical phone <laughs> sex line look. <laughs> So I think we need to start taking collections to get uh, Haggard a mic. <laughs> Why? He's just going to talk about wheel guns. That's true. Well, then you have someone to talk to. Don't start your shit with me. I'll pull out a shotgun. <laughs> That's right, in the shotgun, yeah. Oh, uh, Jesus. <laughs> we haven't been AK? on here what? 10 minutes, and it's already gone to gauges. Fuck my life. <laughs> I'm trying to go put my AUG out of the safe. <laughs> yeah, you, you and fucking Hans Gruber's fucking right-hand man. The, the only two people in the universe he fucking using AUGs. I wonder if what that guy's name was. Hmm. Wasn't it Carl? No, Carl. it was Carl's brother. Yep, Carl. Yep, Carl. Yeah, he was one really big, pissed-off Viking-looking dude. And isn't he a ballet dancer? Yes, he is. Go tell Carl his brother's dead. (laughs) Cat, you're off (laughs) in my party. (laughs) Steve, someone truly wants to know what you're wearing right now. A pair of comfy fuzzy jammies and a Cabela's polar fleece hunting vest and a cat. Meow. All right, get out of here. Go. Oh. Nice. Yeah. Animal abuse. Fuck. Hey, it looks like you got an AAR. Oh. Wow. Is that from from October? October. I know, right? I'm only waiting on Lee's and, you know, everybody else's and ah, whatever. <laughs> the best AAR. I did not shoot myself or anybody else in class, and I learned a lot. I still suck. You know, with the, uh, the amount of chat that's going on in Hall of Justice, I'm surprised no one's jumped in here. Mm-hmm. Get over there. Tell them bitches come and do something. Yeah. Well, I know Shockey's sick, so hopefully he's not going to give us a virus or something. Shockey is always sick. He's such a crybaby. I get the flu. I don't feel good. (laughs) Whatever. Hey, Chris read that. He might be jumping in. That'd be nice. Who? Chris McRae with uh, Robar. Yeah, Chris, good dude. Oh, I still need to mess. I think I'm going to message him right now. He said something about messaging him. I am messaging you now. Mm. I'm spelling it wrong in the Steve Fisher fashion. Mm-hmm. Sorry. All right. What if I bring a scout rifle instead of a shotgun or an AUG? Is that better? Roland. Roland. Yeah. Uh- I got I got nothing, Steve. Uh, it's a three away at least. Only if I can bring a lever gun. Absolutely. I want a forty five seventy lever. No. 
you should Google what's the new ones out from? Is it like Oregon Customs or somebody that have one in 500 Smith, 460, and 454? But 4570. 4570's awesome, but man, a 500 Smith shooting 500 grainers or a 460 running 275 grainers, dude, at 2,000 plus feet per second. Oh. Hmm. I'm going to stomp some white tail guts with that. As someone who lives in the mountains, the 4570 just just seems right. No, it does. Another one with 4570. Of course, I have to lob it. Kind of. Mm. And you should get a circle holster for it. Yes. Mm. Have it per- some semi permanently attached. That'd be ideal because it's going to get stuck. Mm-hmm. Yes. A single point with a belt mounted weapons retention catch. Ooh. You make millions. Ooh. Millions. Ooh. Man. Oh, I found some of Roland's most favorite ammo today in an ammo can. He will appreciate this shit. We will find that stuff. <laughs> See, Matt, this is what we have to deal with. Oh, I love it. I'm just, I'm just curious what he's actually going to bring back. Nope. Let's... You got to say something there, Steve. Here, I'll just do this. Nine millimeter nightclad. Oh, Jesus. I got some 38s of that shit laying around upstairs. Dude, 1845 a box of armor-penetrating vest shit from the movie Cobra. <laughs> nice. Or whatever. That is so amazing. I know. 125 grain yet. I still want to go shoot this stuff. And it's only missing four rounds. <laughs> Yeah, that that's that's four unsolved homicides. <laughs> it probably is, dude. <laughs> out of a out of a nine millimeter Smith and Wesson revolver with full boom. <laughs> There's no brass. That's right, no brass. That's fat. <laughs> See now, Wix is asking. What is Steve wearing? I, I, Steve, I'm thinking this needs to be a normal thing for you. This could be your signature look. Tell Wix I'm wearing his mom's house coat. Doing it now. <laughs> <laughs> Tell him she'll be home in the morning to make him breakfast. He looks uh, like a mountain man gigolo. Whores. All of you. You're all whores. He's so dirty. However, Phil does say that you'll have his AAR early this week. He's so full of it. Tell him I'll get that AAR when he hits a 25-yard B8. <laughs> I just don't want fish to go outside lest we get some fucking hokey-ass Sasquatch fucking photos from, you know, goddamn Yeti hunters. Walk into the 7-Eleven? No oh, wait, shit. no, that's, that's 30 miles away. What am I saying? <laughs> Tom knows that 7-Eleven. There's some strange shit in that place. Dude. No. I know. But I get free coffee, so it works. Exactly. Who's like the creepy dude who used to work midnight there who looked like the really bad punk rock dude? The really oh, he's still, like, he's still yeah, there. Earrings. He's still there. Oh, my God, man. Yeah. Yeah, that dude works. So Wix responded... He said, um, Steve, make sure you send mom home with a Steve Fisher Midwest rifle. (laughs) Hey, we'll get one from you if you want one. Nice. (laughs) Take her out for a nice chicken dinner and never call her again. (laughs) Waffle House. (laughs) Dorothy Mantooth is a saint. <laughs> Holy shit. You just stand there? Even the guy who can't think says something. <laughs> oh my god. 
Yep, at least when I know we get to hell, we're going to have a good time. And that answers the question about Steve's vest. You got it at the toilet store. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Haters. This shit's warm. Oh, God. <laughs> Tarek wishes they could only make shit that lasts and looks as good as this. Uh, I've had this thing for like 10 years. And you've washed it how many times? Four times Four or five, maybe. Okay. It gets worn during hunting season, gets thrown back in the bag, gets pulled out a little bit. Yeah. Uh, the guys looked at me funny today at class when I was shooting with a pro mask on <laughs> during lunch break. They came back in. I had my pro mask in that Avon, in that old ass ancient M40 mask. I'm like, okay, this thing really sucks. No, this one's not so bad. This one is horrible with a red dot. This one works really good. Oh, that was a fun time. Yeah. I'm like, I'm actually going to carry these night clads. <laughs> They're probably like 750 feet per second. <laughs> and they're not going to hit a thing. And they were made in Rock Creek, Ohio. That's where the Smith & Wesson Ammunition Company was. That's kind of interesting. I think. The, the new FBI load. <laughs> Give it a couple months. <laughs> They'll be back to shooting nightclad. God. Mm. Oh, God. Which glasses you want me to bend at? Whatever are uh, ballistic. I let me go dig up and set it up a bag. Yeah, I ordered the. I don't even remember what which ones I ordered. Oh, Gentex or something like that. Yeah. Nope, we already lost a. <laughs> it's so bad we lost a panel member. Right. Uh oh. Yep. Kel is has. You know what? Let's see if Kel wants to join us. <laughs> He's an avid listener. First time caller. <laughs> At the very least, he could uh, jump on mobile if he were so inclined. Have any of you guys, other than Steve, heard uh, the radio station 89X out of Detroit? When they have uh, first time callers in, they have to proclaim either balls, penis, or vagina when they uh, answer the phone. I think uh, I think your hangouts here should take that in for uh, first-time callers from now on. That would make for some interesting posts. Let me see if I can find a sound clip. Yeah, Kel just responded, I just stepped off a plane and boom, we ended abruptly with Dorothy Mantooth as a saint. <laughs> <laughs> Got to reload. Yeah. Uh. Oh. Oh. That'll work. It's Sunday in the Bible Belt. State controlled fucking liquor stores closed. <laughs> it's a shame. Mm hmm. That's what happens when you don't have enough on hand. Utah doesn't have this issue. Oh, wait a minute. Huh. I think my dog's having a seizure over here. I doubt that. Better not be. Bill said he'll be jumping in in a little bit. Right now he's watching Avengers. Oh, Jesus, really? Yeah. Hey, it's a good movie. Though I think, based on previous conversations, Anchorman would be a better movie to watch prior to joining us. Mm, I'm good with that. Steve, what the hell is this video you, you shared an hour ago? 
what is it? Dental work. Oh yeah. Why? He has a tooth fetish. Oh okay. Because <laughs> it looked painful. And think about it. how many times have you ever thought about pulling out somebody's teeth and drilling screws into their mouth? It's like the shit that Sherman posts on Instagram. Oh yeah. Yeah. I blew a dude's chiclets out once, man, and it was it was that was pretty rough. Like Doc Doc had his hands full with that one. I found dentures in a steering wheel last week. That was pretty sweet. Oh, I believe it. Get one. I can just imagine what that party was like. <laughs> <laughs> We had a, so this was back, like mid-90s, like a 15-mile-an-hour double fatality based on two elderly women, sisters, driving in the car. And one veered off, crashed into a telephone pole, set off both airbags, and we took the old women pose and <sighs> blew their shit and we killed them both. Airborne had that. Hi, Cal. Hey, Cal. Balls. Balls. What's up, dude? How's it going? Mm-hmm. How, how was the hunting? I'm on my way back from the uh, annual pig hunt in San Antonio where the industry gets together and gets silly and slaughters pigs wholesale. Had a lot of fun. <laughs> and uh, Mr. Matt, I'm in your home state. I'm hanging out in the Salt Lake Airport waiting for my next flight. Ah. So if you sense my presence, that was it. There's a great disturbance in the force. That, that was the after effects of lunch. Oh, no, and I had Taco <laughs> Bell, so. Mmm, the Benza. Works hey, out. Did, I see, did I see Mr. Roland on this uh, mod chat? Cause Every his presence, day. His presence was sorely missed at the hunt. His name was taken in vain a couple times. <sighs> Dude. I so, so, so wanted to be there, too. So last night, like within five hours ago, Knipe and I are on the back of a truck shooting every bunny within sight because we didn't see any pigs. So, you know, bunnies fell, an entire family of javelinas on our way to get some uh, some hogs. We finally found a bunch. The, uh, the Zev guys and uh, the dudes from FLIR were there, so it was kind of nice that we had some, some good hardware to look up the pigs. Nice. Uh, I saw I saw that Austin shot up shot a bird with the three hundred blackout. Uh, that is a technique. Somewhere, somewhere I have a picture of a eagle claw, and I shouldn't say an eagle. It was a Mexican eagle, a uh, capybara or something, or whatever they call them. Uh, somebody shot a foot off one, which was probably brutal and shouldn't be discussed on air. But there you have it. Uh, pictures, of course. How were the uh, how were the costumes? I said gay. That wouldn't go over well. I don't know. It's you not can... my thing. I I saw that some put some significant effort into uh, yes, uh, which is always amazing. Personally. See. The kids from Trigicon, I mean, if you saw Johnny Moore and Jake there, and they're, you know, they're already four foot high, so dressed as Ewoks, doing the, the Humpty Dance, strange, but A, A for effort, they were switched on. Which guys was it? Uh, Johnny Moore and Jake Labrizzi from Trigicon. Jake Labrizzi. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. There's some photos out there, I'm sure. Uh, if you swing through either of their Facebook feed, they'll be loud and proud in their little Furby suits. Really nice. Mars or MROs? Repitan, por favor. Mm-hmm. What optics were they shooting? Aim Great points. question. Now, there were a lot of MROs, oddly enough. Um, didn't see a lot of EOTechs, but uh, you know the FLIR guys are always great about handing out some symbols for people to try. So I was shooting uh, some kind of 640 res, one of the RS FLIRs, and uh, daytime, I just had the MRO on a 12-inch Hodge gun. 
Nice. Land fair. Yep. Ah, hold on. Let me put the camera specifically on you. Yep. Rudy Zion. I think these are the same ones Roland's got. Okay. We've got a set or two of these laying around. I don't the think they're supposed to make that clicky noise. No, the worst <laughs> thing that happens, dude, is that lens slips out of the channel. Yeah. When they reach a point, and you're like, okay, that was cool. Big deal. And then throw them back in the glass. Yeah. And that's it. And pretty much the lenses are pretty much indestructible. Yeah. That is cool. Yeah, yeah I finally got my first blim. Uh, and I don't even know how I did it. I noticed it uh, the other day. Um, it's small, tiny scratch. But, I mean, my glasses are 14 months old now, I believe. Yeah. Um, and, and like, that that's the first anything that uh, that I've been able to do these lenses. And it's not even an eighth of an inch. It's just this tiny... Tiny, tiny little, you know, blim that I can't, I can't buff out. But uh, I don't think I've ever had a set of Oakley lenses last me a year. That's about right. These are like the first pair I got about, I don't know, a year and a half ago or so. And they just been, yeah, these have been passed around at classes, let dudes wear them and use them and stuff and things and. I, I believe we're in the bathroom with Kel right now. What's that say? Ether? Finland? Fentanyl? He's sitting on the toilet. Um, that would be airport vodka. Mm. Somebody gave me some because I'm going to be making some Fentanyl vodka, not because I'm a drinker. Excellent. So, Cal, did the uh, did the Mormons make you show your papers when you got there? Housewives, um, bitter. Uh, that didn't happen. But I've got TSA pre-check. So, you know, they didn't go looking for my special underwear. <laughs> it's magic. It is magic underwear. But as you take the tour through my Arcteric Blade 21 bag, my carry-on here, just for uh, for show and tell. Very nice. I came home. What's a good hunt without stealing some sheds while you're there? Mm. If that's TSA approved carry-on, that might be pretty good for some uh, some self-defense slash retake the aircraft. I could stab somebody in the fucking neck with that. Dude, when I was going through TSA, I was a little concerned that they might be, you know, thinking this was some kind of ramming weapon, which it is. But uh, okay, nobody tried to take them away from me, so life is good. Nice. Of course, you know, this is kind of because we do like loadout dumps and that kind of stuff. And since I'm really just looking for something in my bag while we're talking, so we always have PBS 14s when you get on a commercial flight. You never know. You know, and on that note, we can kind of bring make it topical because Roland knows all that. Roland, what do you think about these filters for PBS 14s and the like? I've got one of the Orion ones, and somewhere I've got a Wilcox one. You know, the orange filters. Yeah, um, the. Uh, I'm not a, I'm not a real big fan. Uh, I think they do give you some benefit in terms of not uh, disrupting your natural night vision. Uh, I'm a big fan of the rubber gasket, though. I will put the rubber gasket on and and pop the the opaque lens out uh, to protect eye pro from getting scratched up, and it's uh, much more low pro and convenient than using the uh, the spongy. Eye cup protect the green from bleeding out PVS 14 things that everybody just rolls back anyway. Um, right. that, that's a much better form factor uh, for for this, what is essentially the same thing, which is just protecting your, your clear eye pro from getting scratched. Um, when you start getting down into real low levels uh, where you're having to crank the gain up on the old PVS 14, uh, that opaque lens is going to affect your ability to, to see what's going on downrange. If you're talking uh, probably below 30% uh, ambient illumination with no active IR um, uh, assistance, you're going to, you're going to want to take that orange lens off anyway, just to be able to see better 
because your 14s are operating kind of at the edge of their of their capability. Did I miss a discussion on cap crap earlier? Yeah, I, I went off on kind of a tirade about cat crap yesterday, about cat crap and everything. And it was, um, it was really good stuff. Because if you're using, you use Clear Hypro behind your PBS 14s, if you would ever do such a mortal thing, use one nod instead of binoculars. Yeah, I, I wear I wear Clear Eye Pro all the time. Um, yeah, I mean until they fog up and they have to come off. So uh, when you start talking about you know transitional kind of crappy, uh, traditionally fogging your stuff up conditions, uh, you, you're I'm running into the possibility of having the objective lens on my nods fogged, the uh, eyepiece uh, side of my nods fogged, the outside of my clear eye pro fogged, and the inside of my clear eye pro fogged all, all simultaneously. So you can get four four layers of foggage when you run into a uh, change in humidity and or temperature environment. Roland is wearing iPro as we speak. I actually am. I got my clear Rudy's on. Everybody? Get out of here. But do those fit the cat? <laughs> the cat. Hold on, Kitty. He's like, yeah, that shit ain't gonna last. <laughs> Ken is awesome. The Humane Society waiver that I would never return him. He had escaped from three other homes. And he was vicious. Yeah, I don't know. He's a punk. Mm. And, and Kel still has his feed going on in the bathroom. I'm not in the bathroom. I'm in the airport. Proof. You were probably fooled by the luxurious candy drill. Yep. And the stainless steel. As you can see, no toilet. Mm. Yeah, but any room's a bathroom if you're in a big enough for her. Oh. So how long until you're home? Yeah, I'll be home at 11. No, oh, that's not bad. Yeah, all i got to turn around. I think I'm going to go to U1 Germany. I've been kicking that idea around and just hopping out there for a day or two. I kind of like to shower and get some of this pig blood off myself, though. Why? A trash Muslim. Ball. Muslim repellent. <laughs> that might work. You never know. I'm going to buy a big piece of property up north and just go build a garage and live in it. That's all there is to it. Come in tonight, Matt. Anybody? Whoever wants to. You knew you screwed the bottom of the barrel when you invited me. Well, when you immediately responded, that just showed you need to be here. Probably. Because Dorothy Mantooth is a saint. Like I said, as soon as I got off the plane and switched out of barrel, I, could, as I would never, ever violate FAA rules. That, that popped up that you were doing your thing. And, I heard one talking. I figured out to do. So, uh, Cal, it, if you can't respond or, or 
would prefer not to respond. Uh, uh, I understand, but um, for, for us as consumers uh, that may or may not know, you know, kind of the whole intricacies of the, the business and how things are made in the industry and such, um, what, what are your thoughts about the viability of OSS as a suppressor company based upon the specific, not personalities as in people, but the specific duty positions that resigned when the, when the president of that company resigned? I mean, is that company basically hollowed out now? Do they not have anybody or any ability to continue to, to, provide if I if I wanted if I was interested in in OSS suppressors as a as a brand um, uh, sh- should I be concerned about the the recent changeovers with the management and all these employees or, or are they still going to be able to, to produce product well and I you know just get down in the precursor I've never really talked crap about competitors or people in my field I've met Russ a couple times. He seems like a pretty decent chap. I appreciate that there's people trying different things, you know, rather than traditional designs. Uh, don't have a whole lot of time with OSS suppressors. I've shot a couple and a couple, and, you know, whatever. They're, you know, they're suppressors. Um, no, no real technical comments on whether they're good or not. So you flash forward to see this whole hubbub, but, you know, a week ago, Russ writes a letter that, you know, He's pretty disgruntled. Times are bad. It seems like a really emotional letter. And uh, from what I understand, what you know, there's some venture capital that's on that's going on there. Uh, reading between the lines, it sounds like he didn't like the way the management was going, and the management the lines, it seems like management probably wanted to return on their investment, which is understandable uh, and appropriate. So you know, with Russ's letter, it was kind of like uh, there, there was some interesting things where he's like, hey, you know. The top dogs are leaving. The brains are leaving. It looked like he was trying to scuttle the ship. And the next line is, and by the way, I'm trying to sell my stock, which I found kind of odd. You know, hey, would you like to buy some stock in a company whose brains are leaving out the door? And current management is, you know, he sort of alluded that the suppressors maybe might be unsafe uh, or, or had a large uh, recall rate or something like that. You know, that's not my opinion. It's just simply in this letter. That's what I took away from it. So, you know, it, it looked like he kind of tried to bomb the place a little bit on the way out. I'm sure he had some reasons for that. Um, I haven't heard the other story to hear what the, uh, the boss guys, you know, the money guys wanted out of it. So it would be inappropriate to comment on that, but it sounds like it was his business. So is there an OSS that left is kind of the question. You know, the suppressors brief really well. You know, Tiswig liked them. A bunch of other people really like the idea of it. Um, you know, do they really do what they do in real life? You know, I'm sure say no or excuse me, yes. <laughs> I think a lot of people would say no. There's some dealers that have had them that were disappointed in them, and maybe they just get the message. Um, you know, there's pictures going around of a couple broken ones, but that means nothing. You know, anybody can break anything. So, uh, you know, to answer your actual question of, you know, what's the the future of that company? Sounds like Russ is trying to start out with this part two in a, in a year, and he'll have some time to work on on the designs and making them better. And if he goes someplace, but cool, congratulations. The existing company. I don't know if they have much in the way of distribution. You know, are there any actually out there being used? I mean, well, like the FBI bought a few, uh, or ATF, some federal agency. And um, I don't know too many people that, that actually bought them. So, you know, should you be worried about buying an SS suppressor today? I guess the question is, is are there any OSS suppressors today to buy? Yeah, I mean, I've seen I've seen several on the market, and you know, the the question was more pointed towards, uh, you know, not necessarily losing Russ. You know, if you lose your Kevin Brittingham, that's that's one thing. You know what I mean? If you lose one guy and he, and he's supposedly the brainchild or whatever, that that's one thing. But the the part that concerned me about the quote quote letter was the list of employees that he said was walking out with him, and. Um, like I said, not, not knowing how companies, you know, necessarily worked or whatever that, that looked like it was a pretty long list. 
So, you know, if you lose uh, a brainchild and, and then, you know, 80% of your doers in a company, do, what, what do you have left when they all hit the door? It, you know, sure. Sure. And, and, you know, there's some businesses that are very personality based and there's, you know, you've always got that kid who's a cook at McDonald's. who's like, when I quit, this place is going to burn to the ground. And then 10 days later, they don't remember even work there. Um, you know, because there's a good system in place, there's infrastructure and it's bigger than one man. Uh, you know, is OSS bigger than one guy or, or a team of guys? Uh, and I don't know, did you actually list all the people that were going or did you just allude to it? I think I just kind of saw a, and there will be more people leaving kind of threat. Okay. Uh, all right. Well, you know, I, I value uh, your opinion about all things industry related. So I, I appreciate you taking the time to share. I thank you. That sounded so formal and lacking of profanity. It gets a little weird like that sometimes, Kel. Yeah, like all of a sudden I thought he was trying to sell me some encyclopedias or something. Yeah. It's only when he's trying to be like all smart and shit. Big words. Mm. Yeah. But it's just one guy's opinion. I happen to have been around the block a couple times in this whole crazy silencer industry, but, uh, you know. I, I, I've learned more to keep my mouth shut than open when it comes to critiquing or commenting on other people's business practices. You know, I, I believe everybody until they're proven, proven different. Yeah. And I, I certainly wasn't, uh, gonna try to put you on the spot and, you know, ask you, Hey, what do you think about OSS? You know, their product, does that shit, you know, work as advertised, blah, blah, blah. What do you think about non baffled design, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. That's, that, that's absolutely not the direction I wanted to go with that, that question. That was a strictly human resources, business management question that just happened to also be suppressor related. Sure. And you know, to the, to the question you didn't ask just as a professional curiosity. Okay. If the whole claim to fame of an OSS is low blowback, if I took a uh, Surefire SOCOM put it out to 40 cal, I'd have a hell of a lot less blow. And it would be way cheaper and, you know, the bill of materials and everything without all that really intricate uh, reverse jet turbine stuff. I don't know the answer to this because I've never done it. But, you know, if I took existing SOCOM issued suppressors, put a bigger hole on, would the ultimate results be pretty close to what OSS is. OSS generally meters on the louder side. They're not bad, but they're generally on the louder side. Because if you're holding back, it's got to go somewhere. It's going to go out towards the microphone, right? So, which it all eventually gets there. But, uh, you know, is all their intricacies, there's a lot going on in OSS can, but it's necessary. And that's just one guy saying, hmm, what would happen if you just had hard force suppressed it would get the same results at a lot cheaper. Interesting. I wouldn't mind so seeing. Uh, I, I wouldn't mind seeing low uh, low light uh, signature photos of the OSS to see what's going on in front of it. Uh, I have seen it with others. Um, you know, there's this perception out there that uh, suppressing your gun reduces muzzle flash, and then that's absolutely not. Uh, not the case 99% of the time. Um, a good flash hider will produce a lower uh, muzzle signature than most suppressors will in terms of flame coming out of the front end of the can. So if you board out, if you board out a surefire can like you're talking about, what's the increase in, in flash coming out of the front of the gun? Uh, muzzle side signature, visual signature. And then, uh, you know, what's an OSS doing um, under high-speed film, you know, in, uh, in, in dark conditions? I'd, I'd just be curious for my own kind of, you know, personal curiosity at, uh, at, at how that thing fares compared to traditional baffle designs. Yeah, or if you just put a little flash eye around the end of the thing, too. You know, if you got a, uh, say, this hypothetical board out SOCOM RC or whatever, you know, your suppressor of choice, and you just you, well, brother, I was making to the end cap a traditional flash hider or a good flash hider like a B Mars or something like that. You know, could you make up the difference? Um, you know, and it, obviously it's going to be longer, but um, you know, to modify a can like that and kind of make a hybrid flash hider flash suppressor, um, that's something that's very possible. 
but uh, mm-hmm. them's fighting words too about as far as how to measure flash. You use the the words high speed photography or high speed film. Yeah, you know, that's uh, even I doesn't see it the same cycles as uh, as high speed camera. High speed cameras are absolutely cool, and you know, if you get yourself a high definition phantom if you want to see what's going on, but that may not look exactly what a human records because the eye works at a different uh, frame rate as well. No, I, yeah, I absolutely agree with you. We, we've all seen photographs, you know, and this is this goes back to the, you know, the haters of the Roland Special and, uh, you know, carrying a compensated gun uh, for duty, et cetera, et cetera. They can all produce photos that show these big, you know, blooming fireballs out in front of, you know, a weapon, and they're capturing that exact moment in time. But, um, you know, you shoot that pistol under nods, and it's it's not even enough to white out your night vision. You know, you, you don't even know. It's too short. Yeah, it, it is too short for, uh, you know, that for that micro uh, that micro channel plate to, to even convert those photons over to electrons and, and overpower the overpower the system. So um, it, it's it's a non event. Uh, <clears throat> I shoot my gun, you know, I shoot my gun at night all the time and nobody has. uh you know, n- nobody that's been on the uh, range with me has, has complained that it's, you know, that it's a fire breather. It's because it's happening so fast. But, uh, you know, so that that is a good point, you know. Yeah, Owen Kramer, uh, he presented a paper was in a crane, I believe, uh, on measuring through the standard. Uh, you know, there's some oddball machines out there that measure air, aircraft strobes, you know, the, the lumens and that sort of thing, uh, you know, but to capture a, a flash bulb, something like that, you, you can't just use, um, you know, high, high speed film. One of the, I, oh, and I used to go back and forth with, uh, with how do you measure that? I said, well, I just always did it by doing a long exposure and then throwing that picture into Photoshop, converting it to black and white, coming it down and then counting pixels. You know, there's 200 white pixels flash versus, you know, a thousand black pixels. And so, you know, if, you, if you're comparing a couple of flash hiders, you just take that one static event. And I know it's not a system, but it's something that you can quantify. Uh, whereas if you go with the high speed photography, and I mean videography, you get these slow motion discovery channel giant blooms, you know, that look like Nagasaki in slow motion. But then, like you say, but then you look at it with nods in real time, and you're like, nah, didn't say anything. So, you know, it can be, uh, you, you can make some real hit pieces if you want to use uh, high-speed photography. I've, I've got a, a great film someplace. Uh, someone sent me some ammo to test on an MP7, and uh, available in, in, the, in the quiver was an MP7. And uh, took some took some high-speed video of it. And and I just it was I, I was like I can't release this video. It makes the MP7 look horrible, you know. And I love the MP7. It's a neat little gun, but under high speed photography, that and a lot of guns, the whole thing's wiggling and flexing, and the backup iron sights look like they're falling off, and the magazines flung out, and you know, and, and it's okay. That happens all the time. But when you're looking at it under this, you know, zillion frames per second kind of event, it just looked like the gun was falling apart. You know, and I didn't want, you know, I didn't want, I didn't want people to see that in public and go, like, gun's a piece of crap, you know, because it's not. But you could do, you could do that with a lot of guns. You could do that with a lot of flash hiders, suppressors, whatever, and just, you know, pick these ultra slow events to make it look bad. It, it's funny that you mentioned the MP7 because I, I was about to bring it up if you weren't. Um, and this is just from a marketing standpoint about, uh, you know, taking taking a snapshot in time. Um, you know, uh, before, you know, when I worked at my last place and we were looking at the MP7 as well. Um, and so, you know, I'm up at the stratosphere at, at HK's uh, little thing. It shot, you know, uh, 10 years ago now, I guess it, it was. And uh, dude whips out his laptop and he's showing me all this ballistic uh, data. And he's got these stills and they're, they are, they're snapshots of the high speed video of ballistic gel testing. And what he has captured is the temporary wound cavity when it's at its absolute maximum. And he's like, Oh, look what this thing's doing in ballistic gel or whatever, you know? And it's like, Hey, come on, man. I'm not like, I'm not an idiot. Like you're not talking to 
some dummy. Like I understand what I'm looking at right now. That's a temporary wound cavity. Stop, stop showing me stills and let me see the fucking video, you know? And the HK sales guy was like totally floored um, that, that I was just calling out his fucking, you know, massive fist size freaking hole in, in, you know, in the gelatin. Yeah. Come on, dude. Negative nine. Yeah. They they respected your point of view and went away quietly. Uh, I mean, he ended up showing me that he ended up showing me the video, like you know, he wanted to make the sale, so he was going to show me what he he's going to show me what I wanted to see, and then he had to he had to admit that you know, at the end of the high speed video, that giant cavity shrunk back down, and you had a relatively small permanent wound channel, which is what what I you know was absolutely expecting to see. Right. You know, I'm looking at everybody's little uh, icon or avatar photos here, and uh, Fincher has been doing a shot for about six minutes. I don't know if his picture is frozen or not. And then Matt looks like a late night host on Conspiracy Radio. <laughs> I, was, I was, I was thinking Love Line from back in the day. Mm. We were in awe of your in-depth report. Yeah. Well, I'm, I'm sober. And you know that that distinguishes me from most. We'll drink more for you. But Cal, I have the best the best new ballistic round available to mankind. It is. He's speechless. I know. It may be an air. It may be the airport Wi-Fi. I just blanked out on everybody there for a second. Yeah. Smith and Wesson Nyclad one twenty five grain. Nine millimeter. <laughs> I'm down. Should have more nylon in our house. <laughs> that shit's got more nylon in it than half an egg rolls beer. <laughs> <laughs> I understood that. <laughs> That's right. It's 125 grains, but it's 1,000 D, bitches, coming at you. <laughs> right on. <laughs> Completely water thin. Weave. Oh. Uh, where's the egg? What do we need him for that one? No doubt. Oh. Uh. And the sad part is there was there was rounds missing out of the box, Kel. So you know, there's a there's a, there's a couple of unclaimed bodies coming out of that motherfucker for sure. Good stuff. Where do you get that? What's that? Where did you dig this night climb off? I what 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 brought it on? I was hitting up a uh, store due to the gear, going through the covert stockpiles, and. Uh, that came from a stash of my uncle's shit, who was with uh, DPD for a bazillion years, and probably no doubt that gun was probably in, that ammo was probably like in his Model Thirty Nine Smith and Wesson that he got issued that he threw away immediately. He went back to his Model Twenty Seven or his Forty Five Long Colt Beastie gun. Yeah, good stuff. Oh, yeah. I still got a couple boxes. Somebody just reminded me I have a couple boxes of black one left, which, you know, I'll never shoot because it's just school. Mm. The old black talent STX Ranger load or the, like, the actual black talent black box or the black talent black box? And it says black talent on it like I bought it in 1992 or whatever. Oh, yeah. So I'm 47.9, you know, I just have like, you know, 20 or 40 rounds of it, but it's kind of like, oh, I don't ever want to shoot it because then I wouldn't have it anymore. Hmm. Yeah, I'm I've got, I'm not uh, an ammo collector, I'm just a scavenger. Yeah, I, I have uh, Winchester Black Talon 
45, um, several hundred rounds of it. Mm. Yep. Well, you, missed your you missed your opportunity to put some of that into a hog. Just wanted to rub that in one more time. Mm. Thanks, thanks a lot, Kel. Yeah. No problem. I'm here for you. The, the truth is that Roland just wanted to be here to be on these fine, fine programs. And we didn't have Wi-Fi where we were, so that would have been lost. You you know, really you kind of sacrifice the way you always do for the public. And so it's kind of the needs of the many I work with. Yeah, but your 45 black talons don't want a full moon clip for your revolver. <laughs> Mm. No bodies, dog. No brass. No evidence. So someone did post a question. This is from our friend Rick. Uh -oh. The question is, where do babies come from, and what tactical color should the placenta be? <clears throat> Fortunately, we have a couple medical professionals here that can help. Uh, I would say after 20 to 30 minutes, wolf gray. Mm. Wolf Gray sounds about right. <laughs> I just got to uh, look at mine two weeks ago for my firstborn. <laughs> yeah. yeah, congratulations. By the way. <laughs> thank you, thank you. Kids are weird. Yeah. Well, soon as talking, you got a bunch of them coming now. A bunch? I don't know about a bunch. That ultrasound showed one, so I'm good with that. <clears throat> Congrats, Matt, by the way. I don't think I've spoken to you since. Oh, no, thanks, man. I appreciate it. I think, uh, what are you next? You next in the hopper for that? I think so. <laughs> and then, Kel, someone says that you look like Josh Brolin. So that's interesting. Ooh. Never heard of him. Never heard of him. Sicario, dog. Saw the, that shit yesterday. Had had to show it to the VC. Got to educate them fools. It was pretty good. I kind of enjoyed it. Yeah, I absolutely think that when you're going to your point of domination, you should trip, fall, and engage threats on full auto. But um, other than that, yeah, it was a pretty good movie. I, I just like the incredible willingness of all the bad guys to just sacrifice themselves. You know, know that they're in the traffic scene and they're just going to get out and they know they're all going to get ice, but darn, we're going to take a few of them down with us. I'm not the world that, that is, but it's probably somewhere. Well, you know, when you're when you're working for a cartel boss, you you can't just kind of tell this dude, uh, you know, hey. Um, your your brother was being extradited back to the United States, and I know you told us to rescue him and all, but uh, the the feds had a fucking drop on us, so we just stayed in our car and didn't do anything. Like that, that's how you get you and your family killed. So, um, you you end up in I, I this, defer. yeah, you, you you end up in this no win situation where you're like, fuck, I gotta get it on because if I don't, you know. Yeah, you know, moral of the story, uh, don't don't work for the cartel and you won't be in uh, in no win situations like that. Were we done with the percent? I can leave that in. Your Wi Fi is jacking up, Cal, we can't hear you. This is worse than Fisher. Hey, fuck your face. My shit's good tonight. <laughs> yeah, your stuff is really good right now. Yeah, so fuck your face, Matt. And what, after your eight login exactly. attempts. Exactly. Exactly. I was going to say five. What's going on with that shit? Not my fault. It's, it's send, the best. Send me the link. Send me the link. I'm here all by myself. I'm here alone. Help me. I love that Landfair's got like the HD camera with his name and like, you know, Hollywood yeah. microphone and the rest of us have this broken ass shit we're just trying to get working. You know, pretty soon he gets any more shit, Landfair's going to be like Jaeger. Oh, I already am. What are you talking about? I know. I need to shave my head though. 
That and maybe grow goatee, and you could be a combo between him and Pinkus. Awesome. <laughs> Put when's, on your the gun, suit. when's your gun coming out, Matt? Oh, I don't carry one. Good point. Yeah. Nice. Well, well played, sir. Well played. Very nice. Right I like there. it. Mm. Yeah, Fisher's connection is on point tonight. Wix, That's, why don't you just jump in? It's like you did it all. Thank you, at and &T. Okay, fine. No, man. Okay, sir. Oh, wait, maybe he will. You should. Here he comes. I, hey, I, I hooked the sir up today. Oh, really? Like, big time hooked him up. Yep. Like what? Uh, friends helping friends. Cool. Cool. Networking. Introdu introducing them to some people. From my old work. So he can get brought in the trust tree. Yeah, he's a good dude. And get the get the Jose Gordon love and, you know, all of that that piece of it. Jose's probably out somewhere right now warm golfing. Well, Kel's still here, but he's just here. He's, he he's, has a film strip. Hey, there he is. What's up, guys? What up, Mr. Wick? What's going on, Steve? You look like fucking Deliverance and Fleece. <laughs> Thank you. Your mom says it feels good against her back hair. Hey, uh, I'm just glad that somebody's treating my mom right. Somebody has to do it. Squeal like a pig, boy. Yeah, yeah just send her home with uh, with a rifle or a nice 1911 or something, man. That's uh, that's all I care about. Um, when that Browning high power to show up. I'm kind of excited about that. I wish you'd hurry up and get here. High powers are cool. Dude, yeah, I got that new Nighthawk high power coming. Um, of course you do. Uh, look, hater. I, I got nothing. Well, yeah, you know why? Because like, oh, fucking 1911s are stupid. They're dumb. They're stupid. I, I did, what? dude. Flashback on the internet, like ten years ago, I was the most diehard 1911 advocate that was fucking out there. You and Clint Smith, Grandpa. Hey, I'm sorry that I've got a Glock that can shoot 100 fucking 7x. You know, nothing wrong with that. You blew that shit up. So, oh damn, balls. Um, <laughs> got nothing. Yeah, I got nothing. Uh, <laughs> no, like I said, man, fucking come on, somebody other than STI make me a double stack. Make make me a double stack. Mm hmm. That is properly finished. That doesn't rust. And doesn't require, you know, seventy to ninety dollar fucking tuned mags. Like, just make me a double stack. I have no someone. Yeah, I know. I have no problems with a manual safety. None at all. I grew up on one. Um, if I was ever to jump into the MNP game, I would have a manual safety on my MNP. It's not necessary. Why? Why would you do it? I don't know. Because I've always used a manual safety on everything other than a Glock. And, uh, you know, it's a nice place to rest your thumb so it doesn't fucking hit your slide stop. Mm -hmm. Oh, look. Should we just leave that on the on the screen? Are we gyms and shit? I've been to that airport many, many times. Yeah, but you get free travel. I do. But you're you're not oh, well not free as in it doesn't cost. What I'm saying is you're not you're not detained by the freaking moral authority and uh taken off to secondary. Mm -hmm. 
I think my cat's home on duty. So they do that in the Utah airport, huh? That's what they do. Moving sidewalks. So much uh, fun. They uh they they do catalog uh atheists, uh, uh quote quote other Christians and uh and then, you know, agnostics and Muslims that come through uh Utah. Mm. You, you, mu- you must show your papers. Matt, how do you say papers please? In, I'll uh, spice bitter. Yeah, that's it. I'm gonna go tell Carl his brother's dead. <laughs> that's right. Go get your og. Go get his og. What is wrong with an og? Why are you fucking hitting on my og? That shit is legit. Bull because all, all companies that make bullpup guns, except for allegedly Desert Tactical, mm-hmm. have not figured out how to have a trigger bar that's six or eight inches that doesn't make for a shitty trigger pull. Um, I've got an aftermarket in that. I can't remember who the hell it is. It's pretty badass. That's why it's in the safe. No, it's because I rotate guns in and out. Right now, the Galil's riding around in the truck. Jesus fucking Christ. What? These fucking hater like shotguns. You're such a hater bitch. Want me to pull out the HK now? No. I, I want you to carry an AR-15 like I, fucking regular people. Like an American. If he carries an AR, how's he going to live out his way of the gun, Ryan Felipe fantasy? Thank you. <laughs> I got like yeah, a- you know what Ryan Felipe should have brought? Not 11 fucking 1911 mags. Maybe another magazine for his Galil. Because he fires 20 rounds and then does the entire rest of the gunfight with his fucking pistol. Why? Fucking, he does fire by where he does fucking wrecking fire through the walls, that damn thing. Yeah. H- hashtag fucking loadout fail. <laughs> we get shit handed to him by a bunch of old dudes with J frames. Thank you. It was Chuck Haggard's grandfather. <laughs> <laughs> and mod chat's gone sideways right now. No, no. She did this one south. Mm. Ball. Looks like Kel needs us to focus on something. Uh oh. I'm just yeah. letting you see some of the strange art that we have in the uh, Salt Lake Airport. So is this a ballerina or is this like Jesus jammies? Is that what's happening there? No, that is Jesus. Okay. Yeah. Clearly. Actually, and there there is one that I always make because it's really the freakiest thing. There's a series of about 12 photos from local artists here that have, you know, say like ballet people or modern dance troops in very big outdoors settings. So, you know, you'll have like Zion or something with uh, with some strange Russian dancers. So these guys here in the middle of the snowy Salt Lake or something, pretty cool, little Russian dancer yeah. guys. But this, this is the one that, you need to focus on. That's actually Siberia, Kel. That, that's Siberia, and they're celebrating. They, they finally got their temple uh, built in Siberia. That's right. Um, the so. sign must be a misprint, then. It says something <laughs> about Park City. <laughs> Just a little bit north of Siberia. You know what we say about staying in your lane? You leave the modern ballet to me. You take the gun stuff. <laughs> hey, Carl. Carl is a ballet dancer. Okay, but you guys ready for this one? This is one you got to see because it's freaky and it'll appeal to the warlike nature. Are those predators? What the? That's weird. But damn it, it holds 42 rounds, Roland. 42. Steve, we're appreciating art. Come on. Look, there's that, a that was uh that was that was the uh nah, forget it. I'm not even gonna go there. <laughs> it's got lots Never of pew, 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 pew. So do we actually have people that are writing questions that you know we've missed out on? Yeah, no. we're ignoring this shit. No, yeah. not at all. And that one has thirty five. We have sixteen viewers though. That's good that's plus. Half of which are just us. God, that's horrible. Dude, that's awesome. This is like a three-rig circus. We have Steve with his Too gun, much. Kel in an airport, and Matt Wicks with his knots. I'm saying. I wanted to do it. Steve, tell me about that og you're flashing around. Is that a black or a green one? Uh, that one's actually a green. Um, 
I have a black one in the other safe upstairs with the actual Steyr Optic, the Donut of Death. That really sucks. Right, right. The little skinny scope. Yeah, this one's a A3 whatever, you know, Steyr gun. That's uh, sporting a set of mag full backup, so I've got the, uh, you know, sight picture of a J-frame. Absolutely. Right on. And a uh, Trigicon RMR sitting there. Yeah. As a, as a kid, I used to think those were the coolest things. I, I'm not really sure where I picked that fallacy up, but, yeah. you know, I, I, when, I was, when I was a young man, my first gun I ever bought was an HK-94. Got it for, like, you know, 1200 bucks or something. Yeah. And uh, as I watched it appreciate in value, I was like, the only thing I'd trade this for would be an AUG because they're so cool. Yep. Then I shot one, and you need to keep in mind I'm left-handed. So uh, shooting it was hazardous. Yeah. Absolutely. Until you switch that whole assembly over, it becomes a pain in the ass. The, yeah. uh, the only reason why I ever wanted an AUG was... Die hard? No. The Helicons and Carl. No. There was a picture of some chick, troop, a Danish chick on a beach somewhere, or maybe she was Australian, in uniform, like sometime during the first golf back in the late 80s, and she was in a bikini top, BDU bottoms with a towel and an AUG. And she had the greatest set of kits I'd ever seen. And I There's said, a- gotta have an AUG. There's a lot going on there, but I'm just really the most impressed that you mistook Denmark for Australia. Whatever she was from, I don't care. You remember the picture. <laughs> it made an impression. Yes, it did. Yeah. It was a blue bikini top, too. There was uh, a thing with Augs. My own personal Jones is like, I kind of collect odd colored guns. Like, yeah. maybe I don't care about a Glock, but if you can find me one of the rare purple ones that they made for, like, Sudan or something, you know, there's some oddball stuff like that. Or, you know, if you've ever been to the gray room at HK and they've got like clear USPs, and pink USPs, and you know, now Cerakote has come along and ruined it for collectors because, you know, getting a one-off weird factory color isn't any big deal anymore. But I always wanted one of the blue logs. It was, uh, I want to say the, it was like, it was some Middle Eastern air force or something, you know, some kind of Republican guard deal. And they had these kind of baby blue augs, and it was sort of mythical. And it was just this thing, you know, we've got to find one and import it. And I actually called Steyr, you know, in Austria as, as again, a younger man calling long distance to, to, to Austria. And they're like, hey, can I get some of these? Do they exist? I wanted to, you know, do a pre-internet version of Snopes and find out if, if we'd actually seen this. And uh, they said, yeah, we did make some, you know, and, and no, you can't have them. But, uh, you know, it's just good to confirm it. So one of these days I'll find one, track it down, and my life will be complete. While I was on the phone with them, I did get them to import some of the desert tan ones, which, oh. you know, look like absolutely like soap. They're pretty much whitish tan. And that was before you could get them. I had to, like, order 25 or something. And I was just so stoked that they existed that I brought them in. And it was kind of cool. Yeah. I I had a Galil 308 a bunch of years back in the early 90s, late 80s. You know, ton of mags, wood hand guard, carry handle, full down bipod, the whole nine yards. Don't ask me to remember the number, model number. But, you know, thought it was the greatest gun in the world until I actually had to pick that thing up and carry it around and do shit with it. And I was like, this thing is horrible. And the only way to carry mags for him was to, like, throw it in a big Claymore-type bag. <laughs> and I was like, yeah, that thing has to go. And I thought I had the best trade in the world and I traded it for a Colt 9mm AR and, like, 50 32 rounders. And probably in retrospect was a good trade at that point. And then got rid of that, you know, doing the whole cycle of guns. And then I was in the uh, local fun shop about, uh, you know, three weeks ago, a month ago, whatever it was now. And some guy who used to do a bunch of fam fire stuff for military law enforcement, I don't know what the deal was, the old guy brought in a whole collection of shit. And in there was a 308 Galil with a bunch of mags, an old Schmidt and Bender scope, a ton of mags, but they had nerfed the gun up. Uh, you know, he had pulled the flash hider off and the bayonet lug and whatever was on it and put a muzzle brake and all kinds of garbage on it that was useless to me. I was like, yeah, no thanks. I was going to make an offer to them on both guns. And the uh, one of the head guys at the shop says, hey, but wait, there's another one. I'm like, Awesome. And he's like, yeah, there's a brand new 5.56 five, gun in the box with eight mags and 800 rounds of ammo that has never been fired. And I'm like, how much? 
two grand. I'm like, sold. I will take it. So couldn't pass it up. I would have kept the nine mil AR. Yeah, I know. <laughs> now, those things, yeah, those things are perfect girlfriend guns. I love those things. You know, they're just kind of when you want to take somebody new out shooting that you don't want to scare. Yeah. They, they are a fun gun. Now it's just kind of a toy. They're all toys anymore. Well, yeah, that's assuming that. Yeah, you know, everybody complains that the uh, the magazines no. spout if you drop them. Then no, I bet the girlfriends. So, <laughs> Steve, you buy all those guns with the money you save from not buying sleeves? Pretty much. <laughs> don't start to shit with me. I got one of these laying on the floor, too. I don't even know why, but I do. There's just guns all over the damn place. I go bust out the CZ, and we can have a... Uh, microphone or camera gun war here. I got knives too. <laughs> I might cut myself with this. I don't even know why. This is great. This is just a tour of Steve's fucking playroom right now. It is. Notice all the ammo. <laughs> yeah. Cases of P mags. Hold on. Okay. So. Yeah. I got to send this back to DJ, get it all tuned up. It's full of, like, glass and meth and all kinds of weird shit in there. I got to get this one all set up and be sharpen. Get it done. Oh. Bet you don't have one of those. I bet you I probably don't want one of those. Oh, you don't want to sit at the less than like four fifty nine or some shit, whatever that is. Uh, yeah. no Roland, thanks. you said that you hadn't joined the uh, you hadn't joined the M and P crowd. Is there any reason for that, or you just haven't gotten around it, or you don't need to leave the monogamy of Glock? Um. Yeah. In, anything at this point, you know, as I'm getting older, uh, I don't collect guns anymore. I stockpile weapons for fucking war. And, uh, so you, you better give me a compelling reason to switch platforms that that's going to require switching holsters, switching mag pouches, switching magazines, uh, switching parts. Um, if it's not an AR 15 or a Glock, um, like I said, you, you show me a compelling argument why I fucking need it. Otherwise, I'm just going to buy more AR-15s and Glocks for the coming insurrection. Right. So standardization is something you uh, you value these days more than trying on little new hats. Gotcha. Yep. And yeah, you know, M&Ps just accuracy-wise and trigger reset. You know, uh, finish. Those are my three biggest bitches with the M&P platform. Was the the finish rusted? Um, the, the gun was inherently not accurate and the fucking trigger reset was non-existent. Um, some of those, uh, issues have been fixed and, uh, some, some have not. And, uh, and there are people that have fixed all of them. Uh, D Doug at ATEI, uh, absolutely. If you get an M and P that's been worked on by that dude, um, it, it's going to be legit and good to go. But like, uh, I've got one that's awesome. Best trigger on any handgun that I own. Yeah, but I but why why would I go down that road when it just violates my standardization policy and doesn't really do anything that my Glock can't can't do? So it's kind of my my outlook on it. Gotcha. The uh, remember a couple uh, about a week or two back, Roland, when we were talking about those uh, plates. That one particular like that custom rig. Yep. Yeah, I think this one's the one. I don't remember if these were labeled or not. That's medium long. Nice. Yeah. These what do these things measure out at? Do you remember? I think they were like nine and something. Yeah, like nine and a half. I yeah, 14. Yeah. Yeah, dude. Two more inches of love, man. Absolutely. I dig that rig. Yeah. 
Have any of you guys played around with the new Ruger pistol yet? Which one? The American or whatever, the, you know, the next in the line of Glock killers. Oh, yeah. Yeah, shot it a little bit. Impressions. Um, yeah, so awesome. I've got the Sky 9mm. That's really cool and feels about the same damn way. It's, it's another gun. Um, it's the one I shot felt a little rough. Could have been, you know, first production run gun. I don't know. You know, as far as how it came off the line, it was a little rough. Um, trigger was usable. Reset wasn't half bad. You know, again, that really compares in the Glock. So... It, it's kind of a tough call, but, um, you know, it shot well. It wasn't anything overly exciting. Uh, it seemed like 124 is a lot better than anything else. It's another pistol. It just doesn't do anything for me. They're kind of boring anymore. Mm -hmm. The one gun that I still want to get my hands on and really ring out is that Strike 1 or whatever, that Strike pistol or whatever. That Russian Italian weird Glock CZ combination gun thing that he came out with a couple of years ago. Yeah, man, I know exactly what you're talking about. Yeah, I, I still got some weird like kind of fetish thing going with that. I know I'll buy one and I'll get rid of it, but I got some kink involved in that. Yeah, I had a former uh co-worker that was uh repping for them and just total random um hit him at the circle bar like he walked up with two other um colleagues and uh it was kind of like a, a little family reunion you know at the circle bar at, at 2 30 in the morning and he's like hey man i'm doing this i'm doing this other thing i've got this other thing going on and uh Hey, you know, I respect your opinion on guns. Uh, w w would you be willing to come and, and take a look at this gun tomorrow? So, you know, I went down downstairs, uh, you know, that downstairs where all the, the fucking bottom feeders are at and uh, w went over to the fucking booth and checked the gun out. And it, it wasn't bad. Um, it had an M&P-ish uh, feel on the trigger reset. I didn't like the trigger reset at all, but... Uh, uh, that, that strike one had some other, you know, very good qualities about it as well. I got to tell you, I've been playing with some other goofy shit like that stupid Canic TP9 pistol. <laughs> Dude, for $259, that damn gun is like the one you buy a ton of and you just like give them to everybody you know for a cheapy go away gun. But the damn things last and they shoot great. The sights are for shit on the old model. But they're a good damn gun, and I haven't been able to kill one yet. But I got to tell you, these guys are legit as shit. I love that scope mount. Yeah, yeah I, uh, I need to get a couple of those. Oh, you don't have any yet? <laughs> no, I don't have any yet. Oh, I'll send you a couple if you want. I got a bunch. Just, just because I had to get that in. Yeah, I've, I've been. I, I was waiting for them to go into production before I started calling in markers. But uh, yeah, I've got three, three vortex one to sixes here uh, between Walt and I that that need to get rings on them. Yeah, that's a, it's a pretty cool mount. You know, anything Bill does is awesome. He, um, he flipped me a couple of shot show the last days. Like here, dude. You know and some of his other mounts and that. And uh, I got to admit, man, like anything Bill does, they're, they're 100% awesome. <laughs> the guy does nothing wrong. Great. Humor. Yeah. Yeah, we did, uh, we did a good job on that one. Mm -hmm. I believe it. Oh, I got your ankle rig, too. Okay, good, because I can't find mine. Oh, it's probably because I have that one, too. Just saying. <laughs> <laughs> wow. <laughs> I think I might have a lot of your shit here right now. Wow. 
All right. Well, you know, I, I, I've got this Glock 43 and no, nothing to carry it in other than my back fucking pocket. So, oh. so Blue Force Gear makes his kick ass thing called a M4 belt pouch. Fits in that really good. Or you can have Raven make you one of these snazzy backup rigs that holds a Glock mag and a Glock 43. That's some cool shit. That's, that's some old school shit right there. That That is still awesome. This is like my favorite. I love that thing. Yeah. That is a pretty cool piece of kit. I forget who we originally named that after. There was some instructor that asked for that years ago. I don't remember. Who was that guy? You remember? No. Mm, I can't remember. I think it was Sonny. No. <laughs> there was one of those, but that wasn't it. No, that wasn't it. <laughs> nope. What's up, Chad? What's up? What up, Chad? What up? What's up? What is Kelp doing? Is he just trying to get flagged by TSA? Yeah. He's, he, dude, he's been, like, walking back and forth to the airport for three hours. It was a long way over. <laughs> I got a lot of 12-gauge shotgun shells to roll in, though. We're going to go hit the range at the gauge. Ooh. I, I'm 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 shivering with anticipation. Why are you such a hater about the gauge? Why? Low capacity. Gay as AIDS. Oh. <laughs> you, if you're not if you're not killing, you're you're reloading. Okay. So there's a few high points, and yeah. I mean high points. Yeah, absolutely. Stop thinking military and start thinking sitting in your bedroom and just whacking somebody with that little bit. You ain't going to reload it. Yeah, but I've got all this muscle memory with rifles. You know? I mean, I, I, I'd like a dollar. I'd like a dollar for every time. Um, so if I grab the nightstand gun and it's an AR... Dude, it's business as usual, man. You know, you are such a hater. I respect your skill set, Stephen Fisher, when it comes to employment of the shotgun family of fucking shotguns. <laughs> it's just the gun. You just gotta load it and then shoot some shit with it. It's easy. Not that hard. I can show you some things with it. It's pretty cool. You'll like it. It doesn't involve a three-shot breaching model. I have a Caltech KSG somewhere around here for you. Yeah, that poor that poor jarhead asked for that shotgun like two years ago. <laughs> <coughs> It's just sitting there in the safe. I, I actually have to send a thing back to Caltech at some point. <laughs> they forgot about it. Then they got rid of somebody. Then they heard somebody else who asked me. Then I think they got rid of them. And now, yeah. I'm like, okay, that's cool. Yeah. Yeah. I'm like, whatever. Like, like that's that's the only people in the universe that are as shotgun endeared as you, Fisher, is uh, – Fucking Lance Cooley's fucking following their general orders at ECP, whatever, at fucking Quantico. <laughs> t 10, 10, 14 strapped across the chest. Fucking sir, ma'am. Like, they like not fucking around. Like, fill your ass in. Because um, the fucking, like, yeah, the, you, you, you ain't getting motherfucker to violate his general orders. <laughs> Shit's fuck fact. Um, so anyway, so we've got Steve Fisher and the United States Marine Corps on board with shotguns. And Buford Pusser. Yeah. <laughs> hey, that motherfucker did some damage with that big old piece of hickory. 
That's what I'm saying. See, there's no lie about that. I think that we got some common ground, some middle ground we can agree on there. That dude tore some shit up. Hey, don't get Tim Oric started, man. That dude is on a gauge kick from hell right now. He called Summit Gunbroker, bought a bunch of those old Savage 67s or 77s or whatever. He, he just had a terror spree with that and a bunch of old A5 chopped down Whippet guns. Yeah, he's on some Bonnie and Clyde roll shit right now. I'm waiting for him to pull out a BAR that's been chopped down. <laughs> Fuck yeah. Eh? Vehicle ambush, that's what's up. Yeah. Bunch of 30 out 6 AP. Get some. I know. Bonnie and Clyde should have gone to fucking Petty's class, apparently. Ah, 38 super <laughs> and odd 6. <laughs> <laughs> I got to find that little Asian bastard. Where is he? He's hiding around here somewhere. <laughs> oh, Patty. Mm. Oh, God. Yeah. Mm. Someone wants to know who makes a good ankle holster for the Glock 42 or 43. The wilderness. Old school shit. Um, you know, I've played with a bunch of them. DeSantis, which I probably have sitting around here, which I think is Roland's because it's got his scent on it. Mm. Uh, I really like the ones from Wilderness. They're just, they're bomb proof, super comfortable. I've been playing with them for about the past eight odd ball months now. Um, Samantha over there was cool enough to hook me up with a couple for like a backup gun class that I was doing. I asked for a couple specific mods to one for the 43, which was originally they have this awesome retention strap, which for added security or whatever, to actually turn it inboard because before it was more outboard, so it was printing more in more fitted jeans towards the ankles or different types of pants. So I asked them to mod this to go inboard more. And then on the front end of it was to add a pocket for either a magazine, speed strips, whatever, just in case for those times when this is your only gun, when that hidden gun becomes your primary. And if I'm grabbing this, I'd at least like to have another magazine on hand somewhere as well. It'll also fit cash, an ID, you know, charge card, whatever. So, yeah, so they added a little Velcro pocket flappy top thing on the front of it for me. Um, doesn't take away from the concealment much unless the pants get really, really fitted. But I'm finding this guy rides really, really secure. I wore it pretty much across country on a couple of trips because I drive a lot. And comfortable as hell. I dig it. I like the DeSantis one rolling head. Um, the Gelka one, not so much. It wasn't as comfortable. didn't have enough adjustment for me with my big ass ankles and legs. Um, and especially getting higher up over the top of like Solomon boots, you know, the ankle tops, the, either the quest or the, uh, force where I had to ride a little bit higher. <clears throat> so that kind of negated the Gelco for me. And then the Santa's one was really good, but, uh, but I started rocking these playing with them and I've been super, super happy with them. They've got a big ass furry pad in there. Like the DeSantis one, but this one's a little bit thicker. Um, yeah, I'm pretty happy with them. I mean, they've made bulletproof gear for years, but you know, again, it works. I'm, I'm kind of digging on that pretty heavy. Steve, does that have more Velcro than the Galco one? Cause it looks pretty similar to the Galco. It does. This one's got more vel Velcro around it, so it's like literally, I'm going to say it's got about a six inch, eight inch window of Velcro. I got to take measure off on that. You know I remember? Yeah, it's like seven inches of Velcro wrap on there, on that backside, so it's a little bit more. And again, with turning in the uh, retention strap, which I took one of them and chopped one off just to see for my 42, if it was going to hold the gun. And you know, up and down some flights of stairs and just kind of rolling around with it. One of the guys at uh, A3, it held in place pretty good. Had no problems with the guns flipping out. Um, yeah, so I'm kind of like, that's cool. And for 30 bucks, whatever they are, I'm not going to argue it. I'm drinking more than that in the night, so. 
I am pretty pleased. Who was the brand again? The Wilderness. So way back in like 19, probably 80s or 90s, you probably remember these old M4 mag carriers they did. These are like all the rave out of gun sight and shit, which they're still holding up because this is like one of my original ones from like 1990, 91. Um, there's that 1000D for you. <laughs> you can't kill it. <laughs> Literally, like Roland says, it's like AIDS. You just can't get rid of the shit. It, it lasts forever. And... <clears throat> You, you know, obviously, you remember the old instructor, you know, the old wilderness instructor belts that we've all probably got sitting in our closet somewhere. Um, <clears throat> yeah, they make a kick-ass ankle. We're going to be really, really happy with it. I've got them for a J-frame, a 42, and a 43. And, uh, yeah, I'm really liking them. There's a follow-up to that. Is that leather or neoprene? Or is that the option leather or neoprene? Uh, it is all neoprene. Or cordura stretchy, something, elastic -y, whatever that shit is. All I know is it's stretchy. So, I wouldn't quite call it neoprene. So, it's more of a nylon. Yeah, it's it's been awesome. It's, it's stayed well, comfortable. I do like the fact that it's got a larger release tab on it. You know, it's got about a two inch by two inch piece of strap right there to get it and get it off there kind of quick without messing with, you know, reaching around and pulling it around, turning the holster around. It's just, yeah, I'm really happy with it. And especially with the addition of the uh, front flat pouch for either a spare mag cash ID, whatever the case is. So I kind of like it. Hmm. I wonder if that'll fit it. What was that, Steve? I'm wondering if that front flat pouch would fit one of those SWAT T type tourniquets. I could probably coil up a rat in there or something just to have something in there just in case. You know, something extra. I know it'll fit like a probably a TQ4 or whatever those damn things are just as an option for a second one in there. I'll have to play with that. A couple rubber bands off the asparagus you bought. Mm hmm. That was good. Ah! There it is. Uh huh. Those big ass red rubber bands, dude. Beware of a motherfucker with pink rubber bands, dude. There it is. Yep. Lots of them. Yep. Shit goes so, uh, real nice. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, Every, everything Steve said is, you know, spot on, uh, in my opinion as well. Um, I, I ran the DeSantis uh, for my Glock 42 because that's what came up on Amazon Prime. And so I ordered it. I liked it. Um, Steve flew in a uh, shot last year uh, and, and could, couldn't fly with a gun. So, um, you know, I brushed past him my, my ankle rig, and he, he used that DeSantis and my Glock 42 for the duration of shot. Um, and, uh, you know, and, and, and now he's since – been, been messing with this wilderness package. I haven't gotten my hands on it yet, but uh, I'm looking looking forward to it. Uh, design wise, they look you know the Desantis and the wilderness uh, function very very similar. Um, and uh, yeah, so uh, I haven't always carried a bug. Honestly, um, this is something kind of uncharted territory for me, but uh, I like it. I've uh, I've given away my Glock 42. My daughter has it now, and I've got a Glock 43. Bought it bought it last month, and I'm just waiting to get a get an ankle rig for it so I can I can go back to carrying a bug again. Yeah, I think uh, I think you'll dig it. You know, obviously, I think you and I had talked about uh, you know other reasons for the bug for the ankle gun being kind of a primary that I won't get into, but. Uh, you know, it's pretty legit. actually, I think it was me and Stoney that were talking about it, but uh, there's some definite benefits to having it in particular reasons as even just your primary gun. But um, yeah, it's awesome. I I pretty much travel everywhere with that and whatever my other gun is at that point in time. I like them when I'm driving. You know, you cock that leg up and that gun is right there. 
it, it's right there when you're driving. It's, it's actually pretty damn convenient for a lot of stuff. So, and like you said, you know, the pass off kind of thing. Yeah. Here, dude, there you go. So I do like it. Hmm. But that rig still, I've played a lot with that backup rig from Raven. I'm kind of tracking with that, just having that 43 on the offside with the uh, spare Glock mag attached. It's kind of cool for those times when you're like, oh, shit, I can only get to that gun on that side or whatever the case may be. And, yeah, so that's kind of another thing that I played with pretty heavily in the uh, backup gun class that I taught a couple weeks back. And, uh, yeah, that's pretty slick, too. It takes up a little bit more real estate, but... You know, I've got another 25 plus odd rounds on board with either an Arredondo or a, you know, TTI carrier and then, you know, 43 sitting in there. So I'm liking that too. Mm. So that wasn't a custom rig though. That was two separate components put together, correct? Raven had did something like this years back. I mean, this, this, this goes back to, you know, me and Tom with those guys. I mean, way back in the day, I, I've got to think, geez, Tom, what were we talking? I think I did one for a Keltec with a Glock or M and P mag back in early two thousands, mid two thousands. I think I don't even yeah, remember. That was one of their first, like, uh, interesting things they were making other than the regular holsters. I'm still yeah. trying, I'm still looking it up here. I'm trying to figure out who it was that, originally had that idea because there was some, it was a, a big name trainer who requested it, but the internet is, uh, yeah. somehow lost that information. So I'm working on that. Yeah. I can't, I can't remember. And I, I know we had discussed it, me and Michael and you at one point in time. And then, I mean, I still got it hanging around some here. Remember the battle belt? Yeah. I mean, the, the first two that everybody's starting to do now. I mean, they were making those before, like when the Caltech and the LCP were the only like 380 guns that were that were available. Yeah, and then they then they did that whole old battle belt setup configuration that was kind of predates the Sunny Rig. That yep. was, um, you know, all the stack mags going all the way around plus the whole so that was set up on an old Eagle padded inner belt or whatever the Eagle outer belt and uh, inner belt setup. That was pretty. Cool. I think they built. I think they built those for their like. 2005 Pat Rogers class or something. Yeah, we were uh, we were out at the post, me, yeah, Jay, and Dodson, and they put those together. And then Rick Beach had one built for his M14. Yeah, <laughs> Jay nuts. <laughs> 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 yeah, that was uh, that was the, they were breaking in that training cherry, and they were doing a Ken class and I think a Pat class, almost like you know, kind of back to back stuff, and that was. Uh, that was a pretty cool assembly. I've, I've still got mine sitting around here in a box someplace. It was actually, you know, now that I play with it more, I'm like, man, you throw that thing under a button up, just get one size up larger in a button up shirt. You've got like two or three pistol mags, three carbine mags and a holster on there. It's like, that's kind of cool. That yeah, was a pretty good setup. All right, I've used the Wayback Machine Archive to find the original Malabar front store. I'm going to see if I can find it here. Holy shit, dude. <laughs> we're, we're deep in the, the bowels of the internet. I've spent some money over there. Yes. Mm. What is the meaning of the Malabar front? Mm. It's from it was a book reference. Yeah. yeah. Uh, there's a there's a quote there. I forget the quote, but it was something that kind of going along the lines with what the hell was the other book quote about floating garbage, flotsam and jetsam or some shit. What the hell was it? I can't remember now. I mean, there was all kinds of weird shit going way back when they were doing all kinds of weird stuff. What the hell was that? God, I'm trying to think. Who was that? Wow, hell. I don't remember now. It's been so long. <clears throat> I found the holster, but the page isn't archived, so I can't find the product description. I would tell you to call Michael, but he won't answer his phone, so it doesn't matter. This is true. 
Michael, pick up your phone, you stupid ginger. We're trying to figure out what this was and who was it. That's going to bug me now because I'm, I'm trying to remember who it was. I sent him a link to this about an hour ago, and I know that he saw it. I don't think yeah. he's joining us. It's, it's oh, no. Funny. He's living the Cleveland high life. Yeah. Ginger's sitting in some bar somewhere. Having his, what what the hell's that damn Hungarian meal that likes his pepper kosh or whatever? Pepper kosh? <laughs> it's good. Yes, it is. Was it from 1984? Mm-hmm. What was that question? <laughs> this is from Frank. I'm not exactly sure how to even... It's so specific and case by case, it would be difficult to navigate. Let's try it just because it's Frank and he's got great hair. <laughs> <laughs> What does the panel feel about telegraphing with a if Yeah. What does the panel feel about telegraphing with regard to drawing from an ankle holster? Oh like situational dependent. Like there's times um like I, I had taught and was showing guys in that uh, backup gun class that I did a few weeks back that there is times like under a table at dinner whatever case situations may be, it's a little bit mo more covertly to actually get that ankle gun out than it is to telegraph, depending on how you carry your primary gun. There's, it's actually less motion because that hand just has to slip down, pull up that garment. You can cock the leg up and literally get that gun right in your hand without telegraphing a cover garment rip or a sweep. Um, as well at, at times the way I drive, you know, that, that leg's kind of cocked up and that gun is sitting right there literally within reach if my hand just drops down. Uh, there's a lot of other shit with it, but you know, if things have gone bad and you're going to that gun because either your primary is out of ammo and has had a very catastrophic mechanical malfunction, all bets are off. There is no telegraphing, Frank. Grab that bitch, pull it out and get to work, dude. <laughs> Stop worrying about telegraphing something that nobody cares about because something has already gone bad if you're going to that. That's my take. <laughs> That's a good take. Yeah, I kind of like where Fisher went with that. I think it's pretty funny. Um, <laughs> if you ever get into a situation where uh, the opponent does not have a gun, you can uh, pull the ankle gun out and toss it across the table. And then when they catch it, you draw your primary and you fill them in. That, that's a, that, is, that is another technique. <laughs> the Greedo technique. <laughs> Hold on, dude. Here's his tomahawk. Hold on to this. <laughs> The Greedo Throwdown. Oh, that's it. The new hashtag, the Greedo Throwdown. That's awesome. <laughs> I, I'm, not, I'm not saying. I'm, I'm just saying. I'm just saying, but you're not saying, dog. You're just saying. <laughs> um, <laughs> you know, though, uh, honestly, there is merit to that ankle gun especially for some denied area shit when you just don't want people to know. And if there's times where a belly band or smart carry or other shit that won't work for you or off body won't work. Everybody sometimes for a lot of people forget about that ankle gun. They ain't checking out your shoes, dog going, Hey bro, those are cool Solomon's. Those are really nice. Is that an ankle gun? That shit ain't happening. Nobody's looking at that. Nobody. I know, I know back in the eighties, um, there's a dude in South America, I believe, working, and uh, he got stuffed in the back of a car, and they had his head pushed down, and they were driving away, and he had a wheel gun ankle rig. And so while he was doubled over in the back seat, he, he skinned it and fired it from close retention and off the dude in the back seat and then popped both guys in the front seat in the back of the head mm -hmm. and went to his Nikes. Um 
just do it defense. Any uh, any draw stroke you got to earn. Yeah, I'd agree. Unless you're just straight up killing. <laughs> According to our friend John. Mm -hmm. You know, the other thing is that the ankle holster works really great with. It's like when you have a suppressor on and you really want to have that little run of jet fire with your suppressor on, on your ankle. Uh, you didn't. <laughs> <laughs> dude, the Jews love smoking dudes with little Berettas, man. No. They love that shit. <laughs> Dude, it's easy when you shoot motherfuckers that throw rocks. <laughs> I'm just saying, that's not much of an awesome thing to be bragging about is when you shoot people that throw rocks and soccer balls. How hard is that shit? It's a good opportunity to use the phrase decisive overmatch. <laughs> Swing shot versus fucking Glock 43. <laughs> jet fire versus slingshot. <laughs> Next on Mythbusters. Kel Fisher. regrets that he had to take off, so he Aww. sent this. Fisher, I found it. It's uh, Hank Iverson. Oh, that goofy motherfucking South African yeah. bastard looks cute with balls in class. Yep. That was it. Hank Iverson. Damn. Last I knew, he was working out at NEK or some shit. Yeah, isn't he up in Idaho or something? Colorado, I think, or something. Maybe it is. I don't remember. Hank, he came into uh, the NPRC a couple years back, the National Patrol Rifle Competition up here in Michigan. He was a keynote speaker, got up in front of about 400 dudes, and his opening line was something along, along the lines of, like, you all fucking suck. None of you can shoot. <laughs> That went over so well. <laughs> uh, and then he also coined that reverse counter supination bullshit grip hold on a gun. Yeah, that was his big signature thing. Wow. Yeah, I forgot about that cat. <sighs> yeah. Brew. TIA. Yeah. All right, dudes. I gotta be up in four hours. I'm gonna jet out myself. You win. <laughs> Understandable. Yeah, I get to sleep in the truck, so. Must I'll, be nice crawling the back, laying the gurney. I'll, no, that shit's got aids on it. I'll I'll nap up front. <laughs> All right, bro. Stay safe, man. All right, see you guys. All right, Tom. Yeah, have a good Tom. Oh, life is grand. Mm mm mm. What else we got, Matt? Wix, you got to have something smart for us tonight. What do you got? Sir. Uh, I just got uh, fucking bullied into this thing, man. I didn't come oh, prepared. Stop it. Stop it. You, you didn't get bullied into shit. You did not. So are you just you sitting can... on your on, on the floor right now, just fucking grabbing shit off your uh, toy shelf back there? Fuck yeah, man cave, dude. I got shit everywhere. Yeah? What do you want me to grab? <laughs> Someone mentioned something about Nutella. There is a jar of that shit right there. Yeah. Never could not go anywhere without a jar of Nutella, man. That is life. Mm. So, f Fish, will will a cat lick that off your balls like a dog? or, or, or <laughs> That's what's <laughs> there. <laughs> I might have to try that. Hold on. Here, kitty. <laughs> Let me turn off your camera. Hold on. No, no, it's okay. We can leave that shit going. Don't worry about it. Yeah, this is just kind of part of the floor of the man cave. There's like 10 sets of armor laying over here, all kinds of weird shit. It's just a man cave. I found a good use for my kayak, though, that I haven't used in like a billion years. It holds targets really good. And kayaks are fun. Yeah. I that used to, I used to kayak out past the, past the surf on... Um, on the beach out there uh, north of Red Beach and then just fucking throw a bunch of beers in your kayak and you just drink beer and watch the fucking surfers hit their face on rocks and shit. It's great. 
<laughs> that that was like my very first one. It's an old dagger, like I don't know, twelve, fourteen footer. I've got a sit on top fishing model, you know, with like storage and shit that I just fill that thing full of ice when I get out there, jam it full of beers and a bottle of bourbon. Yeah, sit on sit on tops where it's at. You can lash more beer to the sit on top than you can Absolutely. stuff on, on the sit in. And a dry bag with a aug fits on there perfect. Yeah, no uh, no augs for me, but I did use make use of the dry bag for cigars. Oh yeah, absolutely. Cigars, brews on the kayak, just chilling, fucking hitting sea lions with your paddle to chew them away. It's great. <laughs> seagulls and comorants in Michigan, dude. That's what we got. Seagulls and comorants. Fucking seagulls, man. I hate seagulls. Dude, I like fucking flying rats. If there is anything that needs to come off the endangered species list is flying rats. Those things are made for suppressed 22 pistols on a kayak. Not that I've ever partaken in that with a red dot, but suppressed 22s with a red dot on a kayak are great for seagulls. So allegedly. I, allegedly. Absolutely. I heard something that might work a little better than that. I don't no. know if it's accurate or not, but uh, I think it was bits of like Alka-Seltzer. You throw yeah. it, oh, and then they eat it, and they kind of poof. Yeah. I've never tried it. I have shot Roman candles at them before, though. Aerial gunnery practice. It's kind of like some dude on the internet shooting bottle rockets back at himself. <laughs> <laughs> While moving to cover and shooting from retention. Uh, and not eating a fucking sandwich. Oh, Barrett. But he has the fastest draw from concealment in the world. <clears throat> yep. It, you know, I, I was always taught never draw against a gun. Fact. <laughs> you're better off jumping on that dude and beating his ass while you're following his draw. <laughs> yeah. That's truth. Yeah, when, when strange happenings go down at Circle K, I'm mm -hmm. going to I'm going to on surveillance footage look like the biggest pussy in the world as I cower and go back down the Cheetos fucking pulling my shit out on my timeline. And then I'm going to come back around that fucking aisle and it's yeah. going to be on like Donkey Kong. And they'll be like, what the fuck just happened there? Dude ran away. And then he came back. Fuck. Yeah, I did. Dude. Solve that shit smarter than faster, bro. Yeah, man. Absolutely. Back. Fucking cower, look like a bitch, give all the fucking body language and signals to this guy that you're fully compliant and just work, work the angles and work your problem and get that fucking gun out and then do fucking business. And then, pull your, then pull out your flashbang with dead bird tape on it, taking a page from Mick <laughs> and throw that shit in his car. <laughs> uh, I got nothing. I know. <laughs> Yeah, the, the the whole Circle K shooting is is absolutely contingent upon the getaway car, uh, whether or not I'm going to jail. Yeah, because I'm not sure I could run out in the front as the wheelman fucking skids off and not give him some fucking good news on the way out, which <laughs> which is slightly exceeded my my lethal force fucking authority. <laughs> Flashbacks, bro. <laughs> I'm telling you, dude. Like, like once it's on, it's on. You know, and uh, yeah. I so I just got to remember, like, don't don't leave the store. Yeah. Don't leave the store. Yeah, solve that shit on your own time, man. Don't 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 play the time management game with a dude that's already got the gun. It's already in hand. Do not do that shit. Solve it smarter than faster. To totally agree, man. Absolutely. There is nothing wrong with living to find that dude three weeks later and finishing him in his sleep. <laughs> is that what those panos come in? <laughs> What's that? Is that, that where, is that where Roland's panos come in? <laughs> What's that line from the town? <laughs> you can't ask. You can never talk about this. <laughs> That's right. Who, whose car we're taking? Whose car we're taking, man? We're going to hurt some people. Whose car are we taking? That's a came, truth. Another question came up. When you are flying for vacation or work, but not taking a bunch of guns, just a conceal or a, a carry gun, what's your method? A Pelican case, small lock case, and a suitcase, or what? Um, 
if you can't fly under credentials and do all that kind of cool shit, <clears throat> I take a either small Pelican case or one of those like little nano type safes, something that I can cable lock through my bag on the inside of it. So it's got a little bit extra retention, you know, some way to just to make them work harder to get it. <clears throat> Padlocks, whatever the case is. I have a smallish Pelican case that'll go inside my checked luggage that has a literally like one of those kryptonite cables wrapped through the uh, metal bars inside my luggage, my roller bag <clears throat> and a couple of big ass pad box on there. That's how it goes. If somebody wants to <laughs> take their time and get through that shit, then they've earned that shit. But for the most part, yeah, that's what I do with it. <clears throat> yeah. I have a small Pelican case as well. <clears throat> that has name and address mm-hmm. and paint marker on it. It's got double locks. Um, I also have a screen grab of the airline's policy yep. on carrying firearms because uh, I, I have a lot of soft luggage. So uh, you've got this hard case inside of a soft case, and I've had um, front counter ladies try to tell me, well, you can't transport a gun because it's not in a hard case. Like the, the suitcase itself is not hard. So I've had to bring up the screen grab of that airline's policy and say, well, this is the policy right here and mm-hmm. educate the airline lady right there at the fucking check-in counter. Mm-hmm. Um, but to, to be honest, uh, I, I don't fly pistols only a whole lot. I am, I've gotten to the point of jaded where I'm pretty much transporting an assault rifle wherever I go. Yeah. Uh, if, if, if it's at all feasible or possible. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, so I'm going to, I'm going to run with a long gun case at that point. My handguns and my, my, uh, carry ammo and all that shit is all going to go in, inside the long gun case. Yeah. Yeah. Hey. At that point, honestly, it's worth it, especially if you're going to be gone for X period of time. Uh, you know, I was traveling, but the last like two years or so at Magpul, even before that, we were kind of at that high point in that, you know, that era of things. And we were traveling literally three, four time zones a week. You know, we would go from here to there, home for a day, a couple of days, flip kit, just start going again. And I just literally left a hard case with all my shit in it. You know, two blasters, two carbines, mags, ammo, timer, all my little bullshit stuff that I could cram in that thing as much as I could and just rolled with it because it was there. The only thing I did was do laundry or grab a second bag full of clothes and pieces of kit that I needed. It, if you're going to do it, you might as well go full out. <laughs> Absolutely agree. You might as well take a rifle because you just never know. <laughs> fact mm-hmm. I, just don't, I just don't like getting in gunfights with handguns like handguns just kind of suck uh for gunfighting and you know i've done work with them but um it was by far not optimal so i just want to place myself in a situation where the next time i have to take human beings life i'm going to do it with a fucking rifle like because yeah. it's just easier and I don't want to have to worry about grabbing somebody else's shit, even though, you know, I, I've had enough guys come to town that I've hosted buddies, you know, that come into town. I mean, you know, our, our other boy, Johnny and shit and dudes that they'll fly in somewhere. I'll pick them up like, here, bro, you know, dump a gun in their lap. There's an M4 between the seats, whatever. Uh, you know, that's, that's great. Cause it's convenient, but there's gotta be a long gun at hand. It just has to be at all times. And, I don't want to have to rely on a host or somebody else's jankity ass shit when I get there that's not zeroed and I'm trying to do a field expedient zero real quick if something does happen with a gun, you know, God forbid, maybe hopefully. And, you know, trying to figure that shit out on the fly. I want to know my shit, my dope, my zero, my guns, my kit, and it's with me. A follow-up to that, which I've done, is it worth just using a larger Pelican to put in guns and your clothes? 
Um, I've done that going to Darcy. Yeah, I've done that well. with my small Pelicans. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. You know, as long as you keep underneath the weight restrictions, yep. you can save in baggage fees, and anything that's worth bringing a handgun is probably worth bringing a rifle with you. Yeah. I'm I'm a big fan of that. I've got, you know, like all of us here, we've probably got half a dozen plus pelicans in various sizes for rifles laying up on the shelf somewhere. We've got another half a dozen, dozen of them for pistols and our nods and all our other shit. Um, I like one of the longer pelicans, the, what is it, the 17, 60, 25, 50, 80, 27 hike model. And I will always throw an extra base layer or another Adam jacket or another alpha in there or something else, you know, and I will just pack in some extra foul weather gear inside that thing. Even, you know, my IFAX, all my extra bullshit will all go in that case. I will jam that thing full till I have to stand on it and shut it. Absolutely. Get the bigger case. It's always better to have more room than not enough, especially in that case for travel with that. If you're going to pay that $25, $50, $60 fee, whoever you fly with, you might as well take everything you can. Absolutely go bigger. Hey, Roland, considering we are, we are live right now, would you be able to tell your story about how uh, you told a story, I think, when we turned off the cameras? No, he uh, can't. As, okay. his, as his legal counsel, no. Oh, man, because that was a good one. No. Damn it. Whatever it is, if you have to ask, no, he can't tell it. Oh, man. <laughs> it was in another country and a pistol was involved. And it was no. very deliberate. That was Dave Harrington. That was a goat. No. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, I've used a pistol a couple of times, and one, one some of them have been more deliberate than others. Um, <laughs> yeah. It was just a good story. Well, I mean, everybody's got a good story, bro. You know? No, I, I don't. We we've been in we've been in GWAT for fifteen years. Everybody's got a good story. Um, yeah. Whatever. Just you know, do work. All right. So maybe I got something. Thought of something. Um, no, we're not playing spin the bottle. <laughs> no, I know your mom. I'm not going to go wake your mom up again. I, I told know. you it's whatever, whatever happens between you and mom. That's, that's you guys' business. Just send her home with a nice, uh, nice gun. It'll dude, all be all right. Dude, I'm about to Viagra her ass all over this house. <laughs> <laughs> and, I mean, you know, mom's got to have fun too. Um, no. So, uh, so I may, may uh, have solved my problem of finding a pistol range that will let me do whatever I want. Um, so with that in mind, if, if you guys are going to go uh, try, to, try to develop some pistol skills, maybe they've atrophied a little bit because you've been in a bullshit state for a while, um, what, kind of, what kind of drills, what kind of stuff are you guys going to work on if you've got uh, limited, limited time uh, and therefore probably limited ammo to, to work with. What are you going to do that's the most bang for your buck to, to keep yourself relevant? I would say nothing that's easy and nothing that I enjoy. Oh, yeah. There, there's definitely a lot of that. I think for me, if I'm doing like a limited round count, because just truthfully, I'm at like a maintenance level right now. I'm, I'm realistically not going to probably exceed – where I'm at, except for those days when the stars and moon and suns and the tide and the earth's Coriolis effect and shit all align perfectly. Um, I usually start out every rain session, 10 rounds, slow fire on B eights, every rain session, every day cold. That's, that's what I do. Uh, then I make your metric, the, whatever you're, whatever you're putting out on the B eight. Yeah. Yeah, a absolutely. It's well, I mean, that's, that's your performance on demand. So, you know, and because you have to focus on the fundamentals so hard to be good at that drill that Steve's talking about, uh, it kind of wires your brain for that day's rain section. So yeah. in 10 bullets, you are unfucking your 
your brain farts, you're knocking the cobwebs off, whatever, whatever, you know, analogy you want to use, you're sorting that out in 10 fucking bullets. And when you're done with that, then, then you can get on with business. Yeah. Um, I will generally work that 10 round B8 hit cold out of the gate. First one of the day that will set the pace and the tone for the whole day. <laughs> if it becomes an absolute soup sandwich, I pack my shit and I go home. I'm done. I'm not wasting any more ammo. Um, from there, I have one that I like to do that is like one of those three yard, three feet ish, whatever you choose to do, like bullet hole size targets that I will literally just sit there and concentrate on, work some dry fire drills with, you, you know, just, just some basic refresher stuff, just, just really working hard on a super sharp front sight focus and an absolute awesome trigger press dry. And then I'll try that for just a repeat follow through follow up shot drill. That's just one of them. But realistically, if I had X number of rounds to do it with, it's 10 round hit on B eights at 25. And then I may, I will normally work my off hand work, including the draw, because to me, that's kind of important still, because I vary from appendix to strong side to whatever carry, you know, however you bump your rig. So I will work a lot of offhand draws for 10 rounds, uh, you know, single minute, you know, single presentations, single rounds fired with the offhand. I will do that because my offhand shooting sucks because I hate it and I do not spend nearly enough time doing it. And that shit's important, especially if I'm holding on to a white light or doing something else along that line. So I really need to refresh that in my brain every so often. So, I'll do, you know, good 10 round hit with that as well at some intermediate distance, say 10 to 15 yards. I, I won't do it at 25 uh, just because if it's at 25 yards and I'm down to that worst case scenario of only that hand, I am going to execute Nike, get the fuck out and figure something else out to do, like get a Slurpee. And then, you know, I'll, I'll just vary it up. You know, I'll work some close speed drills, you know, five, seven yard stuff where I'm really running the gun hard, uh, you know, five round strings. And I'll usually do that on a B8 and just try in those strings of five to get the fastest, smoothest presentation, lock into the sights and just burn five rounds through that X as fast as possible or in that area. I mean, there's a million drills online and a million exercises. Uh, you know, Hackathorn's got a ton of them. Vickers has got a ton of them. Everybody's got something. You know, DeFore standards. You know, it's a 50-round qualifier. I mean, whatever you can think of, it's been done. There is nothing new in this world of shooting drills and exercises for limited rounds. Find them, print them off, pull one out of the stack one day, go do that shit. That's kind of my take after I do my B8 hit. Yeah, I, I think a lot of the drills are uh, diagnostics to see where you're at. You know what I mean? So uh, each one of these guys has their own kind of thing to kind of that that measures speed, gun handling. You know, you've got the the ten eight drill. You know, you've got all these things that that t that are are this uh, ragged line between accuracy and and speed. Um, what you're talking about is, you know, hey, I haven't shot in a while. I, I kind of suck. Okay. Well, how do I get better? So you're going to need reps and you're going to need a lot of reps to, to get your shit back. So if, uh, if I showed up at a lunch hour to a, a range after I did my bullseye shooting, I would probably start from the ready position and do some press outs and some one shot, uh, you know, one shot from the ready, extending the gun, working on spearing the target, not fishing, um, you know, not swooping, uh, keeping that, that gun line uh, parallel to the ground, moving the sights up online with the eyeball, the, the visual transition from the target to the front sight post, you know, all those things. I would do, you know, however many. Uh, reps of that. And then once you're consistently, you know, hitting in the target area, whether you're using the black of a B8 or the A zone of a fucking IPSC, whatever, um, then I would take it to the next level, which is holster the gun and then repeat those drills. I would come out of the holster, move to the ready position. Now I'm adding uh, gun handling into it and then pressing out again and, and continue to do that. Um, so 
and, you know, after you're consistently able to draw the gun efficiently, get it to the ready position and then press it out like you were doing in your very first drill, now you can incorporate um, recoil mitigation. So now you start going to pairs. Now that support hand becomes more important because um, now you're bang, bang, you got to fire again. Now you have to follow through. Now you've got to track your sights. You've got to bring the sights back on a target or whatever. So it's just, a, it's a, it's a progressive training model where you're, you're spoon feeding yourself a little bit at a time. You're starting at the ready. You're, and then you add the complexity of the holster. Then you add the complexity of recoil mitigation. Um, and then you just continue to do that. So now um, you, you're able to shoot pairs at a single target, and that's cool. Now we can work on eyesight and scanning and looking for other threats. So you're able to draw the gun, you're able to press out the gun, you're able to shoot the gun, you're able to track the sights, you're able to shoot a second round. And then there's another threat. So now you've got to get your eyes out in front of the gun. You've got to look at the other threat, identify it as a threat, and then drive the gun. Now do a visual sight shift from the target that you've identified as a threat back to your front sight post. And you've got to fire two more rounds at that target. And that's kind of, that's kind of where I would culminate. Um, yeah. You know, for an, for an average range session when I'm trying to, quote, quote, reteach myself how to shoot a fucking gun, um, if you can get to the point where – you can safely draw the gun, press out the gun, shoot pairs, and then drive the gun to another target and shoot other pairs. You're now at the 90% of where you need to be. And you yeah. can just, you know, now you can do the things that Steve's talking about as far as uh, weak hand shooting, um, malfunction manipulations, fucking one hand fucking reloads, uh, strong hand only, weak hand only. You know, that's the varsity level of fucking gun handling and gun fighting. But, but you know, as a dude – just getting back into the mix, um, come up with a training progression that gets you to being able to fucking pop out pairs or strings. You know, uh, we, we all say pairs, but we know what that really means. You know, two, three, four. If you can do it twice, you can do it three times. You can do it four times. You can do it five times. Um, to, to be able to rapidly shoot the gun, bang, 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 and not have the fucking sights track off somewhere, uh, keeping the, the, the rounds in the scorable area that you want, and then driving the gun over. So the barometer of how fast you go during this training progression should be your accuracy. I'm a very, very big accuracy-focused fucking dude. So I like about a 90% accuracy scale. Dudes that are gamers will accept much less than that to be able to go faster, right? So... Um, you know, uh, the gamers, gamers run the factored score and they're like, fuck dude, I'll take some C zones. It's all good. Um, for me, my barometer of speed is about a 90%. So if I've decided that the A zone is going to be the dealio, if I'm nine out of 10 bullets are going in the A and only one out of 10 bullets is going in the C, I'm good. If they're all going in the A, I'm too fucking slow and I need to pick it up. And I need to pick it up as fast as I can until the wheels fall off. And so once I've busted that 90% fucking accuracy, um, now, now I know i got to throttle it back. That's the threshold of my capability based on my atrophy of fucking shooting skill. So, you know, I can remember when I could shoot faster than that, but I can't shoot that fast anymore and still be accurate. So the, so the speed is what has to suffer based upon the muscle atrophy of not fucking training. You've got to get you've got to get back to that spot where you were at. So as long as you're keeping whatever your standard is, seventy percent, eighty percent, you know, I run a ninety percent accuracy standard. So um, for myself, so you know, if you say seven out of ten bullets got to stay in the A, bro, if you're ten out of ten bullets in the A, pick it the fuck up, man. You got yeah. the rest of your you got the rest of your life to get them fucking bullets out of the gun. You know what I mean? Go faster, and then. When you do that, it turns into a shit show and you run a string and you're like, fuck, five out of 10 are out of the A. Whoa, all right, that, that's, that's where I'm at. That's my threshold. Whatever I just did, however fast I just did that, that's too fast. I need to fucking throttle it back and find out where that ragged edge is. And it doesn't take a whole lot of rounds to do this, guy. I mean, it, it doesn't. You, can, you will be, you, you'll be all right just slowly progressing and adding a little bit of weight to your rucksack with each drill, as opposed to just dropping a 45 pound plate in your fucking Alice and telling you to move out sharply. Yeah. What I generally do once, uh, once the wheels fall off 
anytime I've started to go fast and do shit, and it, once that train wreck occurs, I ratchet it back and I go right back to a 10 round B8 slow fire hit. Once the wheels come off, I'm like, all right, that's where I'm at. I've gone fast. Woohoo. I've done that cool shit. I fucked up my fundamentals by slapping the shit on the trigger, giving up the grip on the gun, losing this, losing that absolute sight picture, not just a good enough, slightly refined picture. I ratchet it back and I go right back to a B8 25 yard hit just to re trigger my brain and to reset myself into tracking that site, pressing the trigger, cleaning the rear, making sure my grip is good. Everything is absolutely right. But yeah, a hundred percent of what Roland's saying, absolutely. Uh, a drill I use, and I've used a lot. No, you haven't. Yeah. Stop it, Chad. You don't well, shoot guns. Myself and yeah, um, it's a rhythm drill. It's one of those close range drills that uh, that, that Steve was talking about. And uh, so you're three yards out, so you can you you can instantly score your target. Mm-hmm. So it takes discipline to and not watch your impacts because you end up chasing impacts. But you build your shooting position, um, stance, grip, sights, trigger, um, and you talk yourself through every shot, through follow through, and you own every shot. And I, the ideal is that you can own a shot. You don't have to see the impact. You feel the bad shot break, and you start off slow on one. Oh, I do it on squares, like one inch squares. Yeah. And uh, I just start stacking shots. And if I'm stacking shots, I pick up the speed on the next square. And I only do like five to seven shot strings. Um, and I'll and I don't end up covering up the whole back or with squares because I'll just keep shooting it, shooting it, shooting it. And one, one inch pacers or one inch pacers. Yeah. Um, I, I'll start off. Um, at the high ready, I'll just press straight out, and I'll even start out dry and see if I, how quickly I can uh, register that front sight. Um, and I'll, I'll just build it from the ground up, um, work my way to the holster. Now I incorporate the holster. Concealment, you can work your concealment in. I did that with lots of agents that would come in and want to just start ripping off shots at 25 to see where they're at, and I'm like, why do that? You know you're going to be disappointed. Let's just foundational training here. Let's just start with a no. And do that, build that rhythm and uh, reaffirm the right trigger press and the right sight picture every time. And it's a low round count drill. You can actually do that dry fire. Um, but yeah, uh, rolling dry. I can't say anything else past that. But yeah. So one thing that I'll do, Chad, uh, kind of similar drill, I'll put them up in like a diamond kind of shape, or I'll use those diamond printout targets. And what I have found at like three yards with my sights, it really helps me read as I'm adjusting on the draw with the presentation of tracking the sights with those diamonds, basically those one inch squares turned on tips that each point lines up with my irons and that top tip, like my front sight, the top of that blade sits right there in that notch. And it helps me read those four 90 degree right angles on those sites. And it keeps me absolutely honest. If I'm giving up the offhand strong hand, I'm dropping an elbow, anything that's going to cause me to cant that pistol at that distance will register immediately. <clears throat> and then, you know, that, that measurement translates to a degree up to 25 yards for me so i know anytime that i'm putting any cant in that gun i'm giving something up that gun's going to track funky i'm not going to be able to get in those sights at all you know for a, for a second good follow through shot especially at distance that one works well for me too so i mean there's a whole shitload of stuff you can do out there i mean like we like we've discussed but you know i think roland's got it absolutely chad you know has got it with that follow through drill i do i do that one inch grid drill quite a lot with pasters i'll stick them up on a dude's target said here you go bro and the minute you come out of that thing, you get a new pacer and you're back at it again until you get it right every time. You know, there'll be a whole series of pacers on that target. Absolutely. Um, another thing I do in between times, if I'm not dry firing. You're drinking. Um, yeah, I'm drinking. Um, back, no, I'm just, when I'm standing <laughs> around or whatever, I'm constantly referring, uh, reaffirming uh, the biomechanical, whatever, big Haley words. Uh, in indices uh, exactly. between my hands, um, so my hands never forget uh, 
where they interact each other on the gun. Um, like uh, support trigger finger between the knuckle for me, uh, where my strong side thumb falls on the me portion back side of my support thumb. I'm just standing around talking, and you know I'm always reaffirming that. So whenever I smack, I'm I'm always feeling for that right grip. So if I know my grip's off, I know it from here before I get to my sights and I see my sights dance or see my dot running around. It's just game of the game, really. But yeah. And I'm thinking about shooting at people, but whatever. I need more water. Be right back. Are you rolling? <laughs> yes. Are you able to see the screen? Like which one? Your screen? No, the screen that's just on there right now. Oh, yeah. Just going back to a previous conversation. Mm. Nice. All right. Well, there you go. Yeah. I have another question for you guys. Are you ready? Hey, Bill. Hey. How was the movie? Hey, Bill. Awesome. Yes, it Avengers is. Avengers saved the day. Ultron was no match for him. That's right. Bill, okay, here's the question. Bill, put your hat back on. I'm getting a huge glare, bro. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, fucking Fisher and his good hair. Adam Adam's got the fucking hair dog, and so does uh, Wix. Wix puts yeah. him that he'll be a seal. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So, uh, yep, yep, yep. Absolutely. Uh, so hey, Bill. Before we switch gears, um, again, Wix just asked. He he has uh, mir- miraculously. Uh, gotten himself access to an indoor 50 meter um, range at lunchtime um, adjacent to where he works, but he doesn't have very much time because it's on his lunch hour to be able to shoot. Ammo's not as much of a factor, but he's going to have time issues. So um, in a compressed time environment, if you are uh, not you, Bill, if you are uh, your average fucking patrol guy and you suck at pistol, um, <laughs> how do you fix yourself given 45-minute range sessions, let's say? Like, what are your drills? What are you – what is your progression – um, as, as a trainer trying to mentor uh, a cop that would show up to your indoor range for 45 minutes a day, what can they do to make themselves better? So I, the, I think the biggest thing is I'd like to get them for a little bit longer time period um, to start out with. And then I'm just collecting data. So I would have them start with uh, giving me um, what my dry fire routine is based on live fire. So give me uh, 10 uh, uh, single shots from the holster with a hit given uh, um, given distance and accuracy standard. So I'm using eight inch circles, pretty common deal uh, in the industry and seven yards for that. And I just uh, shot time with the guy and we record uh, those times out. Um, I would have, depending on what his manipulations looked like, uh, potentially do the same thing with raw speed reload. I'd have him do a uh, draw fire one, speed reload fire two. Uh, I always try to do two or more uh, post reload because my grip gets, uh, gets fucked up. Um, same thing, we're shooting that for 10, shooting that for 10, recording a bunch of times, uh, getting averages, and then um, obviously some uh, some precision-based work. So I do a walk-back drill uh, with one inch, two inch, throw it all the way up to six inch circles, uh, do B8 uh, bulls, um, see how that shit pans out, and then you look at all that data and see where he is weakest or what is most relevant to his job if everything fucking sucks, and then I would have him focus on what is relevant to the job. So for average patrol guys, um, as much as uh, I would like to have everybody be uh, shooting six inch circles uh, or six inch groups at 50, uh, the reality of the, of the cop shooting is seven yards and in based on statistical data. So I would want them to become very proficient at those seven yard and in tasks first, and then we can work on um, the long range shit or more precision based shit. So uh, for me, it's just gathering a bunch of shit up, uh, maintaining a notebook, a log book of what you're doing. And, and I equate this a lot to guys, uh, the same shit that they do in the fucking gym, right? I mean, nobody goes in the gym and just stacks up the bench with four and fucking 15 pounds and tries to bench you. You got to know where your base is, your 80%, and then you start doing fucking workouts to get you to 415. It's the same shit with the pistol. So hopefully that made fucking sense. 
not no it absolutely does and we actually made fun of meckley because he forgot his uh book the other day i don't think it was the day that you were on and he had uh he he's on video and he's got shit written all over the back of his hands and then uh prime is like hey man uh what is all over your shit? And and he's like, yeah, I didn't bring my log book to the gym. So I just logged it on the back of my hand. So he's got fucking marker <laughs> all over his shit of what is, what his get swole is for that day, you know? And uh, so I, I brought that up later on that, you know, Hey, you, you got to do the same thing with gun. You yeah. got to know where you were at so that when you atrophy, you know what you were able to do and you can get back to that. Uh, you know, with some type of training methodology. Yeah, fuck yeah, without question, man. It's, uh, I'm trying to uh, you know, see if I can find a sheet here and pop it up. But uh, so I had, I can't, I used to do a bunch of uh, spreadsheets. Um, and one of the things I do in my TAC pistol class is uh, I give the guys a, a sample of, of a bunch of those sheets. And during the two day course, um, they're filling it out as we go. So a chunk of this is getting them, uh, you know, teaching them how to use a shot timer, uh, and then hopefully instill in that process. But it's just a, it's into it's skill based shit, and there's a bunch of drills that I track and maintain, um, and then they fill it out. And I used to actually keep a, a fucking notebook, but now I just fill out the sheet and then I take a picture it on the phone. So my phone is uh, is is my logbook. Yeah, I see Steve Fish holding something up. It's probably similar to what I'm doing. Yeah, dude. Hey, like Jim. Right in the rain notebooks. Free everywhere. Get them. Use them. Yeah. Hey, gents, I'm signing off. You guys be safe. See you. Yep. Yeah, have a good one, buddy. All righty, thanks. So, what we're moving on is a different question or some shit. So, so Wix, I mean, you know, obviously that that 50 meter range didn't exist when I was there. Uh, it was constructed. We were using uh, modular 25 meter trailers. Um, you know, when I was in that that place, um, because they have a dedicated range master, I'm going to go ahead and assume that they're going to have pro timers and shit available for you. If you get there and they don't, um, you can download apps. Surefire's got a, a, a shot timer app that yeah, you can put on your phone or whatever. They're not very, I mean, you're constrained to the loudness of your phone speaker to be able to hear it. But as long as you've got some type of active hearing protection where you can hear that over the drone of the indoor um, exhaust fans pulling all the shit out of the air, um, it, it'll, it'll give you what you need. Um, you can turn your phone into a shot timer to assist you in, in that barometer of how good your accuracy is and, and when you need to be picking it up. Yes, yeah, so I've got a shot timer. Um, I've got most of the support gear. I think the only question that I'm really going to have, and I'll I'll find out before I go down there, is just uh, what kind of what do they have for like targetry, really? Uh, what do I need to bring? That that kind of stuff. So I'm gonna I'm gonna get with that guy and uh, and and find out, you know, what what the deal is down there. But uh, appreciate the hookup. I yeah, I think you'll be happy with. I think you'll be happy with everything that that that's down there. Um, I'm sure they've got the full spectrum of targetry available for you. Um, and you know, like I said, regardless of platform that you're using, you'll probably be able to get ammunition if it's in the DOD variety. Um, oh, no shit. Okay. Hmm. Pro pro probably. Um, to talk to Tommy, but yeah, yeah it should be. Yeah, I wasn't counting on it, but uh, that'll be that'll be a bonus. No, yeah, man, I I think I think they can make it rain uh, rain one fifteen nine mil for you if that's what you that's what you need. So, yeah, I'm not complaining. And I, I've I've printed a lot of my own fucking targets, uh, Wix. And, you know, I mean, just pieces of paper, and I mean, obviously, I'm trying to shoot small, so it certainly fits on a fucking piece of paper and make your own goddamn target and, and work pretty easy. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, nothing says you can't grab a stack of, you know, printer paper and fold that shit in half. Yeah. Absolutely. If you fold that shit in half, you're basically replicating an internal USPSA target. Yeah, there's a lot you can do with that. So, just uh, just printed one out. I don't know if you guys can, can see this fucking shit. Um, no. it's, just a, it's just a bunch of fucking... Uh, yeah, industry fucking specific drills. Is that shit showing up backwards to you guys? Is I'm backwards on my fucking string. Oh yeah, dude, it is so backward. Turn it around. No, no, it's good. It's, it's fine. fine. It's just fucking shit uh, to fuck around with, right? It's individual skill set shit or individual skills with the pistol and then drills. Um, 
but I, I just maintain a bunch of different shit and I try to, you know, some of it's just maintenance, some of it's I'm looking to improve, some of it's, you know, am I slipping as I get older and my fucking hands hurt, whatever the fuck it is. Yeah. You know, another one that I like to do is the same drills with gloves on. What the fuck are you wearing, Fisher? Is that some kind of Flintstones vest, man? What is that shit? Flintstones get a Holy fuck! <laughs> hey, nice of you to show up late to the party. So <laughs> Suck your red tape back in, dude. <laughs> oh, shit! Oh my god! Even yeah. Rowan, what are your thoughts on doing a uh, like a monthly seven hundred aggregate? Yeah. Nothing, Steve Rowland, either of you? Yeah, shoot some shit that gives you a measurable, markable, graded standard. Have a baseline for every range session that you can note, jot down, see where you've improved, see where you've fallen back, what you need to work on. doesn't matter if it's a 700, 300, 500, 10-round B8, 10-round test drill, whatever it is. Anything that gives you some kind of graded, measurable improvement, let you know when you're slipping, have it. Yeah, seven hundo is uh, seven hundo is good. Um, it's a fucking man maker, man. Like, <laughs> it's the real deal. Uh, and the average shooter is not just not not really up to the task of being able to do a seven seven hundred to you know to standard. Yeah. Um, and so you know, at some point, you you gotta you gotta throw yourself a bone. Um, you don't want to continue to pull up these, you know, barometric uh, tests of your skill and then be found wanting over and over and over again. You got to start. You got to start small and, and kind of move up into it. And um, I'm not sure that you know, 25 yard strong hand rapid fire is, is where the average uh, shooter. I mean, fish. Give me. Correct me if I'm wrong, because I'm not fucking training these fucking monkeys. You are. Um, <laughs> yeah. You know, you, that should you, go far. Yeah. So um, I think the seven hundo is for for an advanced skill shooter. That is a, a yet another test to have in your in your kit bag. But uh, yeah, I think for ninety percent of the shooters out there, it's it's yeah. it's too much. That is some demoralizing, soul crushing shit. You, you want dudes to just cave in and like fall apart in a class? Hit them with a seven hundred aggregate right out of the gate. Watch him just want to put the pistol in your mouth and suck start that bitch. <laughs> yeah, man, it's, but it's not it's, it's not horrible at ten yards, right? It's not. So it's a point taken. Shoot at fucking ten, and then when you f start to clean it up, then go to fifteen, and go to then twenty, then a million fucking yards. You know what I mean? It's I, I equate a lot of this to to working out in, in PT, man. If I was going to go, uh, you know, run with Wicks, I, I wouldn't try to keep up with him. The guy's a fucking rabbit. I know I can't run that fast. So I'd have to structure workouts to get me to a point where I could beat him in a in a fucking in a, in a long distance race. If I was going to go to lift heavy shit with Fisher, it would be dumb for me to sit down you know on a squat rack when he's got it loaded up with shit and knowing it's going to fucking crush me. I got to come up with a plan to get up to his weight on this fucking squat. And it's no different with fucking pistol or rifle. Shoot the shit at fucking five yards, man, until you can shoot it clean. Then move back to ten, on and on and on. That but that's where the work comes in. And that's where I see a lot of guys not willing to put in the, the, the time, basically, to get to that point more than anything. It's, you know, fuck, man. Yeah. Get, pick a realistic goal, hit it, and then move on to the next, just like anything else. Everybody wants a shortcut. <laughs> it's not there. You got to earn that shit. Absolutely. That's time. <laughs> that's a lot of time and a lot of rounds downrange. Yep. It's all about them fucking reps. Dry, dry or live, um, you're, you're paying the man one way or the other. Fucking no free lunch. Mm. Not even if you're on welfare. <clears throat> that is no bullshit. <clears throat> yeah, but, but I think Bill brings up some good points. He, he's absolutely right on that. You, you know, if, if you can't do it at 25, you know what? Set a goal. Do it at 10. Clean that shit at 10. Clean it consistently at 10. 15 or 20. You know, double the distance. If it doesn't work out so well at 20, cut that shit in half, do it at 15. Nothing wrong with that. Mm. 
Next question. Yes, I'm why do you look like a video? That's pretty much what I heard. That's awesome. I said, you know, when you put your head down to the mic and you kind of get that shadowing thing, you remind me of a bad Roy Orbison video. Is there a good one? No, that's the point. Okay. Gotcha, gotcha. Before we get into that, I found a nice little review here discussing Gods of Egypt, the new movie. Watching Gods of Egypt is like willingly heating up a giant pot of pot filled with diarrhea until it's hot as liquid magma. Then slowly dripping that stinky, scorching fecal juice into your eye sockets one drop at a time for two hours straight. So I guess we should go see that movie. Yeah, Holy absolutely. Shit, that was oddly specific. Yeah, he's done it. That's why. Mm -hmm. So absolutely historically accurate is what I got out of that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Okay, and the question. Do it. Is there, is there still a realistic role for an A2 type rifle with longer barrels and 5.56 for engagements out to 500 meters? Or would this yeah. be better yeah. solved by a bigger caliber, by like 7.62, that can cover wider distance, say from seven or five to 700 yards? Yes, EMP blast. <laughs> so I don't know. The, I mean, so... Obviously, probably don't have as much time on that as uh, some of the other guys, but really the only thing that you're getting with a 20-inch barrel versus like a 14 and a half is you're going to be able to cheat the wind a little bit better, uh, and then you're also, uh, you've got a little bit more velocity. Not not like, you know, a fucking anything too game-changing, but uh, no, I've, I've shot 14 and a half inch uh, barreled rifles out to 500, Fucking, you can do that shit all day. That's that's not a big deal. Um, the the really the only significant difference I think to me is uh, you just you you can cheat the wind a little bit better. Sight radius, bro. Sight radius. Sight radius. Okay, yeah, maybe. I'm I was assuming optics. So. You're, you know, dude, do that shit. Out, yeah, dude, dude, do that shit out of Camp Perry all day long. You know, I mean, granted, the guns are a little bit different, but. What is the terminal performance? You know, are we talking just punching holes in paper, bullseye shooting stuff, marksmanship fundamentals, all that good stuff? Or are we talking like literal terminal performance? You know, what are we getting out of that gun, that load? Yeah, I don't know. Those Camp Perry guys are shooting like 80 and 100 grain bombs, single loading them at the top. Yeah. So, like, no um, <laughs> yeah, so SS 109. Fucking M855, uh, aka Green Tip. You know, it has to. It relies on. Um, it relies on velocity in order to do what the bullet is advertised to do. We we kind of all know this. You know, like it has to tumble, go in, uh, ass first at some point, and then start to fragment out with divergent wound channels. That happens above 2,500 feet per second. Um, when you shoot a 14 and a half inch gun, you're in like the 28 ish range. Whereas if you're shooting a 20 inch gun, you're in the 3200 ish range out of the muzzle. So that round is slowing down as it's going down range. Uh, but my counterpoint to that is at 500 meters, do I need immediate 100% incapacitation like I need in a room? Uh, or is ice picking a dude at 500 okay? Can I fucking send a straight round, no tumble, fucking cantilever not going around backwards? Can I ice pick a guy through his right lung that is shooting an RPG or a belt-fed machine gun at me and make him not shoot a RPG or a bell-fed machine gun at me because he has an ice pick through the lung. Uh, and I think the, the answer to that is probably, yeah, Raj, at 500, um, that non-immediately incapacitating fucking wound channel is acceptable for me. Uh, 
And then th- that doesn't even take into account that we've moved into a whole nother range of cartridges and cartridge types that don't require the same velocities in order to achieve their terminal performance, whether that be TSX or TAP or whatever. So now um, we're getting bullets that are performing at slower velocities I- anyway. Um, so yeah, I gotta go with uh, I gotta go with Wick's answer that uh, the only thing you're getting out of a longer barrel is uh, potentially um, le- less movement on, on the wind call um, because with with rifling and and optics, you know I I, I shoot shit at 500 with a 10.3 inch gun, um, so I I don't need it and I certainly going back to the original poster standpoint, I certainly don't want to go to a heavier bullet. I've been down the battle rifle road game and carrying a 762 battle rifle or something like it uh, to, to squeeze an additional 100, 200, 300, whatever, it, it's, it's bullshit. Like weight matters. And, um, you know, when you cut your basic load in half by going to a battle rifle caliber, um, that, that, that matters. And I just, I, there's no place for me um, for 7.62, not semi-automatic sniper system, like battle rifle. Nope, negative nine. Um, you're not trained on it. You're not a trained sniper at that point. You're not going to squeeze the extra benefit of that cartridge out. Uh, to you're just you're you're fucking around. Like, stay away from it. Just stick with five five six and carry more bullets. Can't argue with that logic. Okay, Steve. Since you're Uh-oh. in the man cave, since you're surrounded by ammo, what's a good ratio of duty defensive or or just training ammo to be keep stocked? Oh boy, depends on your training cycle, tempo. Uh, you know, military, law enforcement average Joe good guy who's just on a maintenance level. Um, I like to have on hand a minimum of at least 5,000 rounds a month of training ammo. That's How actually, that from, wow. I, I literally, I literally put myself on for a thousand rounds a week, if at all possible, if I can. And that's working a lot of various assortments of stuff. Uh, you know, if there's classes involved in there, obviously that gets kicked up a little bit. You know, you have to account for some time just to in that ammo in that ammo capacity that that allotment to have some fun, to go out and just shoot the fucking gun and have a good time with it. You know, nothing unsafe, nothing stupid. But you know what, dude? Bowling pins, bro. Something silly, some steel. Just have a good time with it. So to break up that monotony of just going, fuck, I'm back here again doing leg day again. You know what I mean? If that makes sense. Uh, It's a little different for me and some of the other guys here because we are constantly on a training cycle or a teaching cycle. So we as quote unquote professional trainers, instructors, whatever the case is here, you want to call it. We are expected to perform at a certain level. We are human, though. We will make mistakes. We will make those errors. We will shank around. That is fact. We are fucking human beings. I've seen the best shooters in the world do it. We've all seen those guys. And we don't hide it. We explain it. We use it as a teaching point. But I have to be myself, at least speaking for me, at a specific maintenance level to maintain that skill set. Any chance I have downtime to get to the range, and even if it's 300 rounds, 400 rounds, whatever that ever that case is for that day, um, you have to have it. For me, I like to go a lot, at least 1,000 rounds per week. So four to five K a month, let's just call it. So truthfully, if, if the means are there, the money is there, you're looking at 50,000 rounds, you know, let's just call it in a year. That That's a lot. When we were on the high side cycle, when I was at Magpul, when we were teaching a lot, shooting a lot, it was not uncommon for us to shoot a every demo in the class, every drill, which meant we were shooting 
in a three day package, we would shoot, let's just call it as instructor for myself. I would shoot maybe a thousand rounds in that class. Others would shoot a lot more cause they'd be on the line with the students doing, doing the whole, you know, shock and awe kind of hanging out there and, and shooting every drill with the students while some of us are running up and down the line with 30 cats teaching shit. Um, and then there is my own personal time in that downtime where I have got to go to the range cause I have to be better than everybody else or anyone that I may face on the street or wherever that case is for your particular job. I want to know that when I look in that mirror, I am literally as good or better than that dude I am facing. And to me, that's ammo and that's dry reps. <clears throat> yeah, I'm, I'm lucky. You know, I, I have an ammo sponsor for handgun ammo. I have one with my carbine sponsor. Uh, you look right now, there is five shelves in this basement full of nothing but fucking ammo. I, I have that much ammo around those five tier shelves and they are full to the gills, double stacked. Um, that shit is locked up behind a gate. So don't even worry about it or think about it, motherfuckers. Cause I got a shotgun. I'm not going to lie. Fuck you rolling in your fucking not liking shotguns. <laughs> Dude, you were reading my mind just now. I was like, fuck, I wonder where fish lives, man. <laughs> I know who you were, motherfucker. I, I literally have security gates from this old party store that got like burned down or like looted and shit. I stole them motherfuckers legit. <laughs> that, that, that bitch is locked up. <laughs> no doubt. Oh, look at me. I've got 10,000 rounds of 5.56 five, and protect my house with a gauge. Whatever. <laughs> Did anybody else notice how bad his math skills are? Oh, no. There, there's a lot of ammo. But but seriously, though, I will look at four to 5,000 a month. And that can change. That can be divided up between hanging and carving. It could be 2,000 of each. It's what you can afford. If all you can afford is a bunch of, you know, you can find 9 mil ammo or 22 ammo, and that's what you can go work manipulations with with a 22 trainer, <laughs> fuck, have at it, bro. But I will spend a lot of my time dry. I, I really do because I like ammo. I like rolling around in the shiny shit. For uh, <laughs> for somebody that is look either training a lot, not as an instructor, but yeah. somebody that wants to know what to have, what they should have. Um, I've tried to make it a practice to have enough ammo on hand um, in the various calibers that I, in the drop of a hat. I can jump in on a course last minute and not have to scramble for ammo. Um, and so that's pistol, shotgun. Um, <laughs> I still have all the shotgun I've shot through on my rifle, but uh, and rifle ammo and, and precision match ammo, um, I've just always tried to maintain that. So within my own schedule as an instructor, if I had a chance to shoot with Uncle Pat or you know go shoot with Kalen or whoever, um, I was able to do that. Now. That I'm married and I now own a house. I gotta build that back up. But um, yeah, keep enough on hand so you can go train. So you don't miss out on a good opportunity. And then try not to touch that for planned training. And then you need warlord ammo. Yeah, a couple of rounds. Whatever you can afford to carry on yourself. Yeah. Yeah. Because you don't want to get caught yeah. shot in the back carrying crates of ammo. If you can't run it, it does you no good. When I'm wearing multi-cam, hauling my generator up into the mountains of Florida. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But but no, I, I think Chad hits pretty good. Uh, you, you know, you should have enough ammo on hand if a class comes up in your area you want to jump into right away and jump in on. Awesome. You should definitely have that. Uh, for me, you know, like I said, there's a lot of maintenance level practice that has to go on. So... I, I've got to stay on it every week if possible. There's a saying so. that don't shop when you're hungry. Well, mm. you have a training opportunity coming up, you're hungry. Um, shop ahead of time so you're not shopping when you're hungry. You get the better deal. Buy a lot of wolf. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, I, my goal is to have probably triple basic load uh, for each AR that I have at the house, and my ultimate goal is to have 20 ARs uh, in, in the rack ready to be handed out to conscripts when I take over. Um, and so I need to be able to, you know, like give uh, these people fucking ammunition to go out and do my bidding and take over shit. So, uh, yeah, I, I'm rocking, I'm rocking, you know, 
uh, we'll call it an even thousand, thousand round per uh, AR-15, 20 AR-15s in the lockup, uh, re- ready for conscripts. <laughs> That's awesome. I can't cap that shit. I'm just saying. I know. I'm just telling you, bro. <laughs> oh, that is epic. If I had Bill's ammo budget, I'd be like, I'd be a phenomenal shooter like he is. Like, no shit. If I, if I had Bill's budget, yeah, and his ammo, yeah, I would. Dude, based on what you said, you're shooting more than me, man. You're shooting a lot more than me. I should be shooting more. That that's truthful. <laughs> we could all be shooting more. I I am finding that I'm dividing so much of my time because of travel that I don't get the practice like I used to right now. And a lot of my time <laughs> literally is cold right in front of the students right out of the gate. Like, hey, I'm about to do this shit cold. I'm gonna screw something up here. But watch this. <laughs> Hold my beer. <laughs> I'm close to that there. When you live in a spot that's got like a legit winter, you lose two, three months out of the year. That guys that live in more temperate climates don't lose. I'm I'm lucky enough now with the new indoor range that I can get in there whenever I want, almost 24 seven. You know, get in there and start doing that shit, which is really cool. Um, what I thought was really awesome of all places, just sidebarn, was that uh, range in Illinois that I was just at. 24 seven key code access dudes pay a thousand bucks a month to be a member of this place. It's two 20 yard ranges, eight lanes each. And these cats are in another 24 seven. They can do whatever they want. It's pretty nice. Thousand bucks a month. Holy shit. Communist Republic of Illinois dog. You get what you can get when you get it. I got nothing. Neither do I. I'm like, I ain't spending. Oh, no, wait, no, sorry. Thousand bucks a year or 80 bucks a month. My bad. I just, yeah, never mind. Thousand a year. Holy shit, you just threw your math off. Hey, motherfucker, unlike you sitting around all day, I've been on the range with a whole bunch of stupid people with guns. What are you going to argue with? <laughs> those stupid uh, people with guns may be watching this by the way I don't care I call them stupid people with guns in class I told them don't be stupid don't be a stupid person with a gun be a oh, smart you're hire a PR firm bro no you know why pew <laughs> <laughs> oh Steve Fisher ladies and gentlemen gotta love him uh, no fishers given, dog. No fishers given. Uh, you, you know, I, honestly, after today, man, it was just one of those days. I was like, why did I not stay in school? Why? Why did I not become a doctor like my mother told me to do so? <laughs> why? It was a good day today, though. Lots of learning. That's, that's no bullshit. It was fun. Yeah. So... Bill, how are you seeing, like, you've been at your place a long time. How have you seen, like, your quals or your standards change over, say, the past 10 or 15 years? Oh, Steve, what? where were you at? We already talked about this. No, 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 no. Like, I wasn't there for that. Like, I mean, legitimately, like his department quals and standards. I wasn't there for that one. If you guys talked about it, yeah, no, no, we talked about it. And and Bill's whole deal is that it's it's a one size fits all kind of deal. And the the chief who can no longer meet the standard can't fire a dude because he doesn't want to have a double standard. You know what I mean? Yeah, I'm sorry, Bill. I'm jumping to your shit. Fucking re- reiterate what you said before, buddy. No, no, you're basically. I mean, I was talking about the uh, why can't uh, the PD firearms program uh, increase, and that and a uh, basic reason is because command staff has to also pass the qual. Um, but we we have made changes. I mean, when I when I first got uh, hired, uh, we shot. We were qualifying four times a year, uh, as an example. 
and we would alternate between two different uh, pistol courses. One was a, a, a very much a, a PPC style marksmanship uh, base course, tons of time. And then the other one was a lot more manipulation of the pistol. And so you just rotated through those. Uh, but we ended up, we were shooting them. Uh, I mean, for fuck, I, it was probably 15, first 15 years I was there. That's all we shot. Um, and I kept bringing, man, we need to, we need to change this shit up, right? We're training guys to get good at this course. This is like Pavlov's dog fucking bullshit, right? Where guys can come in now blindfolded. And so we tried to institute a different course. Uh, a deputy chief uh, came and shot it, failed the fucking thing. And, and, uh, and he immediately said, you know, fuck this. We're not doing it. It's too hard. Uh, you're pushing too far, so forth and so on. I'm like, okay, I'll go back to the, to the drafting board. And so I took the, the, what we, it was the, uh, pistol standards course is what we called it. And I, um, but I took that course. That was the manipulation one. Um, and all I did was I took, uh, so stage one became stage seven. Uh, stage five was now stage one and just flip-flopped everything around. Same uh, bullet count, same time period, same target, same everything. Uh, and I ran our range staff through it and uh, said, hey, guys, this is a brand new course I came up with. I need you to tell me if it's too difficult for the agency. Uh, here we go. First stage is this. And so they shoot it, um, finish the course up, and they had all scored worse. And I'm, you know, asking me, what do you guys think? I'm like, ooh, man, fuck, I don't know. You know, stage three is a little bit tight on the time. Uh, you know, guys are going to struggle with that. And stage five has a lot of fucking rounds at 25 yards, and so you might want to, you know, pair that back. And I said, you fucking morons, it's the same course given to you in a different order. Uh, and I kind of proved the point. So we, what we have, we're doing now is we're switching our qual course up every single year. It's a brand new course. Um, develop something new, and we, we force them to shoot something different, uh, just to, I guess, as a means to try and keep it fresh and and make them work towards something versus just getting comfortable with the, with the same course of fire all the time. And then we also changed up. Instead of qualifying four times a year, uh, we went to two times a year. Uh, and in trade for that, I asked for two training days a year. Um, so now we're training twice a year, uh, qualifying twice a year, and then the elective classes every other year, everybody's mandated for a 10-hour, whether they like it or not, 10-hour training day. Uh, to, to supplement all of that. Um, I'd like to do that annually. We just don't have the staffing, of course, and all the other bullshit that comes along with it. So, Over time. Yeah, I mean, you know, so we, we, we've done some changes, and I would say, well, the course I just sent you, Fish, the, the one that we're shooting right now, um, mm -hmm. there, there are sections of that that guys struggle with. The, uh, the one that has multiple problems to solve during a single stage kind of a deal, uh, I see guys fucking around with that a little bit. Um, uh, where everything ends with a shot to the head in that course. I don't know if you noticed that, so we're trying to force that now where they're, they're immediately going to the dome in a lethal force situation, particularly at close ranges. Um, we're supplementing a lot more with force on force. We're doing shit right now with uh, Sims. Um, I think I posted this up like three months ago, too. One of the things I was going to do was have dudes... Uh, so they're drawing get me. So me and Fisher are going to fight each other. He's the bad guy. I'm the cop. Uh, Steve goes for his gun, so I react off of his movement. So he can carry it, uh, you know, stuffed in his pants on uh, on the back in a pocket. You can put your pistol wherever the fuck you want as the bad guy, and then you go for it. And so we're timing this shit. Um, and a lot of the academy's big deal is as you draw, take a step off the line of attack, and then uh, fire the shot. And so I wanted to see. Um, you know, is there some validity to that? You know, what we're finding is that guys that if they just pull the pistol and deliver a headshot, and these are close range force on force shots, um, they're typically half the time um, than it, when they're taking the step and then firing the shot. And, and to me, that's pretty compelling information to look at and consider. Um, you know, I mean, if fuck, they're shooting the guy in the head and half the time, uh, there's a possibility that the bad guy's round never gets fired if it was real rounds, if that makes sense. So... I mean, we're, we're trying, um, like everybody, we, we fight schedule, we fight staffing. I mean, we've been short staffed for fuck, probably the last 10 years, uh, you know, guys getting mandated on overtime and that kind of shit. So it, it just makes it tough to, to really get a bunch of training time in. You know, you bring up a good point, uh, validation and timing of the, you know, that little quote thing off the X, that sidestep left, right, whatever the case is. We have found as well that more guys are thinking about the motion than they are the problem at hand. Right. Yeah. Worried, worried about. So, so when do I make that step? Do I do it now and then draw? Do I try to draw and take the step simultaneously? Am I drawing, planning? You know, what am I doing? And they start playing that in their head instead of solving the immediate problem that they're faced with. Right. Dealing with that decision making. I, th I think it's something to, I mean, so we're saying that, um, I, I think that you have to consider too the, the level of proficiency with the shooter. 
So a guy that is, uh, you know, at, at the unconscious competence level with the draw, with movement, with shooting, with all that shit, um, I, for that dude, he's probably better off. But your average uh, cop that doesn't get a shitload of time. Um, they didn't deliver. Yeah, they might be better off just standing right there and pushing some rounds into the head and, and hoping you don't get shot in the head in return, right? You hope your vest picks some rounds up or some extremities that you can treat with a TQ, but at least the problem will be over. Um yeah. Versus fuck around stepping. So I, I don't know. I'm not sure what the answer is. And I, I certainly don't want that to be put out that Blower says don't ever get off the line of attack because that's not what I'm saying. It's just like an interesting study for our guys. No, absolutely. You know, I had this discussion with another dude. Uh, he, he, he liked to cite Tom Givens' of students. He, you know, he's had 62 guys involved in shootings. You know, they've all performed this way, done this and this. I'm like, would they have been able to solve the same problem without taking the side step? It's pretty, it's really really good. Good. Yeah. Look at you the blanks. We're really not sure. I'm like, you know, there's a lot of variables that come into play with that movement, especially in an LE world. Dude, you take that side step out and your cover guys are coming in behind you and they see that gun come out, their reaction, actionary gap time, what they're seeing, that whole time space warp continuum shit. And then they put a round in the back of some dude's dome, blue on blue shot, that fucking sucks. Yeah. And then it falls on who? Yeah. Uh, you know, and the other thing too, man, to consider is it's, uh, you know, it, it's in my indoor fucking polished concrete floor, flat, fucking nice, sterile range. Um, yeah. That, that aggressive step's pretty easy, but now you get into the places where you go into where it's a fucking game trail through the garbage and shit fucking piled up everywhere. Um, they go by. Yeah. Well, you might not be able to fucking make a step, right? The only step you can do is forward or backward um, versus to the side and getting off any line of attack or you're going to be, you're going to be tripping over shit. So, I don't know, but a bunch of considerations there. It's not a, it's not an easy fix by any stretch. Yeah, you know, sterile, sterile controlled environment versus no shit. There we are. Absolutely. You got to move with a purpose, and if you're moving for the sake of movement, you know. Yeah, it's one of the reasons I index right into the other side of the gun. My finger wraps over the entire frame. Yeah, and absolutely. If I fall, I, I won't. <laughs> well, you know, perfect case in point. Um, the two local guys we had shot here um, a year ago on New Year's Day on the freeway. Um, he had a, a, they use a lieutenant. He's a FTO and with a new guy one month on the road. Never the dad pulled a pistol and said, I got something for you, and he cracked off shots. Um, they reacted two different ways. The TF or the FTO drew his pistol, returned fire. The new guy, the rookie, moved to cover. They both got center punch hits. Um, the one that just didn't fight took one to the vest and the tin ring. And the and the kid, he took one of the tin ring in the back. And this dude's firing strong hand only <laughs> at a unspecified distance, but I know it was on the side of a highway, so it could have been over 15 yards with a wheel gun. Um, any given Sunday, you know, I, but you seem to me that I stress with shooters is don't hesitate. If you don't move, just get the gun out and shoot. If you start moving, make it a smart move and get the gun out and still shoot. Mm -hmm. The most important thing to do is to shoot. The gun has priority. Anyways, I gotta call it a night, guys. Y'all have a good one. Bye, Chad. Bye, yeah, I, yeah, I agree, Steve. Man, the, to me, the the gun is what's gonna solve this fucking problem. Running around um, or fucking anywhere isn't gonna do dick all if the guys want to pursue me and continue the fight. I gotta put I gotta put lead in them. So whatever it takes to get that job done, you know. It's uh, well, I mean, there's a bunch of fucking video out there that that illustrates that point to some degree as well. Um, it, Regardless, I would think once the problem solved, fucking move. Improve your position is your first priority, right? Whether that's going to cover or just getting uh, moving from the location where the guy last saw you, anything just to, to create a more of a, a difficult shot for the guy coming back to life on you. Yeah. If I'm moving, I'm moving deliberate. I'm clearing a lot of ground because I know my capabilities. You know, and if distance works for my, hey, dude. I'm looking like five car lengths back of that. It's escalated. I'm getting there, you know, or whatever's there. And I'm going to create as much space as possible. 
and then I'm going to get back in that gun if I have to. But yeah, that that's in a perfect situation, perfect world. You know, we know that doesn't exist. We know that does not exist all the time. So, right. yeah, I, I think you can debate this to death. Like nine verse forty-five, the stats are there. That's worked both ways. You know, but you know the old saying: you know, "I'd rather be lucky than good." Sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, I am so lucky. I made that shot. I have no idea how, but I pulled that shit off. Yep. <laughs> I'll take it. Yeah, I'm, I'm good with that one. I meant to do that twice. <laughs> yeah. No, but that makes a lot of sense to me. It really does on how that plays out. Well, yeah, it's, yeah. We'll see. I got I got a few more sessions yet to compile all the data, but I'm I that this is it's going exactly like I expected it would, and I don't see a, a change in in that over the next few cycles of uh, in service either. So, <clears throat> yeah. You know, I, I can recall back days where agencies were still doing calls at fifty yards. Yeah. That shit yeah. needs to come. That, that needs to come back. I mean, when, when you legitimately range a four-lane freeway from guardrail to guardrail, that's 50, 60 yards. Yeah, dude. There's a lot of places that are uh, uh, reducing to 15 fucking yards being their longest shot, and it's tripping me the fuck out, man. And and then you put them at 25, and it's reminiscent to me of, of when I first got hired and we were just getting away from 50-yard shooting. Uh, mm-hmm. And then you'd go back to 15 cars like, well, fuck's sake, this is like a sniper shot. I mean, goddamn, I need a rifle to make this shot. You know what I mean? And no, it's the same thing with this. Well, we, my agency doesn't shoot anything past 15 yards, so I'm making them shoot strong hand only, weak hand only at 25. And it's like I'm asking them, uh, you know, to do some incredibly fucking hard task. But it's, I mean, that 300-point aggregate, uh, you know, it's uh, B8s, t- 10 rounds both hands, 10 rounds strong hand, 10 rounds weak hand in three different B8s. And I have a personal side, and I'm only seven ring and in, so if it's outside the seven, then it's a fucking minus ten. Right. But I'm trying to shoot that as a 250 all the time. Uh, but I have routinely get guys that shoot less than 100 points out of that 300 possible, and it's a fucking trip, man. Yeah, you know, and I think it blows their mind to some degree. They're like, God damn, I suck this bad. And the answer is, yeah, dad, dude, you do, because you're not putting any time into the precision part of, a, of working your pistol. Um you know, and I get it, man. Stats, you know, fucking rule three and all that kind of bullshit. But fuck's sake, that ain't every fight. I want to be able to to switch gears if I have to and, and plug a guy at distance. So, you know, a lot of that comes down to too. You know, you know, the first time they walk into that big box store and they've been in a running gun deal, and that one magazine that they get with that patrol rifle when they pull it out of the car has been expended. They've gotten all excited about shit. Another down to a blaster, and that dude is still 40, 50 yards out. That's yeah. a wake. That, that is a wake-up call because factually that shit has happened. We know it has. You know, it, it, it's there. Dudes can say, oh, I've got this active shooter bag in my vest and all this shit in the car with all these extra mags and that. It stays in the car. It, it's there. Dude's got 28 rounds in the mag, maybe 30, and, you know, he starts launching rounds. They start launching rounds, and next thing you know, or they've had a, ma- a malfunction or they've just done something stupid and that mag doesn't even hit the deck, but we've never seen that either. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> That's an awesome picture. I'm saving that one. But you know, definitely, man. I, I feel there's a still a big need for that that 50 yard shooting. And if anything, it's a confidence builder. Yeah, it just lets them know. Did I, I just? Steal. Yeah, I mean, I equate it a lot to, uh, you know, if you're driving at 100 miles an hour and then all of a sudden you have to, you go back to 60, well, 60 doesn't seem very fucking fast anymore, right? So if you get decent at 50 yards, all of a sudden 25 yards looks like five. It's just not that tough to shoot him where the mental part of it's gone, so. Yeah, it, it, that that's an easy part of the day. It, it's just a total confidence building for a lot of cats. That it is. I think... Go ahead. Go ahead, Steve. No, go ahead, Matt. After you, sir. Oh, okay. I was going to say. Your, your teeth are so light. Go ahead. This episode of Modcast was brought to you by Steve Fisher's Data Plan. That's all. <laughs> Do that shit. It works. You know, it's something that we talk about a lot in class and training. It really boils down to, besides fundamentals, 
emotional control. That direct emotional input that you give that gun directly directly relates to the output coming from that muzzle. If you're not in control of that shit, you're getting shit in the gun, shit out of the gun. You know, absolutely. There's so many factors that play into it, and dudes just don't spend enough time doing it. Myself included, I don't nearly spend as much time as I would like doing offhand 25 yards on B8s. I, I don't. And I need to ratchet down and just spend time doing that shit. I have to. It's like Brussels sprouts. Nobody wants to do it, but that shit's good for you. Unless they're coated in bacon. Mm. And you like, are on your phone what, right now, like, right? I'm actually on my laptop. I'm just hot spotting that shit. Oh, gotcha. Yeah, I am. But, um, like, what is the last actual, you know, because somebody will always bring it up, what is the last actual long-range engagement somebody has had with a handgun in XYZ agency? Yeah, it's been, uh, I'm trying to think of the, uh, patrol shootings. Well, the the last SWAT shooting, those guys were at 28 yards. Um, one guy 28 yards, I, if I recall right, 28 yards. The next guy was 30 yards um, for a SWAT shoot with pistols. Uh, rifle guy was got fucked up coming out of the car. <laughs> um, and then uh, patrol, I can't remember if anybody, we had a, a, roll, a, a pursue guy with an SKS. They pitted the car, rolled it over in the ditch, and then he shot at the cops. But I think everybody returned fire with rifles on that. Um, and that was, it was, yeah, there were guys way past that. But I think it was all, I don't think anybody fired any handgun shots, but I could be fucking dicked up on that as well. So yeah, it's, I mean, it's, it's, certainly in our case, it's been anything more than 15 yards has been with rifles. And the close up shot shit has all been, uh, you know, just reacting to, to the problem that, that pops up right in front of you. So, yeah, so they're doing a lot of it based on data. Yeah. Oh, um, past incidents like everything else does. Yeah, and, 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 I, and I kind of get it too because, uh, you know, just with the lack of training time, lack of bullets, lack of this, lack of that. Uh, I mean, if you, you know, you're going you're gonna to roll the dice and, and play odds, then you got to look at what national statistics are for officer involved shootings. And if everything's fucking close or, or 99% of them are really close, then maybe you got to spend that short amount of time you have training on, on, on that. Um, you know, on that aspect of the shooting game. And it's, I, I would like guys to be perfect shooters, but obviously not everybody's want to spend their time and the agency doesn't have the money to, to put that much into uh, that many bullets for everybody and the time to, to do it. So, uh, you know, I don't have a fucking fix, unfortunately. I think that personal commitment would be the fix. There you go. Yeah, I, I think if you could figure that out, you'd be, you know, you'd have a million dollars in your pocket at that point if you could figure it out. Yeah. Hmm. How often do you guys call Lamper? We are well overdue. <laughs> what's, what's that mean? <laughs> uh, the range we usually use is offline. It's being redone. So, uh, as a matter of fact, I think it's either this week or next week. We're going to a private commercial range to do some very static indoor stuff. Mm. Yeah, you, you know, that and the big one is low light training. Yep. There is there is not enough low light workup that can be done. Well, for that, you just either put on sunglasses or close your eyes. <laughs> Welding goggles. Oh, my God. Yeah, that's, yeah. I mean, one of the, our, our range is small, but the nice thing is that I can adjust the lighting however the hell I want, so I can make, I can make it a cave in there in the middle of the day. Um, and so our guys actually do quite a bit of low light stuff and they have to qualify in low light twice a year, but it's still not enough, man. It's just not the fuck enough. Yeah. It, it never is. It, it truly never is. When you really think about it, I mean, it, it's gotta be a split literally in the training of, you know, one qual of daylight, one qual of dark, one, you know, and more just, I think remedial workups in the dark, especially for patrol cat, you know, we're starting with a light up here and some type of modified FBI neck index, wherever bullshit position they're working stuff from, whatever it is they're doing, you know, and there's a lot of one-headed work going on. 
eh, at that point. So, you know, really getting in the gun at a five yard, you know, just locking down that grip and burning shit down at that point. I mean, there's a lot of that that needs to be done. It's just not getting addressed enough, I think. I mean, we're seeing it. I mean, I'm sure you guys are. I'm sure Matt is and some other dudes. Yeah. I mean, they, and that's the thing is they're, I mean, they come in and they, uh, they shoot the gun, um, but very little, uh, you know, manipulation of the pistol reloads, malfunction clearance and all that other shit just doesn't happen because there's, it's just a wall, right? So just shoot through it where they're good guns. It's good ammo. So the shit shoots, they don't have a fucking problem and off they go, but can they do it on the day? Particularly the reload. Yeah. Yeah. You know, everything goes to slide lock. <laughs> yeah. Everything goes to slide lock, bro. You yeah. never perform a speed reload because those three bullets left in the gun may save my life or well i just put 16 more in the gun dude they're gonna save my life more than those three will especially when things get fluid yeah and it's, it's all a big crime scene <laughs> i mean everything is one big scene yep there's a mag there with two rounds in it okay. <laughs> Whatever. i can put 15 16 18 25 back in the gun i don't care about those two <laughs> There's a lot of that that we see too, and it's just, yeah. It, I don't know the answer. I don't know if there is an answer. As long as you're fighting administration and budgets, you're not going to have it. They'd rather yeah. spend more time on, yeah. I mean, I, and, I, and I said my chief, uh, I mean, he's not a particularly good shooter, uh, but he's pretty supportive of the program. Uh, I mean, the elective classes are, are costing quite a bit of money. Um, it, but fuck, even you know, even at that, we just there's no way that I mean, the entire fucking operating budget would go toward ammo to get everybody at the level that I would like to have them at, and it's so it's yeah, it's cost prohibitive. You gotta do shit on your own, man. The dry fire, right? That's fucking free. Do this shit on your own, dude. Reload drills. Yeah. <laughs> Everything's free. Everything is free at that point. Yeah. Roland's got something good. He's got some shit cooking. I'm I'm just waiting to hear it. No, nah, man. Um, you know, y'all talking departmental shit out of my lane. Fucking got nothing other than Bill's right. Uh, it would probably cost too much money for us to make everybody a ninja. Mm -hmm. Yep. That's why everybody should have shotguns. Oh, my fucking God. <laughs> I'm still surrounded by a sea of 40 caliber. No I'm sorry. One's, yeah, no one's listening to new scientific facts and findings. 40's the way to go. No. That shit was cool in 1989, bro. You know what? It still works. It's still bullets. It's better than a, it's better than a 22 yeah. man. Yeah. Yeah, I know. I, I like my 40s. But if you can get it cheaper, less recoil, so faster follow-up, greater capacity, same results. For police issue gun, why not? Eh, three rounds. Three rounds. Come on. <sighs> That's three they, rounds can you know it as well as I do. That's what they say. Yeah, but it's only three rounds. What, what, what's 10%, you know, what, what's 15%? It doesn't matter. It's only three rounds. With some agencies, that's a pass or a fail on a qual. Yeah. Oh, look who showed up today. Yeah, you know, bro, that, that shit with, well, it's, fuck, it's only two rounds, man. These are the same dumb fucks that are downloading their magazines to 28 in their rifle. For fuck's sake, fill that shit up. It's a 30-round magazine. God damn it. Oh my gosh! No, no, no. I fucking went there. I fucking went there. I must be the world's most terrible instructor. Here it is, uh, 10 a.m. on T2, and I have not yet covered push pull. <laughs> Thirty fucking rounds, man. That's what goes in them. Forty or sixty. Get a drum. Yeah, that 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 shit's just antiquated as hell. It's like, I mean, uh, we're locking that shit back on the. Let's see, bolts open. I'm putting a magnet gun in my hand. I have the gun. 
third work. Yeah. I don't know. Still Fisher's internet went under. full Fisher. It did not shut up. Oh, you're back now. You you just went into the black hole. <laughs> yeah, we just got not... some Steve Fisher text message fucking <laughs> comms. That, that's because yeah. that's because Jedi showed up, but his people just hacked my shit. So, say again, all after fucking whatever the fuck you were saying when you started. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if you like thirty rounds or twenty eight. To be honest with you, because I didn't hear a fucking thing you said, man. Thirty bullets in the gun, dog. Why? Yeah. Dudes are going to pick that gun up. They're going to lock that bolt to the rear. They're going to do all their initial I and I bullshit on that gun, supposedly. They're going to stick that 30 round mag in the gun, hit that button, put 30 in the gun. <laughs> so then what do you do with the D60? Same shit. Put that bitch in the gun. You, you don't it. take out four? 60 rounds. <laughs> No, I'm in bullshit. You only loaded 58. It's still download two. <laughs> Jedi will have a spreadsheet for us later on that. I thought I was the spreadsheet. No, actually, it's Wix. Flowchart. Uh, no, he does flowcharts. I'm sorry, officer. That's, that's Team Glock. <laughs> <laughs> What's up, Jedi? Hey, Not much, man. I actually just woke up. <laughs> I got to hit the road here soon. So I oh. uh, saw that you guys were on. What are you on, Asian Pacific? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. We, we own that time. No, man, I'm on. Yeah. Anyway, so... I will continue to suck the internet out of your area if you do not comply. <laughs> Pay the toll. I keep on forgetting. I was like, what the hell are these guys doing? I keep on forgetting it's 9 o'clock out on the, week, east, on the West Coast, right? I don't know. It's just time. Yeah. Yeah, it's 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 15. It's just fucking bedtime. I'm getting sleepy and shit. Yeah. Oh Jesus! Really? <laughs> Dog, me, me and Roller are like hours here, and you guys are talking to me and sleepy at ten o'clock. Oh, I'm gotta so get that ten. You gotta get that eight hours every day, man. I literally fucking volunteered for dog shift when we got on board with this fucking podcast shit. Thank you. I am fucking third watch all fucking day, man. <laughs> Best TV show in the world. <laughs> This is great driving around, working a shift, and having this playing in the background. I gotta tell you, oh, this it is... makes my makes my six and a half hour drive go by so fast. Steve, where are you at, dude? Is that your house? Were you at a bunker or something? Where are you at, dude? <laughs> <laughs> this is the main. Oh, fuck, man. In I'm in the bunker. I am Scott, in the I have bunker. something for you. Hold on one second. Okay. Okay. Here it comes. <laughs> Oh, that's phenomenal. There you go. That is spot on. Trying to see it's Stephen Andrews. Is that good? Oh. That is off. Are we missing a tattoo on this arm over here, though? Give it time. Give it time. Okay. Yeah. Somebody's Photoshop yeah. skills are on point, man. How long did that take? Good God. About six minutes. <laughs> nice. Nice. Oh. Okay. Like I'm trying to figure the picture in your background of blue leisure suits. I think Scott needs to give some internet back. I'm good. Am I not good? Oh, I need to. Oh give no, you're fine. Yeah, you need to give oh. it back to Steve. It wouldn't be nearly as fun. All right, hold on. Is it back? So what I'm looking at is that picture over Scott over over his left shoulder with the blue leisure suits with the, like the white collars and shit on the wall. Hold on one second. I can. There we go. What the fuck are you talking about? Which one? The farthest left on my screen, or my my right, your left. Yeah. Yeah. Two, two people. Right. Yeah. Badass. R ruffled collar. 
Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's what it is. Legit as fuck. Yeah. Is, that like, Santa, is that Santa? Like, <laughs> the fuck are you guys talking about? This one? <laughs> yeah, yeah, right above Jeez. your fucking lamp right there. Is that Santa Claus? Yeah, what is that? That's a wedding. Oh, I see it. <laughs> the wedding picture you want is that Santa Claus. <laughs> Dude, Blowers, man. I posted a throwback of one of my uh, wedding pictures, man, and, and Bill just went to town, man. Bro, it's, it's, it's pretty obvious to me that you are rich, smart, or you got a giant wiener because you are you are nowhere near good, good looking enough to have that for a wife, man. I'm just saying. I know, you know. Dude, I, don't the slant eyes fool you. Why can't it be all three? <laughs> you know. It's just fact. It does not exist. <laughs> I will tell you universal truth, man, and uh, and that is the chicks dig the action guys, man. Because I, 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 all of us have better looking uh, women in our lives than we than we fucking rate. I mean, it's just just, just straight up, uh, you know. Well, that's a fucking that's, fact, man. That's because they all have daddy issues. <laughs> Probably. Oh, we are so preying on them. <laughs> <laughs> Or so we think. No, I was like I said, I'm definitely the reacher and she's the settler, but it's all good. Yeah. What's Fisher? What the fuck? Are you what are you wearing, dog? Is that like some felt woodland? <laughs> Wait. Wait a minute. No, don't do that, bro. Oh, fucking a. This is like some fucking Schwarzenegger commando fucking Hugh Hefner combo smoke jacket bullshit in a bunker. What is this? What's wrong with that? The viewers are decreasing as we speak <laughs> for real. <laughs> that, that, that vest is fucking legit, man. I got, I think I got to find that shit. It's probably Amazon somewhere, but I, I'm getting I'm one. I'm thinking Old Navy. No. That is straight up Cabela's, dude. I was just going to say Cabela's. Yeah. I was looking for the reflective tour guide logo shit that they have. What is that? What do they call that thing, man? Oh, uh, oh, what the hell is that? <laughs> yeah. Why you gotta pick on me? Can't you pick on Blowers and his bald ass? Um, I usually don't get situations where multiple people are picking on you at the same time, so I'm gonna take advantage of it. Oh, you might, you might as well. Yeah. Wait till I have you in class. I know. Wait. I know. I got some shit. You got some shit for me? Mm -hmm. I got some new stuff I made up. It makes no sense. You're going to hate it. <laughs> <laughs> makes, good for, makes for good video. Yeah, absolutely does. What do you call it? <laughs> Fleece vest. Y'all are going to hate when I'm rocking that wolf gray Adam vest after I chop the sleeves off and have that all That's cut right. up. Matter of fact, Matter that fact. one will be on YouTube next week. <laughs> awesome. That was, that, like, was a, that was a really good show. Yeah, it was. Great White Buffalo. <laughs> Great White Buffalo. <laughs> <laughs> what are you doing with this? What are you doing with the sleeves fish? Making a making a pillow out of it? What are you doing? Uh, pretty much. I'm going to try to cut these up. I'm going to have them cut up enough to try to turn the hand sleeve to a hand warm off. Oh, that's right. That's right. Frozen in time. Hold up. I'm like, no, I'm not going to do some more. It sounds like fucking like genius to me. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I got a clip for you. <laughs> you fucking fish, man. Your shit's going haywire, bro. I can't hear you. Did that start when I stopped? Did that start when I hopped on? No, nah, he was that right before you came on. Actually, it, it might have been right when you fucking came on that his shit started going fucking crazy. You're welcome. Landfair called it that it was going to be 10% of tonight's chat. 
that Fisher was going to be fucked up like a football bat. <laughs> it's me, Mr. Salad. But no, I brought you take your road trip. <laughs> I heard I heard crotch in yeah. road trip. Oh. And lunch. then there's a cat on the screen. Stop. What? Lunch. <laughs> God, that fucking monkey. I was like, fuck, I could be sleeping. <laughs> Oh, Jesus. Uh, this is good times, man. Fuck, all he needs to do is sell a night, one of his Nighthawks and upgrade his service. Fuck. Yeah. <laughs> uh, he's such a fucking ape. <laughs> oh, God. Look at him. He's frozen in time looking at his cat. Yeah, I think your shit's froze, man. You got nothing. You know, he just fell asleep right there. I wanted to. I can't tell where it is. I can see you guys. I can hear you guys. Exactly. That's what's so awesome, Fish. You can hear us, but we can't hear you. So we could just launch fucking shit talk bombs right your direction. There's nothing you can do about it. Oh, see, you quit. Fucking loser. He evacuated the hell out of there. Man. Uh, uh, he's probably trying to reboot. Yeah, fucking Commodore 64 it takes a while to construct. <laughs> right tight. You know, <laughs> yeah, you know what Haggard just said? Haggard just said, great, now I need to buy a mic and a vest. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Chuck does need to get a fucking mic, man. It, we are uh, yeah. missing out on some good shit from that guy if you just get the fuck in the guy. Goddamn, Chuck. I mean, I, I got mine. How long did it take me, Lanfer? Like three days? I was on the ball. Not even. Well, uh, you know. <laughs> <laughs> yes, we have professionals. We need a dead bird on there somewhere. Ooh, good call. Bird somewhere oh that's flat i am a huge fan of gassing fools so like i really need some chuck haggard in my life to like you know yeah. continue to build upon you know my hood rat tendencies with <laughs> fucking various aerosol agents um because he he's the fucking man uh in, in that respect so yeah we need to get him on here i will uh I will raid my IT department's uh, microphone. I'll just send them one. I got an address. Nice. But he's been on, uh, Chuck's been on a tear, man, in between and novice and whatnot. It's awesome just to watch him work. Yep. I, my classic line is, guys, Chuck has said something. Shut the fuck up. Move on. <laughs> <laughs> also, it'd be nice to get Lane somehow involved in this. I don't know if you guys know him very well yet, but he is a excellent source of information. Yeah, what's the uh, what's the hesitancy with him? Is it just too busy or doesn't want to? Incredibly busy. Yeah. Yeah, just retired after millions of years with law enforcement. Actually, just 23, I think. Just a very busy guy. Lots of travel. Yeah. Matter of fact, I'm gonna message Chuck right now and see what his computer makeup setup is, and I'll set him something, man. Because it will be better than Fisher's. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Well, you know what's really funny about this? Bill is still connected. Bill was the one with all the tech yeah, issues. My, my shit's solid now, man. Hardwired in. Hey, Lane just messaged me. Awesome. Dude, Bill, Bill's on point, man. You are an honorary Asian, brother. <laughs> <laughs> I'll take it. <laughs> Fucking left coast. <laughs> oh. Hey, Scott, would you say earbuds with a mic, built-in mic work just fine? Because that's what I just told Lane. Like an iPhone setup? Uh, Yeah. I think um, one of the first ones we did here when I was at my corporate apartment, 
I had was a laptop and uh, no furniture in the living room except for some MIPSIC targets. Uh, it worked fine. The Echo was too bad with just a uh, laptop setup, so I just got some. I think I went to like Harris Teeter out here, which is like a I don't know a, a Smiths where you guys are at. Just bought some nine dollar ones and they were they were golden. Speaking of which, how are you doing this right now without getting an Echo? Uh, so in my home office, I've got the Logitech HD one, and it's it's uh, it's pretty good. Pretty, but I've never had any echo issues with this one. So cool, yeah, because you're not running. It doesn't look like you're running earbuds or anything right now. Yep, nope. This one's pretty good HD. You know, blah blah blah. So you guys can make fun of my wedding pictures in the background, and it sounds pretty good. So and your shiner. Can you still see that shit, man? Yeah. It's starting to fucking scab over. It's awesome. Jiu-Jitsu tomorrow. See what happens. See if I can't get some revenge. Probably not. Hey, Fizz. You're welcome back, man. You get that uh, the, the the tape cassette rewound so you can go again. Ah. Yeah, pretty much. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I was tired out or some shit. I don't know what's all happened. I was like. Ah. You're gonna put that. You're gonna put that cat on the generator wheel to get more bandwidth. Have it chase the hamster. <laughs> Atari 400. Man. <laughs> Cassette drive. Oh, nice. Someone's helping us out big time. They sent, they uh, sent a list or not a list, a link. A screen grab from Cabela's. Where to get this? Very nice. Very nice. <laughs> Cabela's Men's Outfitters Berber Fleece Series Vest with foremost windshield, windshear regular. Oh, my God. Even in 2X. So that's where's perfect. That, where, where's that at? In Novice. All right. I'm, I'm, I'm uh, it's on sale right now for $90. What the fuck? Seriously? Yeah. Well, it's 300 to cover fucking... <laughs> yeah. <Yeti. laughs> uh, I'm gonna go check that out because there's a Cabela's like uh, five miles from my office. I'm gonna go get that tomorrow. That's awesome. Wix just said he's getting one. So, Philip, if you don't mind, post the link. Is it is it originally a vest or is it a sleeping bag that he just fucking cut holes into? Well, it, it's a rigid, <laughs> it's an Ar Arcteryx thing that you have to rip the sleeves off first. I guess. Man, it looks like there's uh, there's color options even. You can you can select the pattern you want. Nice. Yeah, that's real nice. Fuck yeah. <laughs> Fuck yeah. <laughs> and Frank wants to buy one now. Of course, why the fuck wouldn't he? <laughs> Got Are they on the West Coast? It's P and S fucking mandatory gear right there, man. We just need to get it embroidered with the logo. Nice. And then, of course, someone just said, "Can we get it embroidered?" Yeah, that's that's good thinking right there. Smart. Where is Chuck? And I am actively working on getting us the link so we can all have them. So Wix probably will be an extra small. Mm, extra small junior. Yeah. Waiting for him to comment. Oh, I see. I see. Okay, the link is now part of the part of that screen grab. Man, that's a good looking vest. Now, do we want to get it in Outfitter Brown or Outfitter Camo? They're both in stock. Weird. I would have thought that would be a sold out item. It, well, <laughs> after, after this fine broadcast, it will be. Yeah. They're like, we've been trying to get rid of this fucking shit for two years. All of a sudden, it's all gone. <laughs> it has outstanding reviews, too. It's uh, it's rated 4.7 stars out of five. 116 reviews. This must be amazing. Yeah. It's, it's all fucking Fisher, though. He just keeps logging on. Bitchin', the fucking best vest ever. I love this fucking thing. <laughs> Matt just posted hashtag all the sleeves. 
All the sleep. Yep. It is so good for bunker wear, though. I mean, when you're when you're down in the you know geologically climate controlled fucking bunker, uh, it's good to go. Good to go. Oh, Wix just corrected me. He wears a smedium. Good to know. Of course he does. All right, I just messaged Huck or Huck Chuck. I'm gonna send him. I'm gonna yeah, same thing. I'm gonna send him a mic and camera setup, man. I got like two or three thousand of them in the office that no one even uses. So I'll swipe one and send it to him. Go ahead and cut that out of the actual, you know, published broadcast podcast for me. All right. Yeah, no, e- easy day. Yeah. So, so I remember when. Uh, Jesus, this keeps getting better. That's awesome. <laughs> oh shit! Oh, look at that. That's amazing. That's good times right there. That is Stephen Andrews. That dude gets a raise. Yes, he does. Oh wow. I got nothing. That's good shit. Man, you need to throw that, uh, take that picture and throw it up to knobs real quick so everybody can see how, how fucking bitching it is. That's a fine idea. That is a great idea. And then one of those suckers will actually take one of his classes and bring it up and make it <laughs> fucking crush during class. I think that that's going to be the cover picture for the YouTube link. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Fucking savage. (laughs) (laughs) Good Good times. Yep, there you go. Looking good. People are going to use this as their wallpaper. I oh, think my, I'm thinking about it, yeah. Oh, that's my new fucking cover photo right there, man. That is amazing. Okay, looks like Wix has changed his mind. He said we can keep that. Ninety dollars is dead bird money. <laughs> yeah, he's kind of right. Where is that link, though? Man, I need fish back. What the hell? I was gonna. I'm, I think I'm getting my uh, my new Beretta 1301 this week. I wanted to, to bullshit with him about that, but now he's all mad that we're making fun of his lame computer and his vest. So, ooh, that's, a, sh- that's a shotgun rolling. <laughs> uh, uh, yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> Correct. Oh. Where did you say that link was to that vest? Was it in Was it in Novice? It is. It's on Novice in the link that links you to the YouTube page that's covering this. Roger. Okay. I'm fine. Hey, and hey then, Matt, is your yeah. uh, is your agency? Uh, are you guys issuing rifles and shotguns in your cars? Because I see that quite a bit in uh, you know in more rural fucking departments. Uh, no. Shotguns, I think there are two shotguns in the agency. Everyone no, else has rifles. And uh, the old used A1, M16A1s for the, uh, yeah. That, that's the issue shit. For the guys that uh, don't rate. Gotcha. Gotcha. I did. Uh, I went and did some training in uh, in Eastern Oregon, which is a fucking beautiful country. Nothing like uh, and not the dipshits like you find in Portland. Uh, but the road deputies there had both in the car uh, issued by the sheriff's department. They had a standing order if they saw a fucking coyote, they're supposed to stop and kill that cocksucker. 
and it was pretty goddamn funny going up to the range and, and dude just binds the brakes up I'm like what the fuck is going on he's bailing out with his rifle that whack coyote out in the middle of the field kind of cool that would be awesome yeah right okay someone just posted of course I just lost the link damn it I was reading that thing. What is it? What is it? It's a Justin Bieber fleece. What the? What is that? Oh, the Woolrich. Uh, Cabela's. Oh, Berber. Oh, yeah. oh, sorry. I thought I read Justin Bieber fleece. That would have been yeah, same thing. <laughs> I think it's nice though. Look at that. Got at least Fisher's on Facebook now. His dial-up works for that, so that's good. <laughs> He's probably discussing in a AOL group chat. Uh, hey, I used to be on those. Those are awesome. Yep. When was that? Uh, ninety something. Ninety yeah, something. Ninety-seven. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly for me. Yep, 97. Yeah, Jesus. It's funny, man. They're, you know, AOL's still around. and I, Their headquarters is uh, seven miles from my house. You know, they're more of an online marketing company now, but you'll, especially out here, you'll still get people with an AOL.com email address. And you're just oh, like, I know a couple guys that have them. God. Legit guys, yeah. It's like, dude, you know Gmail's free. Mm-hmm. You know, you got that, and you come across the occasional Netscape in Juno. Oh, wow. <laughs> oh, yeah. Remember that from back in the day? Oh, yeah. Oh, bro, oh, Jesus. Uh, Are you serious right now? <laughs> <laughs> oh, fuck. Oh. This kid. This kid's killing me. Nice. Oh. <laughs> Fucking dude. Like... Oh my god! Shit's like hammer's pants, man. Too legit to quit. I can't. I got, I got nothing. Oh fuck! Basically, someone said that they're going to be in Fisher's class in in the next two weeks, and they're going to they plan on wearing that that nice fleece vest. If we don't hear from him a couple weeks later, he'll be. We know that he'll be buried in a ditch somewhere. Exactly. Exactly. I don't know where that comment went. He might have deleted oh. it. Oh, Fisher's all bark. He loves everybody. Like yeah, he Fish. Does. Fish genuinely loves everyone. He does. He has no malice against any other human being on this planet. Well, um, he must. He's still paying for an AOL account. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. He hates gun buddies pretty well. Pretty. That hate is pretty. That runs pretty deep. He uh, one of the other, uh, like the local forum out here. This chick popped up, and the time that he took to write his five paragraph, perfectly written, why he hates gun bunnies uh, thing with it was. It, you were like, wow, that's epic. Wow, I can't believe you took the time. Wow, everything spelled correctly. <laughs> but he took the time to write that. She didn't get it. She didn't get it. Of course not. <laughs> Cause she's a fucking oh. Uh... She's, a... <laughs> she's a who? Uh... What's going on? Did Steven pop up with a really nice vest that we can't see anymore? He did. He did. No, I, I, it looked like it was a, a jacket with a with a backpack on or something. <clears throat> no, it's no, it's a it's a vest with a hood. Oh. Can we see that? Can we see that, please? All right, hold on. All right. My wife's gonna wonder why it's all stretched out all funny. Oh, it's an Eddie Bauer. Did he just say that his wife is working? Okay, never mind. Sorry. <laughs> his wife's name is Eddie Bauer. <laughs> wow.
Ready for screenshots? Is that it? Ready. All right, one second. Emma Bright. No, no. We we want to see the best. <laughs> 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 oh, dude. This is going to make it worth your time. Fuck. Yeah, you're having a good time. <laughs> yeah. There we go. You like that? Oh, nice. Very tactical. Hi. Is there really something about Steve's? Yeah, that's nice, man. Puffy, it's uh, got, got, got some warmth to it. Got the hood Functional. on there. Yeah, what is, what is that? Michael Kors? What did you say it was? <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's like you're saying about, you know, layering. You want to you want something puffy and that low off material to throw over top. I've got my uh, a really low profile uh, chest rig on. You can't see it, but it's what color is it? Well. It's wolf gray. That's why okay. you can't see it. Yeah. <laughs> I got to hold on. Hold on. Hey, Steve, was that a uh, also a medium? That looked a little tight. No, I just I've just gotten fat recently. Okay, at least you're honest. He just doesn't want forensic evidence that he stole his his wife's shit. This is so true. When, she, when she's calling him out for it being stretched out later, he's like, "No, nah, baby, I I don't know what you're talking about." You you have been eating a little bit more, dear, but yeah. Yeah, vests all stretch out. Her underpants got dick marks in them. It's just Again. terrible. Night. <laughs> <laughs> just keep it on the theme. What the fuck is Jeff got? <laughs> God damn it! Keep on the theme of this, man. Fuck. <laughs> there we go. Oh is that, shit! That's leather. <laughs> no, this is this is close. It's vertex. Oh man! Uh, see? Yeah. Fuck yeah. Look at that. See? I got my woolly Asian chest. There you go. This just gets gayer and gayer <laughs> and gayer. I got nothing. <laughs> <laughs> ah, this is this is this is how I roll in the summer, concealed carry, man. You know, I'm I'm thinking we're lucky that that Roland doesn't use his camera. <clears throat> I can only imagine what he'd be showing us. Let's talk about it. No. No. No, there there was uh, a situation. <laughs> there there was a situation where we were, we were discussing how bad the uh, Surefire XC1 light was. Oh and, yes, and and it went it went over the top. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> if I ever meet Roland, uh, you'll recognize him. I will. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. So yeah, Stephen asked me about the light, and, you know, whatever, and I was like, it fucking really sucks. And he he made some, you know, joking comment with like his very astute wit. For to which I responded with a fucking photograph of the XC1 light with my fucking balls on it. <laughs> And I posted it up, and I was like, this is what I think about this fucking light. And, you know, Stephen, Stephen caught it both barrels, unfortunately. But yeah. I don't think those are barrels. <laughs> yeah. well, it's, <clears throat> what's fucked up is when that image shows up in your iPad photo stream <laughs> and your two-year-old niece or three-year-old niece asks to borrow your iPad and uh, go through <laughs> pictures. It's... it's <laughs> <laughs> it's for, for an uncomfortable conversation. I too house. would be embarrassed if someone saw a picture of that light on my I, iPad. Was that the? Was it nuts and the light only? Was, <laughs> yeah. It, it was the light mounted on a Glock, and then my fucking ball sack like sitting on the side of the light. You know, like like I, I fucking tea bagged the Glock and took a picture of it. <laughs> Did it, did it take you a minute to figure out what the fuck you're looking at, Steven? You're like, what no, the hell? Just dropped. <laughs> Roland just dropped. I think he was trying to take off his pants. Uh, <laughs> going to do another one. That's, pheno that's phenomenal. I got to say, I mean, from a composition standpoint, it used the rule of thirds, uh, good backdrop, good lighting. I mean, dare say art. I don't recall how was the depth of field. 
Yeah, you're you're like a you're like a like a Dyson of comedy. You just suck all the funny out of out of every moment. No. Hey, there he is. There he is. <laughs> Whoa. You know, it's sad, Steve, because yeah, it's hey. usually you, though, so. Did Fisher come over and do some IT work for you a minute ago, Roland? What, what happened there? I don't know, man. My, my, my shit seized up. <laughs> you, you, you were laughing at my nuts on my Glock. <laughs> <laughs> and the screen froze. <laughs> it's got to be an FCC violation. You probably got fucking hemmed up. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, it's because our fucking moderator is in Utah and shit. <laughs> the Mormons are regulating bandwidth. That's exactly God. what it is. <laughs> Inappropriate. Bang. <laughs> yeah, thank God you put a t-shirt on, uh, Jed Zinski. That was good. That was oh, on. yeah. That was good. That was good. Yeah. <laughs> getting too gay for me. Uh so did you guys do a whole thing on the XC1 and why that thing deserves the nutsack of the great one? I don't think here. Have you guys played with it? I mean, obviously Roland has. I mean, more ways played with one. Play with, play with what? <laughs> 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 well, what's wrong with that thing, man? Too flimsy, uh, controls only for on one side, no more. <laughs> Are you still talking there. about nuts? Oh, my Lord. My understanding is output and switchology. Hmm. Yeah, the the switchology as well as the mounting, uh, the the way it mounts, it's it's uh, just wasn't wasn't a very good design. Um, the idea of of being able to squeeze out those lumens in a tight package, um, it was cool. And we looked at the pre prototypes and we're like, "Yay, this is going to be fucking awesome!" But when it got to production, it was just fucking shit show. Gotcha. So, so that on the that instead of nothing. Hmm? That that instead of nothing though. I'll take that. No, you're right. I mean ver- versus no capability. Yeah. Um, you know, but I mean I appendix carry a fucking hand cannon every day. I don't understand why people can't figure out <laughs> how to conceal carry a firearm. That right there, appendixed, no problem. Yeah, yeah. Ex- exactly. Yeah. Yeah. That's me. So I go with the Glock 17. I, just, I don't. I, you know, shit, no issues, man. Zero. By the way, Scott, thanks for killing all the humor. Oh, my fault, man. Yeah, we had know. to bring had to bring us back serious. Well, we had a trilogy of of gay vests there, so I thought I'd try to be just a little bit back. Uh, to the uh, to the seriousness, but we we may return. We may return. So the thing just wouldn't hook on right. I mean, it's not like a stupid ass streamlight or anything like that, is it? Well, <laughs> you know, Bill Bill actually is a big fan. We've had a long dis- we've had multiple discussions about this, and Bill is an avid fan of the streamlight. I know, and he has funny. yeah he has some great points. I don't share I don't share the his views though, but. Yeah, I, I, it ain't like the surefire is a piece of shit. That's, I'm, yeah. I am not implying that or saying that in any way, shape, or form, man. No, just, not. You know, some guys want a superior light when they're doing real work. Other guys, you know, sit in their fucking closet and don't really have to do anything. So whatever, who gives a fuck what you got on there, right? Go back to an SL20 and fucking hose clamps for fuck's sake. I don't care. <laughs> uh, so, Bill, with that in mind, what would you say to officers that aren't allowed to to run weapon lights, how to go about getting that approved. What information do you provide? Well, I, I, to me, the proof is in the fucking pudding, right? I mean, the ability to, to, to discriminate and, and, and manage the gun um, is clearly easier with that. So, uh, you know, it's funny, man. Uh, years ago when we when we went to ARs for the department, which I, it was in 98 where we started getting rid of the, uh, the 870s. And uh, so we, we had iron sights for a couple of years, and then we got uh, a couple of the uh, ACOG one and a halfs uh, in us, just field trial shit. And, and we just happened to be having a range training day, so we had uh, two of the guns mounted with those. Um, and we'd been bitching about one, put some type of optic on the uh, on the rifles. Uh, but anyway, we had these two. Uh, 
just happened to be the day one of the deputy chiefs came out to the range, so we had him shoot one of those rifles for the qual course, and he shot it perfect. And uh, he was like, Jesus Christ, these are fucking awesome. Why don't we have these for everybody? And we we're like, well, you know, it's fucking money. And give me a bid. So literally, we sent him a, a fucking requisition the following week, and he approved all the cash. And I, I think potentially this could be that same type of thing. If you're, if the admin guys are amenable, come to the range, uh, give them a, a, a pistol with a light on it. Let them see the holster retention is the same, so there's no liability concern uh, for, for the guys on that. And then, and then have them shoot the low light course uh, with a handheld and without. And, and I'm sure even they can produce a better score uh, with a wet mount light. And that should, to me, should be proof positive uh, that it's the way to go. But we're our own worst enemies, though, as you know. Where, you know, you see the other dealers guys get a fucking light on their pistol, and now all of a sudden I see them pulling it out to look under the seat of a front, you know, the front seat of a car. Uh, they're pulling their pistol, look in the trunk. They're pulling the pistol and using it like a fucking flashlight that has a gun attached. Um, and so cops just got to be smarter too when you know training issue. Yeah, fuck yeah, it, it is a training issue, and it's a, I mean it's also a common sense fucking issue. Um, but a, but bosses see that and they're like, well, holy fuck, you know, this dude, what the fuck's he doing with a gun in his hand, using it like a flashlight? I mean, it's not, you know, it has a purpose. So. I don't know. Do do some of that shit, you know. Yeah, well, I, I think yeah, uh, yeah. Matter of fact, I'm pretty sure the guys in this group are aware. We lost. We had uh, we had lights, uh, pistol mounted lights approved, and then we had that incident uh, where a dude had a, a kid get a finger in his holster and pulled the trigger on an M&P and uh, tore the round off in the guy's bucket. And uh, and my chief kind of uh, did a knee jerk deal, and and then I did some research, and there were several incidents about that around the country. Uh, Safari Land has a, a caution right in the uh, in the direction of the holster, saying, "Hey, this can't happen." Um, and so my chief said, "Fuck it, we ain't it no longer authorized." Um, and so we pulled it for all the new 7T series, though, uh, fixes the issue with the old holster. It's a little bit higher in the back, and so we're we're now reapproved uh, to get um, just amount of lights going back out to the guys. So that's it's a good thing. What are you thinking about that 7T versus a 6300 series? <laughs> you know. <laughs> It's a fine holster, man. You know, I, it, 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 it works. You know, I think it's a good deal. I, I see a couple guys, and I've seen pictures on the internet where guys have actually shaved some of that backside down. Um, I mean, the only limiter is, that, you know, your grip on the pistol can potentially be fucked up a little bit, I think, uh, because it's higher on the back. But it's to me, it's not. It, it's nothing that you can't resolve. It's just like if you went to a different holster entirely you just got to put the licks in where you know you can't just throw on the belt and go out on patrol so i don't think it's a problem um I, the lack of a, a lining uh you know guys getting their pistols scratched on the 70s which they went before with the with the suede line ones or or uh, whatever the fuck that material is um yeah. uh, you know uh, but who gives a fuck it's a department issue pistol, so, yep. you know oh, shit, hell, even personally owned uh, i could yeah, care I less don't, i don't give a fuck either so yeah i think they're i think they're good to go man I, I've just seen them. I haven't worn them. The uh, I have. I don't know how many and ha- have owned multiple 6300s. The 7TS though, that that looks it looks viable. It looks smaller. It looks uh, closer to. It looks like it's a lower profile option. I might have to just buy one just to wear it and just see how I like it. Yeah, the the ones that we have in seem to be fine. I think uh, I don't know if this maybe just something I fucking dreamed up, but I think they're I think they're stronger than the 6300 um, in in torture testing of trying to rip them off of a shank and, and I pull a gun out of them. So uh, if if my recollection is correct, that's a bonus. I think is it Bill Rogers? I believe he's he said that to me at shot. Yeah, we were discussing those, and he said it is stronger, especially it's a one piece. Yep. <clears throat> yeah, yeah, it's a good system, man. I think uh, I think Bill may be what uh, fucked me um, with the M and P uh, and R M R because they make a holster for that combo now, but not with a light. Um, and I was like, "What the fuck, man? When's the light coming?" And, and Bill was sitting there, and so he I, he chimed up and just said, "Ah, you know, you can just use a handheld." Well, I know I can. Yeah. Uh, I would prefer to have it mounted on the gun, but I think his influence may be why Safari Land's not not pushing that holster out for M and P, which is too bad because that's what the fuck we issue. So. Wix just uh, posted in our our moderator chat. He said he's listening in bed, and his wife is pissed because he keeps on laughing. And this is regarding us just not being able to breathe. He basically said this is a great representation of our real mod chat, and it is uh, incredibly hilarious. And there are still bits of really usable good stuff, and that's what Modcast is about. Very good depiction. He you needs to slap mama on the ass and fuck her. <laughs> <laughs> I'll worry about whatever the fuck. She I'm should listen saying. too. 
<clears throat> so I, I, for whatever reason, uh, Lanfer, I just clicked over to uh, Facebook while you were saying that, and I don't know why, man, but your voice sounds very much like Casey fucking Kasem. Uh, That's when right. I'm not, when I'm not looking at you, I mean, I'm Casey Kasem. <laughs> How do I send a picture in this? You don't. Thing? You don't? I, only I can. Okay. Okay, on the left-hand side? Yeah. Second from the bottom, or second from the top. Okay. See where it says screen share? Ah, gotcha. If you're running multiple screens, put whatever you want on your opposite screen and then select it. Gotcha. All right. We'll figure that out some other time. Do you see the picture that Fisher just posted? In the, in the, oh, there's a cat now. Well, that's not Fisher, though. No, no, that's I'm our... talking about the Godzilla in our chat. Oh, yeah. The Godzilla yeah. one. Well, I have to post this now. I think that's a threat against all Asian people based on what Godzilla did to us, so. <laughs> the dead bird cat. <laughs> and the, he has the ammo, the dead bird, the cat. This, this pretty much sums up tonight's discussion. Yeah. Just waiting know. for his... Get some balls on an XC1. Yeah. Just you wait. Oh, amazing. That, that's an amazing photo. There it is. There it is. Good times. Good times. I'll be going back to Fish's class in April. In, the, in Richmond, Virginia. That should be fun. With the vest? You know what? I think I am going to rock it because I, 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 uh, I did his last conceal, uh, I did his last classroom concealment, the whole class, so I may just go sand shirt, just the vest. It's at an indoor range, so that'll make it extra weird. Um, so. You could one-up him and go denim. And like make it like Chuck Norris Invasion USA. Oh, that shit would be God. legit. Oh, that would be awesome. Was Invasion USA or Lone Wolf McQuaid that he rocked that? It might have well, been. Well, he, he rocked it in both, actually. He did uh, in Lone rock. Wolf McQuaid, he was wearing a Vietnam era uh, flak jacket as his primary uh, top garment. But then he went denim vest with the <laughs> leather shoulder holster and double micro Uzis in, uh, in Invasion USA. Nice. And you know what? Every time I hear – they do like all these other gun uh, podcasts and stuff like that, and everyone always asks the question, in a real fight, blah, 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 Bruce Lee or Chuck Norris, it's fucking Chuck Norris from the go. From the go. Anyway, I just want to put that out on the air. I defer to your expertise, sir, when it comes to uh, getting the squabbles on. Um, <laughs> for reals. So funny story about that, right? Um, Bruce Lee was awesome, right? I'm not going to say anything. Otherwise, I'll have like, you know, 3,000 Jeet Kune Do, Dan and Asano followers fucking inboxing me and, and challenging me to a role, which I will gladly accept. That being said, he was awesome, but he was a philosopher. He was charismatic. Not saying he wasn't a great martial artist. But I will say that Judo Jean LaBelle, who is the true grandfather of mixed martial arts in the U.S., uh, was his grappling coach, and he ch choked him out on a daily fucking basis. And I challenge anybody to say otherwise. So it is what it is, man. Now, again, Bruce popularized martial arts in the U.S. for the most part. But Chuck, dude, Chuck has the, you know, he's he's got the – He's got everything, man. He's got his, you know, karate from back in the day. He studied with everybody. He's got a black belt in, in Brazilian jiu-jitsu from the Shadow Brothers. The dude's legit, you know? So, anyway, that's my part about it. I'm sure I'll get some hate mail, but I don't give a fuck. I absolutely did not know that uh, Chuck um, was into jiu-jitsu. Oh, yeah, man. He's... He's had a black belt from the Texas, uh, uh, the Walker, Texas Ranger day. So there's an episode of where he and his deputy go out and they, and they check out these Brazilian guys and they're all rolling and everything. Well, that's the Machado brothers 
who are first cousins of the Gracies and a uh, huge, huge school down in, uh, in Houston and whatnot. And yeah, I think he's had a black belt since. Fuck, when was that show on? Late nineties? Am I wrong about that? Yeah, that's about right. Shit. Yeah, so he, you know, he had a black belt before having a black belt in jujitsu was cool, you know. So cool, man. Yeah, yeah, he, dude, he's he's the real deal, you know. So I was like spreading that thing. I have no hate for Bruce Lee, by the way, none whatsoever. I'm just saying, people, it's like I don't know. I'm gonna come up with a bad analogy, but as far as like. Uh, uh, I'll skip it because I'll come up with a bad analogy, but it's like picking a fucking, you know, TV Western guy as your training icon, you know, with, with, with firearms and stuff. It just, it is what it is. You know what I mean? So people need to dig a little bit deeper before they get all fucking lost in the Hollywood bullshit. You know, no one here is going Matt Damon, Tom Cruise. Those fucking guys are legit. You know, but that's what we do with Bruce Lee. So let the hate mail come, fuckers. Let the hate mail come. Anyway. <laughs> it's okay. No one's listening anyway. Yeah. <laughs> you can edit that part out. <laughs> I just I love, love – <clears throat> I, I love UFC 2-3. Um, you know, we call it – at work, we call it the fucking circus. Um yeah. You know, back in the day before refined MMA was a thing, it was bring your art. I don't give a fuck. Tough yeah. man, karate, fucking kung fu, fucking ninjutsu, like whatever the fuck. Like bring it, bring it in this octagon and it's fucking like no eye gouging, no grabbing of the fucking ball sack. Go. Like no rounds. Like the, the original UFCs were no rounds. Yeah. And so, you know, when you see Hoist uh, fucking take out Dan Severn, silver medalist fucking wrestler, um, you know, and outweighed him by almost 100 pounds at 20-something minutes into the fucking match. Yep. Like that, that, that is, to me, that was vetting. Like the original UFCs were vetting of every style, of every type, of every uh, every match because there weren't any rules. Like bring your bring your style into the fucking ring, and then we're gonna sort this shit out. And what rose to the top? Yep, ground the, game. The, yep. The only the only caveat I'll I'll make with that is one through one and two uh, hidden to the ball sack was legal. There is a there's a fight with Joe Son and Keith Hackney, where they're both on the ground. I think um, Joe Son, whatever his name is, has a Hackney in a in a, in a headlock because those work. And Hackney just starts wailing on the cup man, and he probably took a good ten shots, you know, before he let go. He was wearing he was wearing a big ass cup too though, but you know. That doesn't really matter either. But, yeah, the, the, I think the only thing you couldn't do in the first two was eye gouge and bite. Everything yep. was straight, straight up, man. And it was it was awesome. A lot of people don't know that um, the Gracie Challenge was around for, shit, I want to say 50 or 60 years. They used to put an ad in. And for a while, if you go back to the you – know, late 90s, uh, well, actually early 90s, late 80s, there was an ad. It's like, you know, the Gracie Challenge. If you would like to get your legs, arms, uh, legs and arms broken or ch choked out unconsciously, please come visit us and bring your style too. And it was like, come in and I, I don't know, I think there was like $1,000. I might be off on that, but it was called the Gracie Challenge. They cut that out after uh, maybe UFC 10 because then everybody started training jujitsu. And that was their goal, you know? The only way to beat jiu-jitsu is to know jiu-jitsu. You may punch the fuck out of somebody, but the only way you're dodging the takedown, sprawling and missing the takedown, stuff like that, is to have an intimate knowledge with jiu-jitsu. And that's, and that's what they wanted to prove. And, uh, yeah, man. So, good shit. Speaking of which, Scott, if you don't mind, we do have the upcoming sit reps that discuss competition and all that kind of stuff. Yep. 
What do you think about heading those up? Oh, uh, I'd love to. You just let you, you, you have a much better background in that than I do. Well, I don't know if I would call it a background. I would say a uh, a uh, unhealthy interest in it because it's starting Perfect. to really take over. Um, so, do you want to just firearms competition? Do you want it? Uh, martial arts competition or just firearms for our audience right now? As of, well, it's going to be all of the above. The, oh, okay. the, the sooner one's going to be firearms competitions okay. and then how that correlates and how that works into uh, practical training. Okay. Yeah, um, definitely want to have Bill on there. Cause, I don't know why. I don't know. He I don't doesn't know. know why. I don't know. Yeah, I think, uh, I mean, and I'm happy uh, – happy to participate but I, there's you got some solid fucking dudes in uh in the competition um forum man that are, are in the facebook uh, group i mean they, they, there's some legit motherfuckers in there uh, throwing down so yeah, yeah I'm, I'm happy to sit in on it but i think you got better talent out there than than me on the competition game and planning stages and, and a lot of the stuff that uh that goes into being a successful competition shooter besides just you know being accurate yeah but i mean if, if our mission and all of PNS as related to the firearms competition is how to get people involved so that they have a better mindset for their own, you know, uh, for either their duty or their own self-defense training. I think we need to keep it in that purview. And that's where you, that's where you, that's where you will shine, you know what yeah. I mean? Because dude, most, most law enforcement guys other than Vogel and stuff like that. I mean, what would you say? You were like an IDPA state champ when we were talking that one time? Or something yeah. Like that? Yeah. But I mean, I actually, I quit. So when I went RMRs, I quit. Well, IDPA didn't allow it then until they got their uh, optic carry division. And then, uh, and so I started shooting USPSA more often, but I was getting hosed because I had to go to open uh, right. in order to compete with the RMR. But so, yeah. Yeah. Got to get back in, bro. Yeah. It's, yeah, I agree. I mean, I haven't shot probably now six months since I shot my last competition. So it's definitely something I need to get back into and start working hard at it. So, yeah. Yeah. No, but happy to do that. I think obviously Bill is there. Uh, I'd love to have Tim Heron on there. Um, he shoots for team SIG. Yeah. He, yeah, even though we don't like SIG. <laughs> well, he shoots 19. Uh, so it's not really a SIG. Good. Oh, good. Okay. Then that's fine. <laughs> I ran one for years as a duty gun. It's not bad, as long as it says made in West Germany. <clears throat> Whatever. <laughs> hey, hey um, Roland. Yeah. Hey, here, I have this for you. There you go. Uh, yeah, <laughs> Accurate representation. Oh, uh, look at that. That's not, not that, too does bad. Does that bring back memories? Uh, it probably does, yep. Um, Damn, how brown so, are you? <laughs> uh, you know... Um, yeah, I've shot with Voight, Barnhart, Micklick, Latham. Um, there is always something to be learned on the tactical side from, uh, you know, d dueling, dueling with, uh, dueling with these fools. They are fucking good at their trade. And they break shit down like the human mechanics of doing the fucking business. And you just got to, you know, sort out what, what applies and what doesn't. At some point, they go into full, full fucking retard on competition and you got to turn it off. And, yeah. and, and then other times it's like fucking dude, like human factors engineering, you just figured out the most efficient way to do X, Y, Z. You are fucking on point. Um, <clears throat> yeah. Uh, comp competition fucking matters, and it's fucking awesome. And uh, dude should do it. Yeah, I think you just hit the nail on the head for me. I, I don't go, I've never gone to any of those type of guys uh, training, trying to get tactical insight. It's all uh, human dynamic, you know, the human performance issues and and really just, like you said, breaking down uh, everything step by step. They're really, uh, at least the, the guys that I've been to are, are really precise with what they're doing with their gun. And they're able to explain it very well uh, also where it makes sense. So um, I don't think anybody can argue that uh, extremely accurate and extremely fast hits is a bad thing uh, by anybody's stretch of the imagination. So if they can help me do that, um, uh, I think it's a bonus. Yep. Yep. Agreed. So um, did we want to try 
Tim on uh, a modcast first, make sure that he's comfortable, and then we'll go into the competition thing because he's he's fully game and and for a high level guy who's very good friends with uh, Ben Stoger, he's he's not an asshole. He's actually very 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 helpful in a lot of things, a lot of things. So absolutely, and and that's the idea right there. Future guests that aren't one of the moderators have them on modcast first, so they. They can be comfortable with us, but also so the audience can get a, di- a different dimension of that guest and appreciate them even more. But as I said in the past, as my, I think it was just today, uh, a majority of our mods are are equivalent uh, are, are are the equivalent of guests on other programs. So we have some awesome guys. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. You know, I wanted to get you guys to get. Opinion. So there was a video a long time ago with uh, Vickers and Casey Sebio, right? And one of the things they were going through uh, a course of fire, and Eusebio was going through it the way he goes through it, like a fucking tornado and covered in goose shit, man. He just blazed it down. Well, one of the shots was going down a hallway, uh, target right there. As soon as you turn, you know, as soon as you break the corner there was another target right there. So he's just coming through, blazing it all through. Vickers comes through, and he does his thing, you know, boom, coming through. The target on the other side of the wall, he slices, and he hits that. But obviously, very slow, very meticulous. Um, Somebody made a comment, and I think it was somebody on uh, Pro saying, yeah, I get where Vickers is coming from, but if that was drywall, that – that perp would have just blasted through the drywall and he would have been done. What are you guys' thoughts on that? Does that make sense? Did I, did I not communicate that well? No, I, I've seen that. I know. I think I've seen the video that you're talking about. Um, so uh, we, we uh, well, God damn it. You can't say he'd be fucking done. Cause you don't know if the guy would have fucked, if anything would have hit him coming through the drywall, obviously the bullets would go through the drywall in real life. Uh, the, the, I mean, I think that what he was trying to show you was that concealment uh, does matter to some degree. Um, you know, having we had a dude shoot at the shoot at us through walls, um, and and so some bad guys are savvy enough to think about it, but but not a, a ton of dudes. I mean, it's not like that has happened a lot. Um, so I, you know, I, 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 whatever the fuck, I, I think it's internet bullshit. Somebody just wants to make a counterpoint and, and sound smart uh, to some degree. Um, the, you know, the video that I think Vickers handled that. Uh, probably more like a defensive pistol should shooter should do, you know, a guy that's, you know, clearing his own house. I, I think the answer is yes. Um, and it's not from a cover standpoint, it's from a concealment standpoint, right? If you can pie it off, get a chunk of the guy, uh, you know, see a foot, see an elbow, see a knee, and at least alert you to the guy's presence before you present yourself as a target is always going to be more beneficial than running through your house, obviously with your fucking hair on fire um, and getting exposed to shit and, and you know, over penetrating, putting yourself in, in a, you know, potentially in a spot where you haven't even processed information yet and you're already popping out into a room. Um, that's probably not a, a very sound practice for a guy that a guy that's clearing his house because he heard something in the middle of the night. Yep. Gotcha. Yep. Bit, bit, Bill's on point. I got nothing to add. And so then, so that is the issue, right? Is like if you're just a regular dude, bunker, bunker down. That, that's my home defense fucking plan. Uh, right. You know, I shit. Yeah, I mean, it's, I moved in this house I think 12 years ago. Uh, master bedroom door is uh, I can see the stairs going up, and so the objective was always get to the door as fast as I could. And, and if somebody's trying to mount those stairs, they're getting shot the fuck off of them before they can get to the kids. And if I think they're upstairs already, well then it's time for me to. Uh, to do my fucking job as a dad and get the fuck up there. You know, if I've got the stairs locked down, I, I'm, I'm not going, I'm not going to clear my own fucking house. I'm going to call the goddamn cops who ain't naked. Like I sleep. Yes, sir. Mm. Wasn't there some shit just recently? So is it a fucking movie where dudes complimenting the guy for fighting naked? Is that a book, a movie? Is that was that some fucking shit? Evidently difficult for men to fight each other if one of them's naked. I don't know. You no, know. That, that was last night's podcast. <laughs> <laughs> that, 
that the bathhouse scene in Wick? <laughs> Maybe. I don't know. Or every day in Matt Wick's house. Yeah, it could be that too. <laughs> Uh, so here's something I wanted to bring up. So, uh, Matt, I am starting to write, uh, that article, uh, as far as how your everyday citizen novice can survive the land of face shooters without getting his PP slapped. Um, so if you guys have any ideas of stuff that just sends you through the roof or suggestions on how they can better traverse those waters, uh, please feel free to give me some some pointers and stuff like that. I have mine, but obviously my point of view is from from someone who has survived and not gotten smacked down by you guys. Uh, but any any insight, any pet peeves, any uh, advice for the article would be much appreciated. So, you know, I'll have that to be Friday. I, th I think the thing I've noticed the most, the things that aren't getting the attention, are the sentences that end in a question mark, mm. the ones that end in a period or an exclamation mark. From a novice, typically they're the ones that, that have, have the issues. Mm -hmm. Bill? Uh, well, you know, man, yeah, probably, it, well, some of it, I mean, with the Facebook shit, I think there's, I mean, because there is no voice inflection or anything else, it's sometimes a response is taken out of turn, um, but it's, it, 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 it's certainly in, in my arena, I mean, everything is meant to be concise and to the fucking point, so... Uh, you know, I, you guys are probably picked up. I fucking curse a lot, so I'll, I'll I type the way I talk a lot of times, and I'll throw some curse words in there, uh, just as part of a normal sentence. End it with a fucking period, and, and that's it. And and I think some guys get butt hurt by that because they're not used to that type of, in my case, SWAT team dynamic where everything is meant to be fucking short and to the point. I mean, we, you know, we typically don't have time to fuck around and give you this lengthy fucking explanation for things. Um, and, and so a lot of times it comes across that way with being written. I don't fucking hate the guy. I don't know the guy. You know what I mean? I don't have any issue with the dude or whoever it is that has posted something up. Uh, but I think, too, that if guys look back, um, you know, if you get if they're willing to do this shit, but you look back through the history of, of primary and secondary of the last year, they're, they're probably, uh, you know, I'm guessing probably 50 posts where Landfair has gotten his ass smacked by Roland. I know Roland has beat me up on, on issues. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm, we're, we're doing it to each other. It's not like we're just picking on fucking dudes out there. Um, and so I guess, you know, we say fucking man, get some thick skin, get some thick skin, dude. And it's, it's not personal. We're just brand new with info. Uh, the other thing is a lot of times I see guys, I, I think Matt's on point um, where they end with an exclamation point or a period versus a question mark. Um, but then there are guys that ask, you know, post something up with a question mark that get a contrary answer to their question and because they already had an answer formed in their mind. And then they get defensive because nobody's agreeing with their fucking point of view. Well, if you ask, bro. Don't don't be so sad when we give you a fucking answer that you didn't want to hear. Yep. It seems also recently we've been having some issues with um, too many people use, uh, speculating. There's too much speculation, and they're they're taking things. They're they're trying to handle the issues and and not waiting for, for the, uh, for the insight from the uh, the more exper experienced people. Most of the most of the traffic that happens on primary and secondary, I stay out of. A lot of it, I'm not even qualified to read. I'm a party planner, and so I had someone someone question me. Well, why aren't you doing this task for for the organization? We have better suited people for that. There's no reason for me to do this when it's it's not my lane, and I know this, and so I'm going to stay away. And I, and we say know your lane so frequently. It's it's true. It's kind of like going to Darcy and follow the SOP within primary and secondary. Follow the SOP. If that makes any sense. Yeah, no, absolutely. I mean, part of the advice that there's so many things, right? Getting thicker skin, shutting your mouth and listening, not giving one word answer. And but I think a lot of it is some of these guys, how can I put this? They, they want to show everyone they are that unique slow snowflake. And I, and I, and I get that they want to be accepted in something or whatnot. But the other part about that, and I'd love to get your guys' opinion on that, is 
in the article, I'm going to say like, look, guys, the, these direct action face shooting run toward fire uh, in the line of fire, guys, no matter what you do, no matter what you do, unless you do that, you are never going to gain this level of respect that they have for each other. I accept that. I have no problem with that. That is not my, you know, my mission or whatnot. Uh, but th they just try so hard, you know, no, you guys are never going to say that guy, you know, was in class with him. I've trained him. I'll go to war with them. You guys are never going to say that. So stop trying to do shit to make them think that you're just as good as them because you're not. So shut the fuck up, learn, train, defend yourself, defend your family, but don't try and put yourself on their level and you will be much better for it. Anyway. I'm off my well, I, That also I, goes back. Oh, I'm sorry. oh, go ahead, Steve. Uh, I, I want to disagree a little bit with you on that okay. about, you know, I, we talk about knowing your lane and whatnot. Um, as long as someone is comfortable with who they are and what they do, I don't, I don't have an issue, you know, respecting them. You know, that's, that's not a problem. I mean, we're, it's true. You're not going to be accepted into this like inner circle of, I, I, I maybe I, maybe I'm just not even catching it. I, I don't No, no, work. Actually, Steve, the, the reason, the only reason why you're off is because we're in agreement. I'm not saying you guys can't respect like the article okay. I've written on jujitsu or red dots on pistol from a civilian defensive standpoint. What I'm saying is, uh, I am getting beyond my headlights if I ever expect you guys to say, that dude, he's just as squared his way as the guy that I'm breaching this house with. It's not going to happen. Stop trying. Know where, know where your um, direction and capabilities and experience lies, and don't get beyond that, and don't try and get beyond that. For me, it's... I keep in the back of my mind what is ultimately what is my mission? What's Bill's mission? What's Steve's mission? Right. For the most part, we're very similar in that aspect. However, with most of the most of the membership in a lot of these groups, that's not the case. Mm -hmm. um, they may want uh, a lot of the membership may be more interested in um, self improvement to help self defense or home defense or something like that where they're not carrying a gun uh, on duty looking for, looking to res respond to things, the, uh, trying to be more proactive than reactive. Bill, is that about, about the same page? Yeah. I, I mean, yeah, I mean, I, I agree with, uh, with Stephen and obviously uh, Scott agrees with what Steve was saying too. I, I mean, I, I read your article about RMRs on pistols, Scott, and I thought it was a good article for anybody that's interested in putting an RMR on their pistol. It has nothing to do with your status. Uh, you know, I, I guess maybe to your point is, uh, yeah, I, think, well, I, I don't know if I'm ever going to say uh, anybody on the panel is somebody that I'd want to, uh, you know, to go make an entry with me tomorrow morning on a on a warrant hit because I've never fucking done it with any of you guys. You know what I mean? Except, except for Shockey. To a to a point over Darcy. So completely different tactics, um, right? I mean, I, I I did get a week of training with Shockey, but I haven't done a day to day SWAT operational training with Shockey. So I don't know what his team SOPs are. I don't know what yeah. you know what. Uh, he's a superstar on his squad, and he might be a shit bag on mine, vice versa, right? I mean, he met his team maybe at a much higher standard of of, of training than than my team. Um, I mean, I can make some some guesses. Uh, you know, I'm sure Stephen would 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 be a, a valuable member of the team. I'm sure you would, Scott. You know, there's just some training time that has to go on there uh, to get guys comfortable. And, and uh, I guess maybe to your point is that comfort level can't be attained through Facebook. Uh, no matter how many instructor names you throw at me and and shit like that, is I mean, you got to earn that fucking spot on on the team. Um, you know, I, I mean, I, I know Roland shoots like a fucking champ. I know what his background is to some degree. Um, but I would say that if, if he, if my chief said, hey, here's a new guy on your team, this Roland fucking guy, I'd say, awesome. You're driving the fucking truck for a couple of weeks, bro. I got to see you, how you, how you work. Uh, you know, I mean, he, he may be driving the fucking bear cat, man. Uh, you know. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm seeing a, a correlation with what you just said and how I ultimately picked out our moderators. 
Because on Light Fighter, I remember reading your article or your posts and thinking, that guy has some good stuff. I've known, I've known Steve for I don't know how many years. Roland's always posted good stuff. I have no idea who the Scott person is. <laughs> but, um, we, yeah. You yeah back, there's a little bit of a connection. Oh, sorry, Steve, go ahead. No, I'm, yeah, I was just getting back to what you are saying about, you know, what a novice or someone new or someone from kind of outside the, you know, profession of arms circle should be looking to. It's just, it all comes back to just being a good student. If you're learning any topic, do you come in? Are you the kid raising his hand because he just wants to talk and draw attention to himself and pretend to contribute? Or are you actually there, you know, to fill your teacup? You know, are you coming in with a full teacup or not? Well, with that also, the, all the moderators are paying attention to that. And pretty much all of them have noticed who's in that first group and who's in that second group. And the people in that first group, we're not going to pay that much attention to. However, those in the second that are trying to truly learn and truly better themselves, those are the guys that we're going to, we're going to try to help out even more. But the guys that are in it for themselves to make themselves look good, no, not so much. There's, there's the dangerous point where you gain enough experience that you feel it, there's a fine line between defending your experience and, and disagreeing with someone that may have a different experience and, and holding on to an idea that is incorrect. And that's, that's a very tough thing for people to do. You, you, have, to have, some, you have to have some maturity there to, to turn you know, even your worldview on a, on a dime. You've know, you got to be prepared to be 100% wrong about something. Um, and that's, that's very tough to do. It's very tough to do it depending on the personalities involved. Agreed. Agreed. I mean, example of, I think where some people, for example, like the, the, the red dot article that I wrote, right? Obviously for civilian use. And I think there was some, uh, crossover to duty, but I didn't, I didn't talk about that. If I would have started talking about, why that tier one group, you know, uh, went with the Geisley six second mount in my experience, here's where it was advantageous for them. No, I did not do that. And that's where I think people, um, like Roland says, they start to believe their own press or believe their own hype. You know, I was talking to Colton Miller today and he was saying something, uh, he went to his first jujitsu. He's like, he's very uncomfortable with jujitsu guys, face shooters. He's good to go. And I was like, I, I'm comfortable with both because I just, you know, shut my mouth, learn, and you guys tolerate me. So I'm good to go with that. I just think that if most if more novices took that point of view, they would learn a lot more instead of trying to prove, I'm a snowflake, I'm a snowflake, listen to me, you know. So anyway. Got anything, Roland? <laughs> um. <clears throat> I mean, no, other than, like, guys come into, like, when we've been in the forum or we've been in Light Fighter or we've been anywhere uh, for a long enough time, um, we all build street cred based on, you know, whatever. So when Bill posts good shit, like, Bill's good shit, everybody on the whatever thinks that Bill is fucking awesome, right? Um, so then you get the new guy that comes in, and that's that's what we're dealing with with primary and secondary is you have guys jumping in, like you're saying, that they think they're the special snowflake, and then they get mentored or uh, – like their shit's just bullshit and, and, and dudes call them out and they have no idea who they're fucking with, like none whatsoever. And there's no time, no uh, ability, like like this isn't dick measuring time. Uh, you know, we're not going to uh, lay out resumes. Um, it just fucking is what it is, man. Sorry. You, you rolled into the fucking deep side of the pool and you didn't know it. You, you apply to come to this new forum on Facebook and you're going to do whatever. And that's cool. But, uh, yeah, man, you, you, you just, 
you stepped across the line. You didn't even know you stepped across the line. Like you were the big fish in your little pond and now you're the little fish in the big pond and you don't know it. So how do we mentor our new guys and let them know like fucking what's what? I don't know. I don't know what the right answer is. Yeah, you know, man, it's uh, it, it's weird to me. It's something and this isn't. I mean, it, it happens, of course, but uh, you know, dudes will come in, um, they post something, shit gets fucking sideways, whatever the shit, and then and then mods will come in and try and uh, you know tone shit down, and guys keep acting like cocksuckers after a mod has said knock it off, and it has zero to do with. Uh, you know, that I think I'm, uh, you know, some super awesome guy that can, you know, give motherfuckers commands and make them do it. But it's everything to do with, with this is the house, right? I mean, ultimately, it's Lampair's house. He's a, he has a group of dudes in here um, that are trying to make something happen. And, and now you're coming over to the fucking party as the guy that nobody knows and creating fucking havoc. Well, nobody would do that in real life. They wouldn't go to somebody else's fucking house or to a wedding and act like a cocksucker and not expect to get thrown out on their ass. And so, man, establish yourself first, right? Put put out good info. Listen to shit. When you get critiqued and, you know, it's something contrary to what you think, uh, consider it for a second and, and be willing to say, yeah, man, I fucked that up. I agree with you. Or just say, okay, thank you for the info, and then continue to do whatever the fuck you're doing if you think it's it's smarter or better than what the suggestion is. Uh, and, and I think guys would get a lot more traction that way, man. Uh, you know, it's... It, I remember when I first logged into Lightfighter, and I was kind of a latecomer uh, to that website, but, uh, you know, my buddy warned me, hey, man, be, be careful stepping in. And I said, man, I, I don't shit in other people's houses, right? I, I, there, I, m nobody in here knows who the fuck I am, and I had been a moderator on a different website. I was pretty uh, active at that time on the NTOA's website and, and other shit, and it's a, different, it's a different fucking house, man. This is not your fucking place. This is primary and secondary, ultimately landfare shit. He has appointed guys to kind of check fucking coats and, you know, take fucking admission fee or whatever you want to call it. Um, and so respect that, man. It, it, it's nothing to do with, uh, you know, us thinking that we're hot shit or anything thing along that line. Just, man, if it's, the conversation's dead, it's fucking dead. That's it. Just shut the fuck up about it. Go somewhere else. It's voluntary to be here. If you don't like it, be, be feet, motherfucker. Vote, vote with your feet. Get the fuck on out of here. Uh, for the record, that was gold. <laughs> that was that should be a segment, a short segment in and of itself, man. This ain't your fucking house. That's awesome, dude. You're absolutely right, man. You're absolutely right. And we've all had dudes come in our own house and act a fool, and they get booted quickly and violently. You know, that was awesome, dude. And I mean, some of these guys like. You know they're they're carrying street cred and and like they're they're like long dicking like fucking swagging around like, hey man I've been wherever I've done, wherever and they don't understand that primary and secondary is is holding the quality of fucking moderators that it's like, mm-hmm, okay your experience still doesn't rate you fucking bullying around the fucking membership. Like it's not like we got, we got people that outrate your experience. I don't care what your experience is, what, what you've done. There's always somebody on the internet better than fucking you are. And if you come into primary and secondary, you better be prepared to have somebody that has more experience than you do. Uh, in in that realm. So, fucking take your swagger out. Have a little piece of humble pie. Calm the fuck down. Watch, watch, read, understand, figure out what the boards are about, and then contribute when it's time. Um, don't just you know run in and say, "Hey, I was a fucking seal." <laughs> Negative. <laughs> wouldn't the response to that be and <laughs> you know I, I will tell you a lot of you guys um, that have well the, the experience or what I, I'm always um, other than other than Fisher the humility I always find uh, super interesting you know I, I've got a good buddy I won't mention his name but he's you know, former recon sniper, yada, yada. He's an MMA fighter. He is a current contractor, and he 
uh, when he is out uh, working, you know, he has to, he has to use his, his issued Glocks, but when he is home, uh, he loves his XD. So he saw my video uh, and he was like, Hey man, I, I saw your video. Uh, can we talk about that? And it kind of confused me a little bit. I'm like, uh, yeah, sure. But like Roman would say, like, dude, you're the swinging dick, not me. I'll give you my opinion. And he's like, dude, if the gun's fucked up, the gun's fucked up. It doesn't matter what I have done in my previous time. I picked up a gun. I liked it. I got a good deal on it. Uh, I have, don't have enough rounds on it to come across some of the catastrophic issues that you or other people may have seen. And that video scared the shit out of me. Uh, so that, that type of humility I found incredibly refreshing, you know, and I find that to be with 99.99% of people that are trying to spread good information. Um, it comes back to that, you know, this is a way, not the way. The first time someone says this is the way, I think that's really the time just to go ahead and shut off the receivers and keep on trucking, you know, so... Yep. And that's all Roland has to say about that. <laughs> yep. <laughs> it's either that or I got nothing. For reals, though. You don't want to, I mean, just being a good student don't be emotionally attached. Don't don't be out to validate just your point of view. That that's really it. Wix just sent me a message, which was uh, yeah, that's a good that's some good insight. We do have subject matter experts helping good guys and elevating the overall knowledge level, um, and that elevates both in our pro groups, our novice groups, in gear, any of our groups. At the same time, this forces that elevated quality in the industry overall. So if we have, if we create or help create a much more educated consumer base, we're going to have much better quality products. Imagine if we had a world without, I won't even mention a brand, but if we, if we could be that type of a positive force that would be amazing I just think how much better our lights could be if we didn't have fucking stream light exactly. see I didn't want to say that but that's exactly what I was going to say uh, in case I'm... <laughs> <laughs> uh, good stuff Bill, as much heat as you take for it, brother, you should be sponsored by him and shit, man. Fucking consultant fees, man. <laughs> and, uh, you know, I, I don't know. I don't tell you. You love surefires. You know, all my handhelds are surefires. That that fucking pistol light is booty compared to the to the HL. It's just fucking booty. <laughs> yeah, you, you're fucked. You, you know. I thought booty was a good thing. Well, I guess to tell you how you look at it. So here's, but this, I know Chuck has, but I'm curious for all of the Streamlight haters, uh, how many guys have a fuck load of time on an HL and a fuck t load of time on a 300U? And I know I can raise my motherfucking hand in that category. Uh, and so having used both of them extensively, um, Streamlight to me is the winner, man, for yeah, a lot just... of reasons. TLR ones, a lot of TLR one time. Yeah, that's that's that's, that's fuck, dude. That, I mean, that's like telling me you had a six P back in the day and trying to compare that to a Furious. Not even close. <laughs> it's pure fun, it is pure fun to bring up though, and and blame you for things, just like I blame Garrity. That's awesome. Again, Streamlight needs to hook you up with the consultant shit, man. Shit works. Ask this dude. <laughs> And everything is Ethan's fault. It's true. I don't know if you guys uh, are aware of this, but I, I'm, I'm mailing a package uh, to a guy here, uh, and it, it's going to be hilarious to me when he loves that HL and then starts pump, pump, posting up about it and watch how many fanboys start fucking eBaying their goddamn X300s. It's coming. It's coming. 
Jaeger. <laughs> Honestly, he's just the first person that came to mind that has a large, a large following. That's all. It ain't Jaeger. Tack Insider. Tack Insider. There you go. Uh, um, it's, there's a non-disclosure while this is occurring, and so I'm going to honor that. Um, but I have no doubt this. This it wouldn't be. I it will. I will get a Christmas card from this fella every year, thanking me for sending him that light. That's how. That's how much of a difference it's going to make in his life. True Exodus. Oh yeah, T Rex arms, dude. What the fuck's his name? Isn't um isn't the HL technically it's lighter than the 300 U right? And I, I haven't weighed them. The uh, I, I, so the shit I typically hear is that uh, it's bigger and it's not. If you actually take a micrometer, it's it's uh, shorter lengthwise. It's about the almost exactly the same width wise. Um, so I hear that. I hear that it's uh, they break more often. And I know the old TLR ones uh, had issues ejecting off the guns and shit like that. Um, I have not had that issue uh, when I switched to the HL. And uh, to full disclosure, I did get one for free. Uh, Streamlight guy said, hey, man, just just try it, just try it. And so I fucking did. Um, and, and that light has never come off my pistol. Uh, and the one on my 34 is been on there for three years, I think. So it's got around 30,000 rounds hanging on the gun. Um, so you have no dead issues. batteries in it. Okay. No, no, fuck no. Um for me, uh, and obviously some of this is subjective, uh, but in my range, crank, cranking on my old X300 U-boat, uh, and then the TLR HL, the HL has way more fucking spill. It's got a brighter uh, center spot for me, and I'm born uh, Jed Linsky because he's heard this a million times out of me. So it seems brighter to me, and then I don't use, uh, uh, as we talked about the other night, I don't use a... Uh, a DG switch or, or a Streamlight's equivalent because it's junk. Um, and, and to me, just kicking the switch on is a fuckload more easy uh, with the HL than it is with a Surefire. Now, that could be a product of, uh, you know, my hand size compared to the gun and, and my ability to reach out and touch the switch on the X3. Uh, but every single one of the X series lights I've had, uh, to me, they're exceedingly difficult to flick on uh, using a trigger finger, which is how I activate the light coming out of the bucket. And the TLR is not that way. It's very simple to, to turn on. I have, we have not broken one. Um, most of my SWAT guys have switched over to them now. Um, and we, we they, they just have not broken. Um, we haven't had any issues. The switches have been fine. Everything's been good to hook. And uh, with the X series, fuck man, I, I don't know how many switches. I, now, Surefire replaced every fucking one of them. No questions asked. Uh, they, you know, we had an X200 break uh, that was, I mean, broke, broke. And I got, a, at that point, I got an X300 back as a replacement because they couldn't fix it. Um, uh, you know, but it, I mean, it was to a point where I was literally carrying around uh, a bag of extra uh, X300 switches uh, because they were breaking all the fucking time. So dudes would go to turn their light on pre-mission, and uh, they, they, it's nothing. It's a busted fucking switch. So we had to I mean, we replace it right there on the fucking spot uh, and get them ready to go on the on the uh, on the job. And we haven't had that happen with the with the TLR. So I, I mean, I've been very fucking happy with them. Um, I don't even bring up the price point because it's not an issue. I mean, I'm, you know, in my case, I'm either uh, my personal guns I'm, I'm buying, uh, but within the agency, the guys could have any fucking light they want on their pistol, um, and that's what they're selecting. So the the, the dollars are a non-issue. Um, it's it's better fucking light, man. In my opinion. So after all that, it's not true X-Rex because if it's the same weight, they're not going to sacrifice their two shots up second from concealment. So they're not, it's not them. Yeah, I don't know. I don't have a. Uh, I mean, I can uh, if you want me to. I can on uh, Tuesday when I get back. I can uh, I can take a 300 U and a and my light and go over and, and fucking weigh them on our uh, on the dope scale in the uh, in the evidence room. But I don't know what I don't know what they look. And they maybe yeah, it's not, on the website. I, I was joking. I was joking. If that's an issue, it's time to get to the gym. So. I do remember you posting pictures of the. The, the overall color and then also the the overall brightness unfortunately though the switch I just hate the switch I absolutely hate the switch on any surefire pistol light on surefires or streamlights I keep on saying that. see I can't say that word I can't say streamlight 
He's allergic. He's allergic. To, to each I his own, man. Uh, you know, and I, I keep bringing this up, but I'm, I am not saying that the Surefire is a shitty light. It's an, it's an outstanding fucking light. I, you know, yeah. I, if for my purposes, the stream light seems, seems to work better. So I'm take that with a grain of salt. It doesn't really hold a candle to like the, uh, the Enforce. Uh, was it those? APLs. Who even knows? No one knows. No one cares. Who knows? Don't be a tool, Steve. <laughs> <laughs> Can't take him. Cannot take him anywhere. Straight Gosh. trolling. That's what he does. There you go. All right, guys. On that pregnant pause, I am going to go ahead and pack up and hit the road. Be good, fellas. I will see you soon. Yeah, we'll see I'm out too. I'll talk to you guys uh, later on. Have a good Bill, night. before you before you take off, Bill. Yeah. I have a I have something for you. Yeah. Keep your feet on the ground and keep <laughs> reaching for the stars. Ah. <laughs> 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 You see, Steve, that was a, a quote from Casey Kasem, and I'm Matt Landfair. Yeah, I'm not that, I'm not that young, man. No, I was thinking dumb, not young. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you motherfucker. Uh, yeah. Well, should we call it? That that was what six hours, twelve hours. Yeah, uh, you you guys started while I was still on shift. And that was yesterday. Yeah. Yeah. It's fucking yep. losers. Bunch of fucking losers. And we so. still have 12 viewers. We still have 12 viewers. Amazing. I can't believe it. At like, 11 now. You 12, 11 people, I love you all, whoever you are. <laughs> fucking Wow. Now we're seriously getting some good good feedback on these, and it's it's fun to do. Good 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 talks, real talks, and really digitized talks when Steve Fisher's on. Ten viewers, we're on a countdown. Yeah, just. Just keep doing what you're doing. It'll I'm just going to keep on doing this. Yeah. It's going to be zero soon. Yeah, just except, get air. Except uh, eight of those viewers are me on different different devices. Yeah, you make that joke every single yes. time. And it's still true. Um, 11 viewers. It went up? Yeah. Viagra. Nice. Someone just, <laughs> not just, 29 minutes ago, someone said, Drew said, when the mods go after each other, it's like watching the parents fight while we hide behind the couch. Ah, nice. Like on, like on the group. Yeah, We've, uh, ten viewers now. That's. I think the mods are pretty good about being civil with each other. To be honest. I agree. Yeah, we usually take it to PM where we fight it out. Concur. Uh, nine viewers. <laughs> Uh, I think you should just cut the feed so we can get, get on with our secret Illuminati meeting. That's true. <laughs> that is, it is a highlight that they are enjoyable. Just, just to keep them wanting. What the yep. fuck do they do when that, when that comes off? It's, it's when Roland turns on his camera. Yep. <laughs> and unzips his pants again. <sighs> Negative. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I think I think Roland, you need to write down exactly what your setup is and send it off to everyone else because, for not having spent that much money, it sounds really good. <laughs> yeah, Turtle Beach. Yeah, but partially it's because it's they're a bit broken in from yelling at twelve-year-olds. Uh, that's pretty much a factual statement. <laughs> 
I fucking crush those kids. Like emotionally? Yes. Oh, he yeah, does dude, he does motivational dude. speaking on the side. <laughs> Brother, I I absolutely go after them. Go after their souls. <laughs> Maybe if they were more honorable, they wouldn't they wouldn't need it. Right. But they run around. <laughs> fucking run spot around. camping. Yeah, I'm serious. <laughs> they run around on the internet and they're like, bah, 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 blah, blah, blah. I'm like, dude, I will fucking hunt down your family. <laughs> Don't tell uh, who I am. Dude, I will kill your mother's fucking hairdresser and her gynecologist. Like, I'll fucking murder them. And she will be fucking barren and alone if you continue with your bullshit. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, the no, best. seriously. No, no, I have witnesses. Like, I, I threaten little kids with, like, their parents' fucking uh, ultimate demise if they don't fucking sort out their wicked ways. The best part is there's <laughs> at least one kid that you told that will hear this and go, <laughs> and, and have nightmares. Yeah, fact. Or their parents ended up dead just by coincidence. Oops. Yeah, and, and they're running scared. No doubt. And they're just thinking they'll carry that burden for the rest of their their days. I should yeah, have been dude, fucking spot camping. I watched the movie Usual Suspects, and I was like, "Wow, Kaiser Sose had it right. Like, you need to reach out like to the second and third order effects. Like, it's it's you know." I, I killed them. I killed their friends. I killed their friends' family. I killed people that owed them money. Like, I was like, oh, yeah, fuck. Kaiser Zosa is on this shit. Like, it's fucking the boss. <laughs> and see, and that's, so, that's why coin doesn't work. Yeah, I know. Nope. Can you but, divulge what one of your former screen, name, screen names were? No. Okay, fine. F F F H Hound Dog was that it or something? Yes, that's exactly <laughs> what it was. Yeah. Cut the feed, Matt. Yeah. Cut the. Ah, uh, fine. I guess I'll do my closing. Whatever's. Bust out the sock puppets. Let's do this. No, that's after we turn everything off and yeah. you guys go away. <laughs> get, get them ready to go. Uh. Yeah. Well, thanks for watching or listening. Uh, you can find us at primaryandsecondary.com. Primaryandsecondary.com backslash forum is our forum where everyone you heard today participates on a regular basis. Well, some more than others. We are also all over social media, specifically on Facebook. If you look up Primary and Secondary LLC, that's our main, main page. Off there, we have all of our 20-something groups. Um, I think I'm going to dedicate today to today's little discussions to Light Fighter and ATS because without them, we wouldn't be here. And they definitely provided a lot of good insight. They provide the, the vehicle to, to a lot of improvement for a lot of us. So hopefully we will talk to you soon.